folks welcome to code cracks this is mahesh gurani and in this particular video i will be talking about crisp sets in this video we are going to cover what is crisp set so i will introduce what is crisp set that will be followed by various type of representations of the crisp set and we will also check what are the different notations uh, used in set theory and finally we will conclude the video with the discussion on different type of operations which can be performed on crisp set let's start what is crisp set so sets are always defined with respect to some larger uh, universe which is called universe of discourse so universe of discourse contains all the elements which are under consideration for particular experiment for example set of natural number so universe of discourse in this case will be x is equal to all the natural number 1 2 3 4 5 and so on now by specifying certain characteristics or by specifying certain properties we will be able to derive some sets out of this so set or crisp set is nothing but it's a collection of unordered distinct element if i say a is equal to 1 2 3 2 or 2 3 1 or 2 1 3 all corresponds to same set order is not important in case of crisp set the another property of crisp set is elements are distinct so if i say a is equal to 1 1 2 2 and b is equal to 1 2 2 and c is equal to 1 1 2 all corresponds to same set because the unique element in all these three sets are 1 and 2 so these are the very two important properties let's derive some sets for the given universe of discourse so i may define property like a is set of all the even numbers or b is set of all the odd numbers so a will be 2 4 6 8 and so on and b will be 1 3 5 7 and so on so each member of set is called element of the set so any element from the universe of discourse will be either member of set or it will not be the member of the set so if element is present in set we will call that it is a member of set and if it is not present into the set it is not member of the set let's uh, take one example if i consider an element 3 from the universe of discourse then 3 is not member of set a but it is member of set b so any element is always either present in set or it is not present in set there is nothing like a partial membership in case of crisp set an element is either fully in or it is fully out the membership function can be described using uh, following notation chi a of x is equal to 1 if element x is member of set a and chi a of x is equal to 0 if element x is not member of set a so this chi a is called characteristics function for set a which assigns binary value 1 or 0 which is also known as a membership value to particular element for given set let's take uh, one more example to understand the crisp set let us consider the class of student as a universe of discourse now based on certain properties we can derive some sets from this universe of discourse for example i may define set like um, a is equal to set of all the boys b is equal to set of all the girls so that is one way of defining the set or i may write down like set a is equal to set of all the students whose height is greater than 5.5 and set b is set of all the students whose height is less than uh, 5.5 so depending upon properties we can have many such uh, sets from the universe of discourse uh, let me take one specific example in this case if i ask a question to the students uh, who owns uh, the driving license so in this case student might have license or he might not have based on these characteristics the characteristics function chi will assign value 1 or 0 to particular element or to particular student so all those students who have driving license will be assigned membership value 1 to that set and rest of all will be assigned value 0 let us try to understand it with more detail let capital t represents set of all the temperature values so that is our universe of discourse now from this we are deriving three sets cold warm and hot so if temperature value is between 5 to 15 we will classify it as a cold if temperature value is between 15 to 25 we will put it into the warm category 
and if temperature is between 25 to 35 we will put it into the hot category the boundary between two crisp set or the boundary for particular crisp set is very thin and that's why it is known as a crisp if we consider two sets cold and warm so if temperature is less than 15 then it will be classified as a cold and if temperature is greater than 15 that is if it is 15.51 then it will be kept into warm set so there is a mild variation in temperature is moving element from one set to another set so crisp sets are very sensitive to a uh, value of the data okay. this cannot handle a variation into the data near boundary as you are changing the value element is moving from one set to another set so in some cases this property is not desirable fuzzy set will help us to handle this uh, problem let us discuss various representations of the crisp set so one way is to represent set using exhaustive approach it means we are listing out all the elements so if set is very small this representation is useful but if set size is very big if there are many elements then it is very time consuming to write down all the elements manually so the better and easier way is to define set using the property of the elements so we can say that a is equal to uh, all the elements x which satisfies some property p fine uh, for example uh, a can be a set of all the elements whose value is less than 10 or a is a set of all the elements who are perfect square and less than 10 something like that third way is to assign membership value using characteristic function so if certain property is true then assign membership value 1 and if the property is not satisfied then we can assign membership value 0 to that let us discuss various notations used in set theories so uh, first try to understand uh, different sets mentioned on right hand side capital x is a universe of discourse for our example which consists of 1 to 10 capital a is set of even numbers from the universe of discourse and capital b is set of all the odd numbers again from derived from capital x c contains 4 6 and 8 d is having certain properties like it is a set of all the elements who are perfect square and that number should be less than 10 so there is no such element in universe of discourse 1 4 and 9 are perfect square but they are not less than 10 it means uh, no element satisfy the properties of d and hence d will be null set or we can say it's an empty set phi represents empty set or null set null set is a set which does not contain any element so in our case d is null set x belongs to capital a so if x is present in set a we will say that x belongs to a or x is a member of a so 2 is member of a in our case next is x does not belongs to a so if element is not present in given set we will say that x does not belongs to set a 3 does not belongs to set a in given uh, example a subset of b so if all the elements of a are present in set b then we will say that a is subset of b uh, for given example all the elements of c are also present in set a so we can say that c is subset of a similarly all the sets which are derived from universal set are always a subset of universal set another property of subset is that all the sets are always subset of itself and null set is also subset of all the sets a superset b if a contains all the elements of b then a is called superset of a so for given example a is superset of c because all the elements of c are present in a similarly universal set can be considered as superset of all the sets again all the sets are also superset of itself by the definition of superset proper subset a proper subset b that implies all the elements of a are in set b as well as b contains some additional uh, elements so in case of a subset b a and b can be similar sets but in case of uh, a proper subset b b must have certain elements which are not in a that means a cannot be identical to b a proper superset of b it means set a contains all the elements of b as well as it contains some additional element and in this case again a cannot be same as b 
but in case of a superset b a and b both can be identical in short set itself can never be proper subset or proper superset of itself but it is always a subset and superset of itself if all the elements in set a and b are identical then we will say that a and b are equal sets a is not equal to b it means elements in a and b are different certain elements may be common but all elements are not identical uh, mode a represents cardinality of the set that means it defines size of set so uh, ultimately it is number of elements in given set so for given example cardinality of a is 5 because it contains 5 element and cardinality of c is 3 cardinality of d is 0 p of a represents power set power set means it is a collection of all the subsets of given set so we know that by definition null and set itself is always subset of given set so if i write power set for set c then that will be null then 2 4 8 2 4 2 8 uh, 4 8 and set itself that is 2 4 8 so uh, this is what a power set of c these all are the subsets of set c of cardinality of power set is always 2 raised to n where n represents cardinality of set in another words if set a contains n element then the power set of a will contain 2 raised to n element for given example set c has 3 elements so power set of c will contain 2 raised to 3 that is 8 elements and that can be seen from the example let us discuss few operations uh, which can be performed on crisp set the very common operation is the union operation so a union b is defined as collection of all the elements x which are member of a or member of b it means if element is present in both the set then it is written only once for example uh, our universe of discourse is 1 to 9 set a is 1 to 5 set b is 3 to 6 and set c is 6 to 9 so if we consider a union b then that will be 1 to 6 element 3 4 and 5 are common in a and b but that will be written only once in a union b the another way of representing a, a union operation is using venn diagram so that is shown here in graphically so a and b are both the set the outer rectangle represents a universal set that means it represents all the elements in capital x 1 to 9 so a union b is shown in a gray color okay so that is a union of both the set it contains elements from uh, both uh, a and b sets intersection is defined like it is a collection of all the elements which are present in set a and present in set b it means intersection should have common elements in both the sets so for given example uh, elements 3 4 and 5 are common in both the sets and hence a intersection b will be 3 4 and 5 the graphical representation is also shown that the common elements which are in a and b are highlighted in gray complement or absolute complement is defined as a bar or a dash or a uh, complement which is nothing but it's x minus a this is also known as absolute complement to compute the complement we are subtracting all the elements of given set from the universal set so that is defined by x minus a so mathematically we can write it is a set of all the elements x where x is present in x but it is not in a fine so for given set a contains 1 2 3 4 5 and its complement will be remaining elements in x that is 6 7 8 9 9 graphical representation shows that uh, the, all the area which is outside a in gray which is actually a complement difference or the relative complement so complement or absolute complement was with respect to universal set and the difference will be with respect to or the relative complement will be with respect to two crisp sets so a minus b is a collection of all the elements of x where x is present in a but it should not be in b so now we are taking the difference with respect to a instead of x that's why it is called relative complement the another way of writing this difference is a minus a intersection b the common elements from both the sets we are subtracting from set a for given example a is 1 2 3 4 5 
B is 3, 4, 5, 6. So common elements in both the sets are 3, 4, 5. So to compute A minus B, we will subtract 3, 4, 5 from set A and we are left with 1, 2. So that is what A minus B. The graphical representation for the same is shown here. Uh, common elements of both the sets A and B are subtracted from set A. So whatever gray area left in the diagram represents A minus B. De Morgan's law is very important characteristics or the operations on crisp set. It is very much useful to reduce or simplify many set uh, computations. The, it is defined as like A union B complement is identical to A complement intersection B complement. So to prove this, we will take the same example. So A union B is 1 to 6. Complement of that will be remaining elements in X that is 7, 8 and 9. Now we will compute the right hand side part of the equation that is A complement intersection B complement. So by definition, we know that A complement will be 6, 7, 8 and 9 and B complement will be 1, 2, 7, 8 and 9 and intersection of them will be 7, 8, 9 which is right hand side, it is equivalent to the left hand side and hence the De Morgan's law is proved. The another De Morgan's law is A intersection B complement is equivalent to A complement union B complement. In similar way, we can prove this also. So first we will prove the left hand side that is A intersection B complement. So A intersection B we can uh, easily derive it is 3, 4, 5 complement of that will be 1, 2, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Now we will compute A complement, union B complement. So A complement is 6, 7, 8, 9. B complement will be 1, 2, 7, 8 and 9. And union of both will be 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. And from this example, we can see that LHS is equal to RHS. That is De Morgan's law is hold for uh, this property also. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Guyani. And in this video, I am going to talk about introduction to fuzzy sets and fuzzy logic. Basically, we are going to talk about uh, the introduction of the fuzzy set. We will start with the history of the fuzzy set from where this concept has been developed. Uh, we will also talk about motivational factors of the fuzzy set, which will be followed by the various representation of the fuzzy sets, just like a crisp sets. I'll also talk about advantages and limitations of this, which will be followed by the applications. Let's start with some quotes from the wise man. Henry Mattis says that precision is not truth. So many times, in fact, most of the times we are running after the precision. Fine, but in certain cases, precision is not as important as the information. The similar quote was given by the Albert Einstein, who said that so far as the laws of mathematics refer to the reality, they are not certain. And so far as they are certain, they do not refer to the reality. So even laws of mathematics are not certain sometimes. You see that uh, is, normally we are running after the uh, certainty or running after the precision, but it is not everything in real life. In real life, there exist many such things in which we do not look for the precision, rather we look for the significance. Lofty Jada said that as complexity rises, precise statements lose meaning and meaningful statement lose precision. So ultimately the precision and meaning or the precision and significance are opposite to each other in real world. Let's try to understand all these quotes with one example. Let's some mass or some object is approaching to your friend from the top and you are warning him and you are shouting that hey fellow, a 1500 kg mass is approaching you at a certain speed say for example 45.3 meter per square. So this is very precise statement. It reflects everything. What is the mass of the object, what is the speed, in which direction it is moving. So certainly it should convey all the information to your friend, but it is very hard to interpret in fraction of second. And while your friend be able to interpret it, probably that mass might have fall on your friend. Even this information is precise, it is not useful. Rather, if you'll simply shout at him that, hey fellow, look out. So probably there is no precision or there is no precise information in this statement, but still it is very significant. Your friend will definitely will try to move away from his position and uh, he could save himself. So you can see that in real world, uh, significance is more important than the precision. 
and uh, fuzzy logic will bring us the significance rather than the precision. Let's talk about the history or the roots of the fuzzy logic. The fuzzy logic was developed way back in 1965, but the roots of this concept date back to the era of Aristotle, where Aristotle uh, proposed law of excluded middle. So he says that any predicate or any statement can be either true or it can be false. There is nothing like a middle value and hence it is known as a law of excluded middle that middle was excluded. Later Heraclitus said that things could be simultaneously true or false. It means any predicate can take two values at the same time. If I say Alex is a good person, so good person is a property of Alex, everybody may not be agree to him. So some person may say that okay Alex is a good person, so the statement is true. Whereas some who have not good experience with Alex might say that Alex is a not good person. So in that case, that predicate is false also. Later on, uh, the student of Aristotle, that is Plato, laid down the foundation for the fuzzy logic. He said that there exists some value between the extremas. That means predicate cannot be only true or false at a time. It can have certain different values in between those extremas. Lukasiewicz described a three value logic and he has given the proper value for that, that one extrema is true, another one is false and the third one he defined as a possible. Now this possibility word is describing the probability. So probability vary between 0 to 1 on real number scale. So it can take any infinite value. So ultimately the infinite valued logic has come into the picture and Lukasiewicz has also proposed uh, the mathematics to prove his concepts. Later, around in 1965, Lofty Zada has introduced notion of fuzzy logic in his seminal work called Fuzzy Sets, in which he has described what is fuzzy logic, his, its application and how to perform various operations on the fuzzy logic and the proper branch of fuzzy logic was developed since after and that's why uh, Lofty Zada is coined as a father of fuzzy logic. What is fuzzy logic? So fuzzy logic is an approach to compute based on certain degree of truth which is quite different than the traditional logic we are following. That means traditional logic follows only binary values 0 or 1 on which traditional computer systems are working but fuzzy logic is dealing with some other values also apart from 0 and 1. If I ask Alex and John are good friends or not, so if I am dealing with the traditional logic. So traditional logic has only two possibility that I, yes, they are good friend or they are not good friend. But if I want to uh, model the same phenomenon using the fuzzy logic, then there could be multiple answers for the same question. Uh, someone who is very close to them and uh, he knows them very well, he might say that okay, they are a good friend. So I can scale up or I can assign a truth value one or I can say that this statement is perfectly true for him. Certain might say that okay, they are friend, but they are not extremely uh, good friend, uh, they are just a good friend. Some might say that they are not so good friend or some might say that not at all. So such multiple possibilities are there and we can assign different degree of membership or different value to their claim. Okay? That is what a, a fuzzy logic is, assigning a different values based on the perceptions of the persons. This example we have already talked in the video, introduction to crisp set. If you have not watched that video, then please go and watch. Uh, the link of the video is given into the description. If we ask to the students of entire class that who owns the driving license. So there is only two possibility, either yes or no. Students might have driving license or they may not have. So the characteristics function was assigning membership value one or zero to the students. I can change the question, which is now not objective. It is subjective. Fine, if I ask a question like who can drive very well? So drive very well is a subjective uh, uh, thing. It means you cannot rate it perfectly. So according to skill, students might be given different membership value between 0 and 1. Those who can drive very well, we will assign membership value 1. Those who do not know how to drive, we will assign membership value 0. And according to their skills, uh, we will assign values 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and so on. So now the uh, membership value varies between 0 to 1 and this is actually an infinite valued possibilities. 
or we can term it as an infinite value logic. Let us try to understand this with another example. Uh, a and B two sets are given where A is a crisp set, B is fuzzy set. If we look at the elements, element X is neither part of A nor it belongs to B. Element Y is only member of A, it does not belong to set B. Element Z belongs to set B, it is not part of A. You can see that in case of fuzzy set, the boundary is not crisp, it is fuzzy. Boundary actually defines the membership value for a particular element. As we move away from the boundary, that membership value of element will decrease. So T is in fuzzy set, but its membership value is in between 0 and 1. Many concepts in real world are modeled better way using a multi-valued logic. If I want to classify the students based on their height, and let's say I have classes called tall and not tall, and I'm setting some threshold, uh, let's say it is 5.5 feet. So if student is having a height 5.5 feet or above, I'll put it him into the tall category. And if he's less than 5.5 feet, we will put him into the short category. So even if student has a height 5.4999 feet, he will be treated as a short. Now see, the difference between tall and short is very little, maybe probably 0.0001 feet. But still, element is jumping from one set to another set. So this is not uh, realistic or it is not that much natural. Rather, we can use this kind of sigmoid function to assign a membership value. In case of crisp set, the membership value is assigned based on step function. So if it is above threshold, it, it will be kept into one class. If it is below threshold, element will be kept in another class. But in case of fuzzy logic, the sigmoid function is gradually decreasing. As you move away from the threshold, that sigmoid function will assign lower and lower uh, membership value to that element. For this tall person, the membership value is 0 0.95. If height is more than this fellow, then probably the membership value may increase to 9.95, 0.96, 0 0.97. And after certain threshold, it will be always one for all. And as we are moving on to the left hand side of x axis, it means if height is decreasing, then the membership value for that particular tall class of given student will keep reducing. So for the short fellow, we can see that its membership value in tall class is 0 0.30. It means his membership value is reducing. So this looks more natural compared to the crisp representation. What are the motivational factors for the fuzzy logic? The most important factor is like knowledge in real world could be inaccurate, it might be unclear, it may be imprecise, indecisive, or even probabilistic, or it is approximated. So if we have a crisp logic only, then it is hard to deal with this kind of logic because crisp logic cannot tolerate uh, variation into the data or imprecision into the data, but fuzzy logic can nicely model that. So that was the most important or most fundamental uh, motivation for fuzzy logic. Human thinking and reasoning also includes fuzzy nuances. That means humans are also thinking just like a fuzzy logic. When we go to the doctor, the doctor will ask for certain symptoms and based on the symptoms, he will decide that the chances of malaria may be 70%, chances of cold may be 20%, chances of normal fever may be 30% and so on. Instead of just that Boolean logic, he will apply the fuzzy logic and he will take the decision that I should give this medicine to cure particular disease. Real world system should function with vague information because the inputs will not be always in a perfect form. Many times data may be missing, data may be scaled up, scaled down, or there might be measurement errors or there might be a data entry error. So if system is not that much tolerant, it cannot work with the data. Uh, so it is very important that system should be able to work with such kind of vague information. Fuzzy systems are suitable for uncertain or approximate reasoning, especially for the system with mathematical model that is difficult to derive. So in many cases, it is hard to derive mathematical models. So in such cases, fuzzy logic can easily model those phenomena and we can derive the systems which can work well in such environments. Formally, we can define fuzzy logic as a tuple. A bar is equal to x 
comma mu a bar of x where x belongs to capital x let's try to decompose this definition a bar represents fuzzy set so to distinguish fuzzy set from the crisp set we will be using a bar notation a stands for crisp set a bar stands for fuzzy set so whenever there is a bar in this entire course understand it is a fuzzy set it is defined by a tuple x comma mu a bar of x so x is an element mu a bar of x represents membership value of element x in set a the membership value we have discussed for crisp set is assigned by a characteristic function chi and the membership value for a fuzzy set is assigned by a membership value mu chi can take value either 0 or 1 mu can take any value between 0 to 1 so for chi there are only two possibilities 0 or 1 for mu there are infinite possibility between 0 to 1 any real number is possible crisp set is a fuzzy set but fuzzy set is not necessarily a crisp set so we can consider that crisp set is a fuzzy set with its extreme values fuzzy set can also have membership value 0 and 1 so we can consider crisp set as fuzzy set having membership value either 0 or 1 only let us discuss various representation for the fuzzy set so one possibility is that universe of discourse might be discrete and finite let us try to understand this with one example suppose we want to model a phenomenon called close to one so if number is close to one we will assign it higher membership value and as that number moves away from our value one the membership value will decrease in given set number one will be assigned membership value one zero and two it's away from one so its membership value will decrease and probably we might assign it a membership value maybe 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 or 5 again it depends on the programmer as we keep moving away and away this value will decreasing it is discrete because you see that we only have membership value possible for element 0 and 1 we do not have any element between 0 and 1 so if i take 0 0.5 i will not find any element for that Similarly, if I sample it in y direction, which represents membership value. So I have membership value for 2, that is 0. I might have some membership value for minus 1, that may be support 0 0.3. So I only have these two membership values, 0 to 0 0.3 in this range. There is no membership possible in between 0 to 0 0.3. Let us try to represent this set using fuzzy set notation. So a bar is equal to order tuple x comma mu a bar of x so we may write like this that minus 2 has membership value 0 minus 1 has membership value 0 0.3 0 has membership value 0 0.7 1 has membership value 1 and so on there is another way of representing a fuzzy set is using summation or disjunction so it is given as like a sigma mu a bar of x divided by x so this is not actually a division operation but it's just a representation in numerator we are writing membership value in denominator we have to write down the element itself so given diagram or given example we can write down like this minus 2 divided by 0 that means element minus 2 will take membership value 0 minus 1 by 0 0.3 that is element minus 1 has membership value 0 0.3 so alternate representation will be used throughout the course if our universe of this course is continuous then the membership graph will also look continuous as we move away from the center one the membership value will keep decreasing and this is continuous because for any value of x you will get some membership value between 0 to 1 so even if i choose element 0 0.5 0 0.2 0 0.002 1.829 for any random element i can get certain membership value so it is continuous in x direction as well as in y direction fine so we have infinite possibilities for x and infinite possibilities for membership value and this is represented by a bar is equal to integration mu a bar of x by x different membership functions will assign different membership value to the same element and this is very important to understand because uh, this is very much subjective it is user specific that what membership function he is choosing based on the response of fuzzy system will be generated consider the fuzzy set a bar is equal to young and we are considering the age range between 0 to 90 and we are using some sigmoid function or the half of the bell shape uh, to represent the membership value for given example the membership value for the person having age 30 is 0 
it means we have a range between 0 to 90. So if person is having age 30, he will be considered as a young, but with membership value 0 0.9. So those who are having age between 0 to 10, they will have a very higher membership, probably 1. And as age is decreasing, the membership value for young set will reduce. If we consider another fuzzy set B bar, then uh, let's call it as a very young. And as it is a very young, we are considering the age range between 0 to 60. If we try to model that function, then it may look like this. And for the same person of age 30, this function will return membership value 0 0.5. Because 30 is exactly in between this range, 0 to 60 at a halfway. So we can treat that its membership value will be 0 0.5. Let us discuss the difference between crisp set and fuzzy set. Crisp set is collection of all the elements X where X belongs to capital X. Fuzzy set is defined as a collection of ordered tuple X comma mu A bar of X where mu A bar of X represents membership of element X in fuzzy set A bar. Crisp set is collection of elements whereas fuzzy set is collection of ordered pairs. Crisp set is having a strict boundary Whereas fuzzy set has a fuzzy boundary, so membership value of any element can be between 0 to 1. Fuzzy sets are characterized by characteristics function chi, whereas fuzzy sets are characterized by the membership function mu. Membership value to the crisp set elements is assigned by step function, whereas membership value to the fuzzy set elements can be assigned by different membership functions, maybe a triangular function, maybe trapezoidal, Gaussian function, sigmoid, or any other function. What is fuzzy logic? Fuzzy logic is a mathematical language to express something. So as it is a language, fuzzy logic has its own syntax, its own semantics, its own grammar, and so on. There are some other mathematical languages are also known, like a relational algebra, which is used for the set operations, Boolean algebra, which operates on Boolean variables, predicate algebra which operates on predicates and well-formed formulas. Similarly, we have a fuzzy logic which operates on fuzzy sets. So fuzzy logic deals with fuzzy set or it is also known as a fuzzy algebra. What are the advantages of fuzzy sets? The most important thing is that it's, it's conceptually easy to understand and it's a very natural. Okay, uh, as we have seen that humans are also thinking from the perspective of fuzzy logic. So, Fuzzy logic is very natural to understand. Uh, they are tolerant to imprecise data. So even if data is not in perfect shape or perfect form, fuzzy logic can still work with the data with reduced accuracy. Universal approximation is possible. That means any complex function can be modeled with the help of fuzzy logic. It is quite intuitive. It is very easy to understand how it is operating and what it is doing. It is based on linguistic term. So as this course will go on, we will come across this most of the functionalities that we are typically using the linguistic terms to define the uh, membership sets and all. It's a convenient way to express expert and common sense knowledge using fuzzy logic. And that's why fuzzy logic is very much useful to design expert system. Limitations of fuzzy logic is that how to define membership functions. As we have seen that same element can take different membership values for different membership functions. So to design an ideal membership function for given application is again a matter of choice. There is nothing like a learning mechanism to optimize something in fuzzy logic. And what if we have membership functions provided by two different parties? For example, if we consider the game basketball, then a person with height 5.5 is not considered as a tall person because most of the players in basketballs are having a height 6.5 and above. Whereas in case of gymnast, person even with height 5 feet is considered as a tall. So you see that even height is less, it is kept into the tall uh, set in case of gymnast and even height is 5.5, it is not tall in case of basketball. Defuzzification can produce undesirable result. Crisp set always works with crisp value, that is the real input given to the system. Whereas in case of fuzzy logic or fuzzy systems, the crisp input is converted into fuzzy value, then it will be processed and output is generated in form of fuzzy. And again that fuzzy output is converted into crisp output. So conversion of fuzzy output to crisp output is known as a defuzzification 
and sometimes it leads to undesirable results because there are many methods and all defalsification methods may produce different results. CRISPR precise models can be more efficient and even convenient because it is easy to interpret and easy to understand. Membership value begin to move away from the expected value when there are lots of rules in the system. Often there is a confusion between probability and fuzziness. So uh, let's try to understand with some example. Probability defines the uncertainty of event. So probability will say that whether event will occur or not. Fine. In other words, we can put it like that. It defines the frequency of likelihood that element is in given class. If I say that there are 50% chances that apple is in refrigerator. So if I open refrigerator 10 times, probably 5 times I might find apple in it. Whereas fuzziness describes event ambiguity. Event has occurred, but it is ambiguous. Okay, event itself is ambiguous. So it defines actually similarity of the element for a given set. So uh, if I want to represent the same statement, like there is a 50% chance of an apple being in refrigerator, that defines probability. And there is half an apple in the refrigerator defines the fuzziness. It means the element is not completely in a uh, refrigerator or it is not completely in set 50% apple that means half of the apple is there so if you will open the refrigerator 10 times all 10 times you will find the uh, apple in refrigerator but there will be half the apple applications of fuzzy logic covers a very big span fuzzy logic is used in fuzzy logic controller and fuzzy logic controllers are integral part of day to day equipments we are using in our uh, life like automation for flight control, washing machine, uh, microwave oven, like for environment control, air conditioner we are using. Fuzzy logic is also used in fuzzy clustering. In simple clustering, element will be assigned to particular one cluster only based on the distance from the centroid. Whereas in case of fuzzy clustering, an element can be part of different clusters and for every cluster, its membership value will be different depending upon its distance from the centroid of those clusters. So this is also known as a soft clustering method. Fuzzy mathematical programming is another very important uh, programming language uh, used to model uh, many controllers in which fuzzy logic is very useful. In fuzzy graph theory also, we can apply the fuzzy logic and hybrid systems like artificial neural network fuzzy inference system we can combine fuzzy logic as well as neural network to get the advantage of both. Uh, this is very interesting application called Forex. The full form is foreign exchange. The laboratory for international fuzzy engineering research in Japan has developed this application in 1989 to 1992. So this application was basically used to predict foreign exchange rate so what will be the rate of 1 euro or 1 dollar or 1 rupee that this system was predicting. To predict this, definitely this foreign exchange rate depends on many number of parameters. And uh, this fuzzy system it was designed uh, with 5600 different rules. And those rules were like, if the USA achieved military success on the past day, example in Gulf War, then the price of yen or dollar will slightly increase. So there were such 5600 different rules and based on that it was predicting what will be the foreign exchange rate for given particular day. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Gugani and in today's video I am going to talk about fuzzy examples. Before we proceed, let me recap the concepts of crisp set and fuzzy sets. I have already made the videos on crisp set and fuzzy set. If you have any doubt, please watch the video first. Links are given in the description box. Crisp sets are having a very thin boundary. Any element from the universe of discourse can be either member of crisp set or non-member of the crisp set. That is, for any element, the membership value will be always either 0 or 1. Whereas in case of fuzzy set, the membership value of element can be between 0 to 1. So this is actually infinite valued logic. So depending upon how far the element is from the boundary of the set, different membership values will be assigned between 0 to 1. And fuzzy set will really help us in modeling many natural phenomena where crisp set will fail. Let us try to model 
uh, a bar is equal to two or so function. So if element is having a value two, it should be assigned membership value one. And if value of element move away from two in either side, the membership value should decrease. Uh, this distribution, this Gaussian distribution is used to model this function. As we can see that the element two has membership value one. The element on either side that is one and three have membership value 0 0.3 and rest of all the elements are having membership value zero. So for uh, discussion, I have added only one element four uh, with the membership value zero in the fuzzy set A bar. If I change the shape of this function, so I'm increasing the spread of this Gaussian distribution. And as you can see that the membership value of same elements one and three, which was previously 0 0.3 is now increased up to 0 0.7 and the element four whose membership value in set A bar, which was zero previously is now 0 0.2. Similarly, I am again increasing the spread of this function and the membership value of element one and three is now 0 0.9 and the membership value of element four becomes 0 0.5. So it depends on us what type of membership functions we are using to model the given phenomenon. So for same element, different membership functions will return different membership values. This example I have already talked in introduction to fuzzy logic video. If you have not watched it, please watch first. Let us try to model a bar is equal to young, where range of age is between zero to 90. And we are using this sigmoid or inverse sigmoid function to model the uh, concept. So uh, persons having an age near about zero to 15 are considered as a young. So they are assigned membership value one. And as age is increasing, the membership value of that person in set young will also decrease. For instance, if age is 30, then membership value returned by this uh, function will be uh, 0 0.9. If I consider a set very young, where the range of age is between 0 to 60, for the same person whose age is 30 is assigned membership value 0 0.5. Consider the example a bar is equal to real number close to zero. So if number is close to zero, it should be assigned membership value one. And at it at as number move away from the zero, the membership value should decrease on either side. This phenomenon we can model with the membership function like mu a bar of x is equal to one upon one plus x square. So if I put x is equal to zero in this case, then mu a bar of zero will be one upon one plus zero. That is one. So that's very true. If number is zero, its membership value should be one. If X is equal to one, then mu a bar of one will be one upon one plus one, that is 0.5 and so on. We can compute the membership value for rest of all the elements. So uh, this looks very natural. If number is close to zero, then membership value is one. And as it is moving, membership value is decreasing. By changing the property, we can derive different functions and different membership values. Like our set is right now, a bar is equal to real numbers very close to zeros. So if number is very close to zero, then it will have a higher membership value. And as it moves away from the zero, the decrease in membership value will be now sharp compared to the previous one, because the previous set was what? A bar is equal to real number close to zero. And this set is real number very close to zero. So this phenomenon we can model with the membership function like mu a bar of x is equal to one upon one plus x square whole square. So if we put x is equal to zero, obviously it will return one. For x is equal to one, it will return 0 0.25. So as it can be seen that for previous case, membership value of one was 0.5, but now it is 0.25 because now this should be very close to zero. So uh, obviously it will reduce membership value with the uh, greater decay compared to the previous example. In identical way, we can define different sets like real number very, very close to zero. And that can be modeled by mu a bar of x is equal to one upon one plus x square, whole square, whole square, and so on. Let us try to represent good students who are having a CGPA above 5.0 with the help of crisp set and fuzzy set. So crisp set always consider a very harsh threshold so if student has CGPA above five, then he is treated as a good student. If student has CGPA 4.99, then also he is not considered as a good student. So obviously it is not that natural. So fuzzy set can be used to model this. 
all the students having cgpa greater than 5 will have a membership value 1 and as cgpa is decreasing the membership value of student in good students will decrease so student is still considered as a good student but the membership value will be less now a waste is only toxic if it has an oral toxicity greater than 500 so if we try to model it using fuzzy and crisp representation then crisp set is having a fixed boundary if the toxicity is above 500 classify it as a toxic element and if it is less than uh, 500 then classify it as a non-toxic element so element having toxicity 499 will be treated as a safe in case of crisp set but we all know that that is not true how to represent it using fuzzy logic or fuzzy sets so all the elements whose toxicity is greater than 500 will be in toxic set with membership value 1 and as their toxicity decreases they will still be considered as a toxic they are unsafe but now with the laser membership values so this looks more real more natural the conventional grading system also uh, works on the crisp principle if marks of student is between 91 to 100 he is assigned excellent grade if marks are between 81 to 90 then he is assigned a grade and so on so students having marks 90 will be classified as a grade students and those who have marks 91 will be classified as excellent so a minute change in data is changing the membership of element from one set to another set it is better to model this phenomenon using fuzzy set like this we can derive membership functions something as shown in the diagram all the students having marks greater than 91 will be classified as excellent and if marks are between 80 to 90 then he is a good his membership value in a grade is one they are also member of excellent grade but now with the reduced uh, confidence or we can say with reduced membership value if you consider 85 marks then we can say that the student with 85 marks is in excellent grade with some membership value around 0.5 and he is a member of uh, grade a with membership value 1 so he belongs to both the uh, sets with different membership value or by using certain defuzzification methods and inference rules we can derive what should be the final grade of the students hello folks welcome to code crux this is mahesh Gyani. And in this video, I am going to talk about various fuzzy terminologies. Uh, these are the terms which I am going to introduce you in this uh, video. Let me first introduce you the notion of a fuzzy set. Fuzzy set A bar is defined by a tuple x, comma mu A bar of x, where x is element from the universe of discourse capital X, and mu A bar of x represents membership value of element x in fuzzy set A bar. Support of fuzzy set A bar is a crisp set with elements whose membership value is non-zero. That means mathematically we can define support of A bar is equal to x such that mu A bar of x is greater than zero for all the x in capital X. So graphically we can represent support in this way. As you can see that uh, the support covers only those elements whose uh, trapezoidal membership function returns some non-zero values so elements on either side of this would not be the part of support of the set the core of fuzzy set is defined as a collection of all the elements whose membership value is exactly one that means for element being in core of the fuzzy set must have membership value exactly one mathematically we can define as core of a bar is equal to x where mu a bar of x is equal to 1. Graphically we can define core like this. So as you can see that um, all the elements between this core have membership value exactly 1. Height represents the maximum membership value in the given fuzzy set. Height might not be 1 all the time. So height and core are not the same but whenever height is equal to 1 uh, core will be same. Boundary uh, of the fuzzy set is defined by collection of all the elements whose membership value is between 0 and 1. So elements with membership value less than 0 or elements with membership value 1 will not be the part of uh, boundary. Boundary of fuzzy set A bar is defined as crisp set of all the elements x such that 0 less than mu A bar of x less than 1 for all the x in 
universe of discourse capital X. Graphically, we can see that boundary is in the slope or decreasing membership region only. So all the elements in core are not part of boundary and the elements which are outside um, uh, this trapezoidal membership function are also not part of the uh, boundary of the given fuzzy set. Fuzzy set A bar is called normal if it is having a non-empty core. That means there exists at least some element or at least one element whose membership value is 1. Then we can say that that fuzzy set is normal, otherwise it is not normal. Or in other words, we can say that if fuzzy set is having a height 1, then it is called normal fuzzy set, otherwise it is not normal. And for the subnormal fuzzy set, height of given fuzzy set A bar is less than 1. Graphically, we can show it like this. For given uh, fuzzy set, the highest membership value is 1 and hence given fuzzy set is normal fuzzy set. Crossover points of fuzzy set A bar is points X belongs to capital X at which the membership value is exactly 0 0.5. That means collection of all the points whose membership value is 0 0.5 will form crossover points. And mathematically, we can represent it like crossover of A bar is equal to X, where mu A bar of X is equal to 0 0.5. As we can see in the diagram, point X1 and X2 have membership value 0 0.5, and hence these two points are called crossover points for the given fuzzy set A bar. Bandwidth or the width of the fuzzy set is defined as difference or the gap between two crossover points that is bandwidth of a bar is mode x1 minus x2 so that is the absolute difference between these two point where mu a bar of a1 is equal to mu a bar of a2 is equal to 0.5 that means the membership value of both these elements will be exactly 0.5 and the difference between them is called width or the bandwidth of the fuzzy set a fuzzy set whose core is a single point is called fuzzy singleton or we can say that uh, there should be exactly one point in the set for which mu a bar of x should be 1 or for that point the membership value should be exactly 1. Fuzzy set a bar is called symmetric if its membership function around a center point x is equal to c is symmetric that is if we compute the membership value for all the points around c that either on left side or on right side should have identical membership value. Mathematically, we can say if mu a bar of x plus c is equal to mu a bar of x minus c for all the x in given universe of discourse, then we can say that that fuzzy set is symmetric fuzzy set. If fuzzy sets looks like this, then they are called symmetric fuzzy set. As we can see that around center line x is equal to c, the function is symmetric or the set is symmetric. These two functions or these two sets are not symmetric as we can see that they are not uh, mirrored around the center line. The alpha cut of fuzzy set A bar is a crisp set represented as A alpha which is collection of all the elements from A bar whose membership value is greater than or equal to alpha. Strong alpha cut has relaxed condition that is the membership value of element should be greater than alpha and it is denoted as a alpha plus is equal to x where membership value of all the elements x in that set should be greater than alpha. If we consider alpha is equal to 0 0.2 then elements including x1 and xn will be part of uh, the derived crisp set. If we change the alpha level to 0 0.5 then elements between x2 and xm would be the part of alpha set. And if we consider alpha is equal to 1, then elements between x3 to xk will be the part of alpha set. Uh, from the definition of uh, alpha cuts, uh, we can say that support of a bar is a0 plus. By now, we know that support of any fuzzy set is all the elements whose membership value is greater than 0. So if we take the strong alpha cut A0, it contains only those elements whose membership value is greater than 0. And core of A bar is given by A1 alpha cut. So A1 alpha cut contains all the elements whose membership value 1 or above. But as we know that for fuzzy set membership value cannot be above 1, but it can be 1. So collection of all the elements with membership value 1 is definitely core and it is also known as an A1 that is a one cut of given fuzzy set.
Let us try to understand these concepts with help of example. Consider the universe of discourse capital X is equal to 5 to 85. This is the age range. And depending upon age range, we are deriving different fuzzy sets called infant, young, adult, and senior as shown in the table. And their membership value is also assigned. Uh, there is no infant in the entire list because the age starts from 5 year and hence all the elements have membership value 0. Similarly, young, uh, if he is a 5 year, he is not considered young, so his membership value is 0. Similarly, for adult, we will consider that if age is above 35, then he is adult and uh, membership value is assigned accordingly. And if he is fellow of 55 year, his membership value in senior will be 0 0.3. For 65 year person, membership value in senior uh, set will be 0 0.9. And if he is above 65, his membership value is 1. So, this is the data we are given. From this, we will find out various alpha cuts and strong alpha cuts. Support of this set denoted by S of A bar is equal to X where mu A bar of X greater than 0 that we already know. So, support of infant will be null because there is no element present whose membership value is greater than 0. Support of young would be 15 to 65 because these elements have membership value non-zero. Support of adult would be 25 to 85 and in similar way we can say that support for senior would be 55 to 85. Alpha cut uh, or alpha level set is defined as crisp set A alpha where elements are having membership value greater than or equal to alpha. So if we find uh, alpha cut for young young 0.2 then it will contain all the elements whose membership value is greater than or equal to 0.2 so it contains elements from 15 to 65 and as we can see that element 15 and 65 have membership value 0.2 and still they are part of young 0.2 set if we change the alpha level to 0.4 we will be left with only 25, 35, 45 and 55 element because they have membership value greater than or equal to 0.4. If we consider a strong alpha cut in which, which case the condition is like mu a bar of x should be greater than alpha. If we apply same threshold uh, young 0.2 plus then it will not consider 15 and 65 element because they have membership value exactly 0.2 and alpha, strong alpha cut requires a higher value than the given threshold. From the diagram, we can see that if we apply alpha 1 is equal to 0.5, we will derive a set A alpha 1. And if we apply alpha cut 2, 0 0.3, then we will derive alpha set A alpha 2. As we can see that alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2, but the crisp set derived from them, that is A alpha 1, will be subset of A alpha 2. In short, if alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2, then derived crisp sets A alpha 1 will be always subset of A alpha 2. Consider the example, we are given some membership distribution function whose mean is 100 and its standard deviation is 20. And we have to find out all the elements in the crisp set whose alpha cut is defined with value alpha is equal to 0.6. We already know that a Gaussian function is defined as uh, three two parameters m and sigma where m is the mean of the distribution and sigma is the spread of the distribution and it is given as mu of Gaussian x comma m comma sigma is equal to e raised to minus one half x minus m divided by sigma whole square we already have values of m and sigma and the membership value that is mu Gaussian let's put all these value in the equation so mu Gaussian is given as 0 0.6 which is alpha cut and m and sigma are given as 120 respectively. Readjust the position of variables, apply the natural log on both the side and solve it uh, for the uh, given variable x. At the end, we will get x is equal to 79.7846 and 120.2153. That means when we apply this alpha cut for given distribution, our crisp set will contain all the elements between 79.7846 to 120.2153. Convexity of the fuzzy set. Uh, uh, let us try to understand it from the perspective of polygon. If we select any two random points within the polygon and if we draw a straight line, if all the points on the line are also part of polygon, then that polygon is called convex polygon. 
otherwise it is non convex in case of crisp set we can say that set a is convex if for all the points x1 and x2 in given set if lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 also belongs to a given set for all the values of uh, lambda between 0 to 1 in case of fuzzy set uh, we can say that a bar is a convex fuzzy set if the membership value of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is greater than or equal to minimum membership value of x1 and x2 in given set uh, and this should be true for all the values of hex i for lambda between 0 to 1 then we can say that that given set is convex fuzzy set or in other words we can say that if we have three elements x y z randomly chosen from the fuzzy set and they have a relation such that x is less than y and y is less than z and if it implies if membership value of y is greater than or equal to minimum membership value of x and z then the given set is convex and this should be true for all pair of x y and z from given fuzzy set as we can see from the diagram the in left hand side diagram uh, the y has membership value greater than the minimum membership value of x and z and this is true for all the points so this is convex fuzzy set whereas in case of the diagram in right hand side we can see that membership value of y is not greater than or equal to the minimum membership value of x and z and hence uh, the given set is not convex fuzzy set convex fuzzy sets are first strictly increasing and then strictly decreasing there should not be oscillation like increasing decreasing increasing decreasing if it is so it is definitely not a convex fuzzy set a bar is a convex if all its alpha level sets are also convex open and closed fuzzy set these concepts we are very widely used in uh, while we model the any fuzzy controller the set is called open left as the name suggests it's open from the left hand side it means its membership value of all the elements on left hand side will be one after a certain threshold it is closed from right hand side it means all the elements on right hand side after a certain threshold will have membership value zero so if we talk about a blue uh, distribution or the blue membership function in given example this is the open left uh, mathematically we can define as x approaches to negative infinity the membership value of elements would become one and as x approaches to positive infinity membership value of all the elements will become zero in between these two thresholds the membership value of elements would be non zero open right membership functions are exactly inverse they have membership value 1 on right hand side and membership value 0 on left hand side after a certain threshold mathematically we can say that if limit x tends to minus infinity then membership value of element will become 1 and if x tends to positive infinity membership value will become plus 1 so closed sets are closed from both the side it means as x tends to infinity on either side the membership value will go down to 0 and in between it will remain between 0 to 1. Scalar cardinality of fuzzy set is defined as summation of membership value of all the points in given set that is mode a bar is equal to summation over all the x mu a bar of x. So for given example the scalar cardinality for senior would be 0.3 plus 0.9 plus 1 plus 1 that is 3.2 relative cardinality is simply an average of scalar cardinality that means mode a is divided by mode x where mode x represents cardinality of universal set uh, it is having a nine elements and hence the relative cardinality of senior would be 3.2 divided by 9 that is 0 0.356 fuzzy cardinality is a bit tricky it is actually a collection of tuples uh, it is defined as mode a bar of f is equal to alpha comma mu a bar of alpha of x so let us see how to find out it so first we have to define different alpha levels for the senior so for uh, alpha level 0 0.3 alpha set of senior would contain four elements 55 65 75 and 85 and hence its cardinality would be 4 for alpha level uh, 0 0.9 uh, the cardinality of set senior would be 3 and for alpha level 1 there are two elements and the collection of all this defines the fuzzy cardinality of uh, the given set senior let us try to understand all these concepts with the help of example 
assume the set a bar is equal to x1 comma 0 x2 comma 0 0.2 and so on from this set we will try to understand all the concepts we have discussed so far as we know support is collection of all the elements whose membership value is non zero so x1 and x9 have membership value zero in a bar so they will be excluded from the support core is a collection of all the elements having membership value exactly one so x4 x5 and x6 have membership value one so they will be the part of core crossover points are such a points whose membership value is exactly 0 0.5 so for given fuzzy set a bar x3 and x have membership value exactly 0 0.5 so they will form the crossover points set for the given set a bar alpha cut 0 0.2 includes all the elements whose membership value is greater than or equal to 0 0.2 as we can see from the uh, example uh, x2 to x8 all these elements have membership value greater than or equal to 0 0.2 strong alpha cut includes all the elements whose membership value is above alpha so if we set the same threshold 0.2 then strong alpha cut will omit the elements whose membership value is 0.2 we have to consider only those elements whose membership value is greater than 0.2 so x2 and x8 will also excluded now boundary of fuzzy set is defined by collection of all the elements whose membership value lies between 0 and 1 so elements with membership value 0 and elements with membership value 1 will be excluded from the boundary and hence x2, x3, x7 and x8 forms the boundary of given fuzzy set. Bandwidth is defined by the absolute difference between the two crossover points and as we know that x3 and x7 are the crossover points for the fuzzy set. So bandwidth or the width of this fuzzy set is defined as mode x7 minus x3 uh, we know that if the height of fuzzy set is 1 or if core of the fuzzy set is non empty then it is called normal fuzzy set otherwise it is not normal so uh, the core of this fuzzy set already contains three element x4 x5 and x6 and hence this fuzzy set is normal fuzzy set or we can say that normality of this fuzzy set is true scalar cardinality indicates addition of membership value of all the elements when we do it for given set, it is turned out to be 4.4. The relative cardinality is the average of scalar cardinality. So we have nine elements present in this set. So relative cardinality will be 4.4 divided by 9, that is 0 0.489. Hello folks, welcome to Code Cracks. This is Mahesh Gwadi, and in this video, I am going to cover fuzzy membership functions. Uh, these are the points I am going to cover in this video. I will be talking various kind of fuzzy membership functions including singleton membership functions, triangular function, trapezoidal function, Gaussian function, generalized bell shaped function and the sigmoid membership function. Before we dig into uh, the discussion of various membership functions, let us first uh, understand why we need this fuzzification process. So this is the overall diagram of fuzzy inference system. As you can see that the input to the system comes from this fuzzy file. That input will be in crisp form. That is converted into fuzzy form. That converted fuzzy input will be processed using the knowledge base. Some inference mechanism is applied on that. And finally, the fuzzy output is generated. Now, this output cannot be directly given to the controller. So, we need a mechanism by which we can convert that fuzzy output into the crisp output. Consider the auto mode of air conditioner. So the temperature of the conditioner is set uh, based on different parameters like what is the size of room, how many people are there into the room, what is the temperature inside room, what is the temperature outside room and many other parameters. So all those readings are in crisp form. That is, it is actually a some real number. For example, the temperature of a uh, room could be uh, 25 degree number of people could be 4, the size of room might be uh, 20 square foot and so on. These parameters are in numeric form. It needs to be converted into fuzzy form so that fuzzy inference system can understand it. So this fuzzy membership functions will help us to map that real number into a fuzzy value which ranges between 0 to 1. Similarly, when fuzzy output is generated, we need some defuzzification method which will again map the fuzzy output into crisp output because uh, the output of the fuzzy inference system might be 
decrement the temperature of air conditioner by some amount or by low amount. The sum and low cannot be understood by the controller. It needs some real number so that fuzzy output is converted into crisp number using a defuzzification methods. That crisp number could be 5 degree or 7 degree or 2 degree depending upon the input crisp parameters. Very primitive and very basic uh, membership function is a singleton membership function. It assigns membership value 1 if x is having certain fixed value c and it assigns membership value 0 to rest of all the values of x. In functional form, we can represent singleton membership function using the formula mu of x is equal to 1 if x is set to c and it is 0 otherwise. Triangular membership function is most widely used membership function. It maps crisp input between 0 to 1 using triangulation. Uh, this is quite simple and mathematically efficient uh, membership function. The triangle is defined by three parameters A, B and C where A and C represents base of the triangle and B defines the height of the triangle. Uh, here the x axis represents crisp number and the y axis represents membership value or the fuzzified value of that crisp input which will be always between 0 to 1. If crisp number is less than A or if it is greater than C then the membership value of that will be definitely 0. If crisp number is between A and B then we can apply similar triangle rule and we can easily compute the membership value of that x. We can use the formula like x minus a upon b minus a to compute the membership value of x between a to b. As x approaches to a, the equation will reduce to a minus a upon b minus a, so that is 0 and as we can see from the diagram also that a has membership value 0. So when x is equal to a, its membership value will be 0. As x approaches to b, the equation will reduce to b minus a upon b minus a that is 1 and we can see from diagram also that b has membership value 1. So as we move from a to b, the membership value is decreasing. Now this x could be actually 10, 20, 30 or it may be 100 or 500 or any number but ultimately the membership value will be mapped between 0 to 1. If x is in between b and c, and again using similar triangle method, we can compute the membership value for x as mu of x is equal to c minus x upon c minus b. As x approaches to b, the equation will reduce to c minus b upon c minus b which is 1. And we can see in diagram also that b has membership value 1. And as x approaches to c, equation will reduce to c minus c upon c minus b which is 0 and that is true from diagram itself. So as we move away from the B, uh, the membership value will keep decreasing. At C it becomes 0 and after for any value of x greater than C it will remain 0. We have discussed all possible scenarios. If x is less than A, membership value is 0. If x is greater than C, then also membership value is 0. And for any value between A to B and B to C, we have different membership uh, functions. We can combine all these membership values using single membership functions that is mu triangle a comma b comma c is equal to 0 if x is less than a it is x minus a upon b minus a if x is in between a and b it is c minus x upon c minus b if it is in between b and c and that will be again 0 if number is greater than c. In simplified form we can represent the triangular membership function using this equation also. Let us find the membership value of x is equal to 8 for given triangular membership function where a is equal to 2, b is equal to 6 and c is equal to 10. From previous slide we already know how to compute membership value using triangular function. If we put appropriate values into this and if we simplify we will be left with this. Put x is equal to 8 into this equation. So uh, we will be left with this and the final membership value will be 0 0.5. So crisp value 8 will be converted into fuzzy value 0 0.5. The trapezoidal membership function is also widely used in fuzzy uh, controller design. Uh, it is almost similar to triangular function except that flat uh, height. 
the membership value of any number less than a and greater than d will be zero. If number is in between b and c, then its membership value will be obviously one. If number is between a and b, then we can apply the same triangular rule as we used in case of triangular membership function, and the membership value could be given by x minus a upon b minus a. And if number is in between c and d, then in similar fashion we can compute the membership value using the equation d minus x upon d minus c. And in simplified form, we can represent it using this formula. Consider uh, this trapezoidal membership function. We have to find out the membership value or the fuzzified value for crisp input x is equal to 3.5. Put value of all the necessary parameters of this trapezoid into the equation and simplify it. Put x is equal to 3.5 in this equation. Solve it. So we will get membership value 0.75. The Gaussian membership function is described by two parameters, uh, mean of this distribution and the spread of the distribution, that is by c and sigma. Uh, uh, mathematically, uh, it is defined as mu Gaussian of x, comma c, comma sigma. It is given by e raised to minus one half x minus c upon sigma whole square. So this is standard equation of Gaussian distribution. By setting appropriate sigma and c, we can derive different bell shapes. And uh, for any value of and for any crisp value of x, this function will always return value between 0 to 1. Let us find uh, the membership value for x is equal to 9 using Gaussian function, where the parameters are m is equal to 10 and sigma is equal to 3. So uh, this is the equation for computing the membership value using Gaussian uh, membership function. Put appropriate value of uh, variables and put x is equal to uh, 9 into this and solve it. So we will get the membership value 0 0.9459. Generalized bell shape membership function is also known as a Cauchy membership function. And this is generalization of all the membership functions we have discussed. By setting appropriate parameters a, b and c, we can generate a family of membership functions. And the equation for mu bell x a b c is given as 1 upon 1 plus x minus c upon a raised to 2 b. Wherever this crossover point happens, x and y at c minus a and c plus a distance, uh, the slope at point x is computed as b upon twice a, and slope at point y is given by minus b upon twice a where a, b and c are the parameters which will define the shape and spread of this membership function. Consider the input bell shape function. We have to find out the membership value of x is equal to 8 for this. We are not given the parameters of this uh, membership function. So we have to assume appropriate parameters. Consider that c is equal to 10, a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3 for this function. Put this value in the equation of mu bell and uh, put x is equal to 8 into this because we want to calculate membership value for x is equal to 8. Uh, you solve the equation and we'll get 0 0.5 as the membership value. This is the example of generalized bell shape membership function. By setting e is equal to b is equal to 1 and c is equal to 0, we can derive something like a perfect Gaussian. And uh, the equation for this Gaussian would be 1 upon 1 plus x square. Similar way, by changing different values of a and b, we will get different uh, shapes and different position of this generalized bell shape function. Sigmoid function is very popular in machine learning. It is used in classification. Specifically, logistic regression and neural network employs the concepts of sigmoid function to uh, map the output in one of the classes. The sigmoid function is defined by two attributes, a and c, where c is the center of the sigmoid function and a determines the slope at the crossover point that is at x is equal to c. Wherever sigmoid function cuts uh, x is equal to c line, at that point whatever slope is given that is defined by value a. Uh, the equation of sigmoid function is given as 1 upon 1 plus e raised to minus a into x minus c. By changing the different values of a, we can get different shapes as shown in diagram. Consider the example. This is the function we are given. 
and we have to compute the membership value for x is equal to 8. Again, parameters are not specified for this function, so we will assume appropriate parameters for that. We already know the equation. Uh, assume that b is equal to 6 and a is equal to 2. We put it into the equation, set x is equal to 8 into this equation and solve it. So finally, we will get the membership value for x is equal to 8 as 0 0.98 or it is very much going with the diagram shown in here. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Guyani and in this video, I am going to talk about linguistic variables and hedges. So in this video, I will introduce what linguistic variables are, what are the hedges and how we can model different ranges using linguistic variables and how we can modify them using hedges. We will also talk about generalization of membership functions. ZA has defined linguistic variable as a variable whose values are words or sentences in natural language or in AI. It means instead of using a natural number, we are going to use some phrase for that or the words for that. It will make very convenient to represent the entire range. Instead of writing down individual numbers, now we will be using a word for entire range. So that will be more intuitive to represent number range. For example, uh, we may assign a linguistic variable cold to the temperature range from 0 to 20. We may assign a linguistic variable uh, warm to temperature range from 0 to 40 and high to temperature range from 20 to 60 and uh, extreme if it is above 40. As we can see that if temperature value is 0, its membership value in cold set is 1 and as temperature is increasing, its membership value in that set is decreasing. And that is quite natural because after certain temperature value, it will not remain cold anymore and temperature is getting high and high, so water will become now warm. So as we move away from the zero, the membership value of temperature in cold set is decreasing, but its membership value in warm set is increasing. At the same time, element could be present in more than one fuzzy sets with different membership values. So as we keep increasing the temperature, at uh, temperature value 20, the coldness of water will vanish. We can say that now it is no more cold and hence its membership value will become zero. But the water with temperature 20 is considered as a quite warm water. So the membership value of that temperature will be highest in warm set, that is one. If we move on either side of 20 degree temperature, the warmness of water will decrease. On one side, the membership value in cold set will increase. On other side, the membership value in hot set will increase because now temperature is going above the warm and hence we can say that it is becoming hotter and hotter. This will actually introduce some imprecision in the representation. Instead of a crisp number, now we have a range of number represented by a same uh, linguistic variable. Uh, imprecision of linguistic variable, in fact, make them very much useful in reasoning process. We could classify linguistic variables into different categories like quantification terms. So uh, they might be like all, most, many, about one fourth and so on. Uh, they may represent usuality term like always, sometimes, seldom, never. It might represent likelihood terms like certainly, likely, possibly, certainly not, etc. Hedges are the linguistic variables that changes the shape of membership functions. So by applying hedges, we can create a new sets from the given set. For example, the hedges vary and sort of can shift membership value on opposite direction because very indicates higher value and short of indicates lower value. So for any uh, set, for example, a uh, tall set. So if we say very tall, then we are moving on right hand side of the x axis that it is quite tall. And if we say sort of tall, then the membership value will shift on left hand direction on x axis. So uh, this is how hedges will be useful to create a new sets out of the given set. Hedges could be seen in different forms like they can be used to intensify a fuzzy set and we can use um, hedges like very, extremely, etc. It may dilute the membership function of element into the fuzzy set and the hedges uh, used for that is somewhat sort of which represents a laser quantity. Uh, it may represent uh, probabilities and those hedges could be probably, likely, not likely, etc. It 
might approximate a scalar or single number uh, by using the hedge exactly and it might express some big or the rough uh, quantity uh, that is uh, by using the hedge is most seldom sometimes etc consider the fuzzy set e bar which represents temperature range from minus uh, 15 to 25 and b bar is the fuzzy set which covers the temperature range from 5 onwards let us label them using linguistic variable so a bar will be represented as a cold climate and b bar we are representing as a hot climate so it's quite intuitive if temperature is uh, in negative range or it is near to zero it is considered as a quite cold and hence membership value for temperature range from minus 15 to 5 will be one in cold set as temperature increases its coldness is decreasing and hotness is increasing and uh, the temperature values less than 5 will not be considered as hot anymore so their membership value in hot set will be zero but as it is going up 6 7 8 and so on its membership value in hot set is increasing and we will consider that up to 25 it is not uh, perfectly hot so membership value will be between 0 to 1 and as temperature goes up above 25 then the membership value of that temperature in hot set will become 1 and uh, it will not be considered cold anymore and its membership value in cold set will become zero. From these linguistic variables, we can create few more sets by using certain operations. Like not cold set, we can create uh, by taking a complement of fuzzy set A bar. So A bar complement is given by one minus mu A bar of X. So simply by taking the complemented membership value of A bar, we can derive a new set which is called not cold climate. In similar way, we can also derive not hot climate by taking the complemented membership values of set B bar. Extreme climate indicates uh, that temperature value is either very cold or it is very hot. So it should be extreme on both the side. So we shall take the union operation of uh, cold as well as hot. So the membership value is given for uh, this extreme climate as maximum of membership value of X in set A bar and that of in set B bar. The pleasant climate is neither too hot nor too cold. So we shall take intersection of these two sets. So it will consider minimum value of these two sets. So it will simply um, clip out the highest or the extreme values of hot and cold temperature. Uh, the graphical representation is shown here. As we can see that extreme value is having the highest membership value, whereas uh, the pleasant climate set is having membership value in range of uh, just 5 to 25. We can create a family of membership functions from the given membership function uh, with the help of concentration and dilation operation. Concentration operation is defined by taking the kth power of any uh, fuzzy set that is it is represented as k power of a bar and that is nothing but simply kth power of membership values of element in given set k bar. If k is greater than 1, it is known as a concentration and if k is less than 1, it is known as a dilation. So if we want to uh, concentrate the set or if we want to increase the membership value of elements, we should select k greater than 1 and if you want to dilute the set, that means if you want to uh, reduce the membership value or intensity of the uh, fuzzy set, we should select k less than 1. Let age be the universe of age. And we are dividing it into three uh, sub fuzzy sets young, middle aged, and old. Corresponding to young set, we may create different sets using hedges. For example, uh, our sets might be very young, not young, very, very young, or extremely young. Similarly, we can create different sets from uh, old by applying various hedges to that. The membership value of those sets can be uh, calculated using concentration or dilation. It depends on what type of hedges we have applied. If they are concentrating hedges, then we have to uh, select k greater than 1. And if they are diluting hedges, we should select k less than 1. Here, mu old of x represents membership value of person in set old. Mu old of x square represents membership value of person in set very old. In similar way, mu old of x raised to 2 raised to 2 indicates membership value of person in set very very old 
and the mu old of x power 2 power 2 and its power 2 represents membership value of person in set extremely old so this is how uh, we can define a different sets as well as we can compute its membership value by applying certain concentration operation this power is not fixed we can use it uh, 1.5 power or we might use 3.5 or 3.2 1.5 anything but it should be greater than uh, 1 and uh, it should model the data in a proper way the membership value in diluted set of old that is more or less old is defined as mu old of x raised to 0 0.5 so it is reducing the membership value of old because more or less old defines that person is not that old so its membership value in old set should decrease let us try to model the membership value of all these sets with the help of uh, generalized bell shape uh, membership function if you don't know how generalized bell membership function is working then i recommend you to watch fuzzy membership function video the link of that video is given in description box bell membership function is defined by three parameters a b and c for any given parameters a b and c the membership value of x is modeled as 1 upon 1 plus x minus c upon a raised to 2b the membership value for set young is defined with the parameters a is equal to 20 b is equal to 2 and c is equal to 0 so ultimately this will result into 1 upon 1 plus x by 20 raised to 4 in similar way we can define the membership value of x in old set using the membership function 1 upon 1 plus x minus 100 upon 30 raised to 6 so appropriate a b and c we have to choose to model any given range of the variables and for middle we can use the parameters a b and c as 30 6 and 50 from this set we can derive new sets like not young so we already have membership value of young so not young is quite easy to calculate we do not require to create a new uh, membership function for that we can simply compute the membership values of x in not young set by computing the complement of young set young but not so young so the membership value for this set we can compute by taking the intersection of membership values of set young as well as not young and hence it is given by mu young of x intersection complement of that consider the truth is having values absolute false very false false fairly true very true and absolutely true and assume that true value is defined as true of u is equal to u and false of u is equal to 1 minus u where value of u varies between 0 to 1 so we will find out how to represent all these uh, modifiers absolute false very false and so on uh, with the help of uh, diagram as well as with the uh, membership functions so absolutely false of u is given as 1 if u is equal to 0 as we know that u varies from 0 to 1 if u is 0 then it is considered as a false because the member truth value is modeled with the help of u so if u is 0 then membership value of that in false set will be 1 and it will be 0 otherwise similarly as u represents the truth value if u is 1 then membership value of u in truth set or absolutely truth set would be 1 and it would be 0 otherwise fairly true and very true are the opposite hedges fairly true represents less true and very true represents more true or the higher value of true so the membership function for them could be modeled as a square root of u and square of u fairly false and very false are opposite of fairly true and very true so uh, their membership value is cal calculated just by taking the complement value of the membership values of fairly true and very true that means fairly false we can model by 1 minus u and very false we can model by 1 minus u whole square and the shape of this membership function is as shown in the diagram this is how linguistic variables will uh, simplify the way to represent the entire set of range hedges are used to create or modify the shape of the original set and by applying concentration and dilation operation we can calculate membership values of different sets created using this hedges hello folks welcome to codecrafts this is mahesh Vyadi and in this video i am going to talk about certain properties of crisp sets 
If you don't know what is CRISPR-Cas, I have already made a video on introduction to CRISPR-Cas. Please watch it first. Link is given in the description box. We will be talking about following different properties of CRISPR-Cas, that is involution, commutativity, associativity, and so on. Let us start discussing it one by one. Uh, before we proceed, uh, first uh, understand whatever sets we are going to use for the example. Uh, the universal set capital X contains elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Three crisp sets are derived from that. That is A is equal to 1, 2, 3, B is equal to 2, 3, 4 and C is equal to 5, 6. Involution says complement of A complement is always going to be a same set A. So if you find A complement for given set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, that is nothing but it's a complement with respect to universal set. That is x minus a, that would be 4, 5, 6. If you find complement of this a complement again, then that would be 1, 2, 3, which is nothing but set itself, and hence involution property is proved. Commutativity, it says that a union b is equal to b union a. So it is something like a plus operator. a plus b is same as b plus a. To prove this, let us first find out a union b, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and if we compute B union A, that is also going to be same. And this property is also hold for the intersection. That is A intersection B is equal to B intersection A. Uh, if we compute A intersection B, it is 2 comma 3. And uh, B intersection A is also 2 comma 3. Associativity, that is A union B union C is same as first you find A union B and take the union of that with set C. Let us first find out left hand side of this equation. A union B would be 1, 2, 3 and 4 and union of that with C will be 1, 2, 6. If we first find B union C then that would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and union of that with set A would be same as LHS that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this property is hold and uh, it is also true for the intersection also that is A intersection B intersection with C is the same as A intersection B intersection C. Uh, if we compute the intersection uh, on left hand side then that will be null because A intersection B is 2, 3 and intersection of that with C will be null and if we try to find out it for right hand side then B intersection C is null and if we take the intersection of that with A then that is also null. Uh, set is also having property of distributivity that is A union B intersection C is same as A union B intersection A union C. So let us first find out uh, A union B intersection C. So first we need to compute B intersection C which is nothing but it's a 5 and when we take the union of that with set A then we will get set A itself. Now to compute the right hand side of this uh, property First we will compute A union B and A union C and intersection of that is 1, 2, 3 and hence we can see that this distributive property is also proved and uh, this is also true uh, for the other side that is A intersection B union C is same as A intersection B union A intersection C and this also we can prove with the help of example. So you can see that um, this is true for left hand side as well as it is same for right hand side. Absorption property. So A union A intersection B is always A. We know that A intersection B will be a smaller set or it is a collection of elements which are present in A and B both. That means that intersection will be always going to be subset of A and if we take a union of set with its subset then definitely we will get the set itself that is A union A intersection B will be definitely A. So A intersection B in our case is 2 comma 3 and if you find the union of that with A then we will end up with 1 2 3 which is nothing but it's a set A. A intersection A union B is equal to A. We know that A union B will be the super set of A because it contains all the elements of A plus additional elements from B. So when we take intersection of set with its super set, definitely we will end up with the set itself. In given case, A union B is 1, 2, 3, 4, which is super set of A. And when we take intersection of that with capital A, we will get the set A itself. Redempotency or tautology. So A union A is definitely A 
and A intersection A is also A. Crisp set also holds the properties of identity that is A union X is always X that is A is a subset capital X is universe of discourse union of anything with respect to universe of discourse will be always universe itself. A intersection X is equal to X here A is subset and X is a bigger set so when we take the intersection of these two sets definitely we will get the small set that is the subset capital A. A union phi is equal to capital A. When we take union of null set with any set, it will return set itself. And A intersection phi is equal to phi because phi has no elements and A is having certain elements and intersection will be again no element that is null. Sets also follow the De Morgan's law that says A union B whole complement is same as A complement intersection B complement. So let us first compute A union B which is nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4 and the complement of that is going to be 5 comma 6. Now to compute the right hand side first we will compute A complement, B complement and intersection of that is going to be 5, 6 which is nothing but A union B full complement. The another De Morgan's law says that A intersection B full complement is same as A complement union B complement. So let us first find out A intersection B which is 2 comma 3 and complement of that would be 1, 4, 5, 6. For right hand side, first we will compute A complement which is 4, 5, 6, B complement which is 1, 5, 6 and union of that would be 1, 4, 5, 6 which is same as LHS. Law of contradiction says A intersection A complement will be always phi if it is a crisp set. By definition, uh, now we know that A complement contains all the elements which are not in A. So if we take intersection of A and A complement definitely we will not find any common elements in them and hence their intersection is null. Uh, as you can see that A complement for given example is 4, 5, 6 whereas A is 1, 2, 3. So when we find the intersection of that, that will be definitely null. Law of excluded middle says A union, A complement is entire universe. That means A contains some element, A complement contains rest of other elements. So when we take the union, it will form the entire universe, capital X. For given example, A complement is 4, 5, 6, A is 1, 2, 3. So when we take union of these two sets, it is capital X. That is nothing but it's a universe of discourse. Hello folks, welcome to CodeCrux. This is Mahesh Nivani. And in this video, I'm going to talk about properties of fuzzy sets. Fuzzy set follows almost identical properties to crisp sets. I have already made a video on properties of crisp set. The link of video is given in description box. In this video, I am going to talk about different properties of fuzzy sets and uh, follow, that will be followed by the, how to find fuzziness and inaccuracy in the fuzzy set. And at last, we will be talking about various properties of uh, useful operations like complement, union and intersection. As we know that a fuzzy set is uh, following almost all the properties of crisp set. So the first property we are going to talk is involution property. It says complement of complement of set is set itself. That is complement of a bar complement is set a bar itself. For fuzzy sets, I am not going to take the examples. All the properties I have discussed with example in video of properties of crisp sets. So you can refer that video. Fuzzy sets also holds the properties of commutativity that is A union B is same as B union A and it is also true for intersection that is A intersection B is same as B intersection A. Fuzzy sets are having property of associativity that is A bar union B bar union C bar will be same as A bar union B bar union C bar and for intersection it would be A bar intersection B bar intersection C bar is same as first we compute intersection of A bar and B bar and then take the intersection with the C bar. Fuzzy sets are also having the property of distributivity that is A bar union B bar intersection C bar would be A bar intersection B bar union A bar intersection C bar and in same way uh, it is also true for A bar intersection B bar union C bar. So we simply have to take the outer operator uh, with the inner fuzzy sets. Fuzzy sets also follow the property of absorption that is A bar union A bar intersection B bar is going to be A bar. 
as we know that intersection operation always return the smaller uh, fuzzy value or smaller membership value so a bar intersection b bar will be the smaller number and the union of that with a bar will always give us the maximum value so ultimately that will be the membership value of set itself and in same way a bar intersection a bar union b bar will also be a bar because a bar union b bar always returns the highest membership value and when we take the intersection of that with a bar it will return the minimum membership value that will be identical to a bar idempotency property that is a bar union a bar would be a bar and a bar intersection a bar will also be same as the set itself fuzzy sets having properties of identity that is a bar union phi is a bar as we know union of phi with any set will be uh, set itself and intersection of phi with any set will be phi that is a bar intersection phi will be phi union of any set with universe of discourse will be universe itself and intersection of any set with universe will be set itself and hence a bar union x is x and a bar intersection x would be a bar fuzzy sets also follow the property of transitivity that is if set a bar is subset of b bar and b bar is subset of c bar then a bar is also subset of c bar or we can say that a bar is contained in c bar d morgan's law is also true for fuzzy sets that is a bar union b bar whole complement is same as a bar complement intersection b bar complement and a bar intersection b bar whole complement is same as a bar complement union b bar complement all these properties we have discussed with example for the crisp set and that's why i am not taking the examples here uh, except these two properties all the properties of crisp sets are also true for fuzzy sets uh, crisp sets also follow the property of law of excluded middle and law of contradiction but fuzzy sets does not follow these two property that is if we take a bar intersection a bar complement that will not be phi and if we take a bar union a bar complement this will not be the universe of discourse these two properties are different from the crisp set entropy of set determines what is the uncertainty into the set that is how uh, a membership value is distributed into the set if all the elements are having the identical membership value that means the entropy in set is less but as membership value changes uh, the entropy value will go high entropy of fuzzy set is defined by the formula h a bar is equal to minus 1 by n summation over 1 to n mu a bar of xi into log mu a bar of xi plus 1 minus mu a bar of xi into log 1 minus mu a bar of xi where mu a bar of xi represents membership value of element xi in set a bar and n represents number of elements into the set so that will tell us that what is the distribution or uh, how the membership value of elements differ from each other let us try to understand it with the example consider the set e bar is equal to x1.1 x2.3 and so on if we put all this value in given formula then entropy would be h of e bar is equal to minus 1 by 4 because there are four elements in fuzzy set e bar and if you put all this value into the equation then we will end up with h of e bar is equal to 0.2499 that means entropy of this fuzzy set is 0.2499 inaccuracy of fuzzy set is measured with respect to some other set uh, the inaccuracy of fuzzy set b bar if you measure it with respect to set a bar then it is given as i of a comma b is equal to minus 1 by n summation over 1 to n elements mu a bar of xi into log mu b bar of xi plus 1 minus mu a bar of xi into log 1 minus mu bar of mu b bar of xi entropy is measured with set itself whereas inaccuracy is measured with respect to some other sets let us try to find out what is the inaccuracy in set a and b consider two sets a bar and b bar as shown if we put all the membership values in given equation then inaccuracy will turn out to be 0.4717 so inaccuracy will tell us that how one set is different from other set or how the membership value of set b is differing from membership value of set a bar let us discuss uh, properties of very important operations complement union and intersection we know that a bar complement is 1 minus a or we can write x comma 1 minus mu a bar of x where x is the element 
and 1 minus mu a bar of x is complement, complemented membership of that element. For simplicity, in our discussion, we will be using notation a for mu a bar of x and b for mu b bar of x. If, if we consider complement as a function, then it maps some scalar input between 0 to 1 to some other scalar value between 0 to 1. So, function c could be defined over 0, 0,1 to 0, 0,1 and it satisfies following axioms. Axiom 1 says, if we talk about the extreme membership value, then complement of 0 would be 1 and complement of 1 would be 0. This is known as a boundary condition for the complement operation. Axiom 2 says that if a less than b, then complement of a would be greater than or equal to complement of b, where a and b are membership value of any element in fuzzy set a bar and b bar respectively. These two axioms form axiomatic skeleton for the fuzzy complement. Fuzzy complement is also having certain other properties like the function c is continuous because it is mapping the real number between 0 to 1 to real number between 0 to 1. When we take the complement of any real number between 0 to 1, it will be always a number between 0 to 1 and hence we can say that uh, complement function is also uh, continuous. If we find complement of complement of any value, it will be the value itself. So this is something like an involution property as we have discussed uh, in this video itself. Fuzzy union is defined over two sets. So if we represent union operation as a function, then u would be 0, 0,1 by 0, 0,1 to 0, 0,1 because union operation will always select maximum value from two sets and it will return that value. If we consider the extreme membership values, then union of 0, 0, will be 0, union of 0, 1 will be 1, union of 1, 0 will be 0, 1, and union of 1, 1 will be 1. This is known as a boundary condition. Exam 2 says that if a less than a dash and b less than b dash, then union of a, b would be less than or equal to union of a dash, b dash. This is known as a strict monotonic property of the union. Exam 3 uh, says that uh, union is also commutative, that is union of a, b is equal to union of b, a. Union operation is also associative, that is union of union of a, b, c is same as union of a, union of b, c. Uh, These four uh, axioms forms axiomatic skeleton for the fuzzy union. Just like complement property, Union also is having a continuous property and it also follows the property of idempotency that is union of a comma a will be always a. When you take the union of identical sets then it will be set itself. Fuzzy intersection is having almost identical properties just like union. Intersection is also taken between two sets. Intersection function maps 0 comma 1 by 0 comma 1 value to 0 comma 1. Uh, the difference is that intersection will always select minimum membership value from given two inputs. If we talk about the extreme membership values, again intersection of 0, 0 will be 0, intersection of 0, 1 will be 0, intersection of 1, 0 will be 0, intersection of 1, 1 is 1 that we already know. This is known as boundary condition. If a less than a dash and b less than b dash, then intersection of a comma b will be less than or equal to intersection of a dash comma b dash. We can also say that fuzzy intersection is having monotonic property. Fuzzy intersection is also commutative. That is intersection of a comma b is same as intersection of b comma a and it is also associative. These four axioms form axiomatic skeleton for the fuzzy intersection just like union operation. Fuzzy intersection is also continuous and it is also uh, having the property of idempotence. That is, intersection of set with itself will be always the given set. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Kivani and in this video, I am going to talk about various operations on fuzzy sets. If you have any confusion in understanding fuzzy sets, then I have already made a video on introduction to fuzzy sets. Link is given in description box. So please watch that video first. In this video, I am going to talk about basic operations like union, intersection and complement. In the later video, 
I'll talk about advanced operations like various type of sum operations, difference operations and the product operations. The union of two fuzzy sets A bar and B bar is given as C bar is equal to A bar union B bar and in set notation we can represent C bar is equal to A bar union B bar which is a tuple x comma mu A bar union B bar of x where mu A bar union B bar of x represents membership value of element x in the union set. We can compute the membership value in union set as follow mu C bar of x is equal to mu A bar of x disjunction mu B bar of x where disjunction operation is nothing but it's a union operation and it always returns maximum value of two arguments. In other words, we can say that membership value of any element in union set is given as max of mu A bar of x comma mu B bar of x where mu A bar and mu B bar represents membership value of element x in fuzzy set A bar and B bar respectively. Graphically, we can show it like this. The top row represents membership value of element in fuzzy set A bar and B bar as shown. We know that union returns the maximum membership value of element from the both the sets. For these elements, the membership value in fuzzy set A bar is non-zero and membership value in fuzzy set B bar is zero. So for this region, the union of these two, these two sets would be the membership value of A bar. Wherever set A bar and B bar is having a overlapping membership values, we should return the maximum membership value. For remaining elements, the membership value of element in set A bar is zero and that is non-zero in set B bar and hence it will return the membership value from set B bar. So bottom row indicates the final union operation. Consider sets A bar and B bar as shown. To compute the union operation, we have to find out maximum membership value for each element from both the sets. So we can compute mu A bar union B bar of x1 as max of mu A bar of x1 comma mu B bar of x1. That is to compute the membership value of x1 in union set we have to find out maximum membership of that element in set A bar and B bar. Membership value of x1 in set A bar is 0 0.2 and that is in set B bar is 0 0.8. So that will be max of 0 0.2 comma 0 0.8 that is 0 0.8. In similar way, mu A bar union B bar of x2 will be the maximum membership value of x2 in set A bar and B bar which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 respectively and final output will be 0 0.6. In identical way, we can compute the membership value for element x3, x4 and x5 in union set and final union set will be A bar union B bar is equal to x1 0 0.8, x2 0 0.6 and so on. There are different varieties of union operations depending upon applications and need. Mathematicians and researchers have proposed various union or sum operations. Uh, some of them are listed here, algebraic sum, bounded sum, drastic sum, amateur sums and few more. In next video, we will be talking about some of the sum operations for the fuzzy sets. Intersection of two fuzzy sets A bar and B bar is given as C bar is equal to A bar intersection B bar. In set notation, we can represent C bar is equal to A bar intersection B bar as a tuple x comma mu a bar intersection b bar. Mu a bar intersection b bar represents membership value of element into the intersection set. We can say that mu c bar of x is equal to mu a bar of x conjunction mu b bar of x. This conjunction operation represents intersection and it always returns the minimum of the arguments. In other words, we can say that the intersection operation would return minimum membership value of that element from both the sets that is mean of mu a bar of x comma mu b bar of x. Graphically we can represent it like this. The top row represents membership value of elements in set a bar and in set b bar. For this region the membership value of element in set a bar is non-zero and in set b bar it's zero. And as per the definition of intersection it always returns the minimum membership and hence the membership value in final set would be zero. 
for non zero membership value when two sets overlaps uh, the intersection operation will select the membership value from the function or from the set which is having the least membership or the minimum membership in this region the membership value of elements in set a bar is zero and that is for set b bar is non zero so intersection operation will select the membership value zero for rest of the elements and the bottom diagram shows the final output or the final membership function of the set c bar consider two sets a bar and b bar as given to compute the intersection of these two sets we have to find out element wise minimum membership value and we should assign it to the particular element we can compute mu a bar intersection b bar of x1 as minimum membership of x1 in set a bar and in set b bar the membership value of x1 in set a bar is 0.2 and that is in set b bar is 0.8 so mu a bar intersection b bar of x1 would be minimum of 0.2 comma 0.8 that is 0.2 in similar fashion we can compute the membership value of elements x2 as 0.5 x3 as 0.4 x4 as 0.2 and x5 as 0.1 the final intersection set c bar is given as a bar intersection b bar which is x1.2 x2 0.5 and so on the complement of fuzzy set a bar is denoted as a bar complement and complement of fuzzy set is given as a bar complement is equal to x comma mu a bar complement of x where mu a bar complement of x represents complemented membership value of element x in fuzzy set a bar complemented membership value of x we can compute by subtracting the membership value of x from 1 that is mu a bar complement of x is equal to 1 minus mu a bar x graphically we can represent like this the top row indicates membership function or membership values for elements in set a bar to compute the complement of that we should subtract membership value of all the elements from 1 so those elements who have membership 1 will become 0 elements having membership value 0 will become 1 and all the elements which are having non zero membership value will become 1 minus that particular membership value consider set a bar is equal to x1 0.2 x2 0.5 and so on as we know to compute the complement of that we have to subtract the membership value of each element from 1 so a bar complement will be x1 0.8 x2 0.5 and so on where this value 0.8 is derived by subtracting the membership value of element x1 from 1 that is 1 minus 0.2 is 0.8 if we observe carefully a bar intersection a bar complement would be x1 0.2 x2 0.5 x3 0.4 and so on we know that intersection operation always selects minimum membership value of two elements the membership value of x1 is derived from minimum membership value of x1 in set a bar and a bar complement which is 0.2 and 0.8 respectively and hence minimum of that is 0.2 and in similar way we can compute the membership value for rest of the elements and you can observe that uh, most of the elements are having non zero membership value and hence this is not a null set and if we compute a bar union a bar complement so union operation will select maximum membership from two sets so that would be x1 comma 0.8 x2 comma 0.5 and so on and again we can see that all elements are not having membership value exactly one so this is not is equal to universe of discourse because all the elements in universe has membership value exactly one if you can recall crisp set follows the law of contradiction and law of excluded middle that is for crisp set a intersection a complement would be 5 and a union a complement would be always x if you are not knowing this property then please refer the video properties on crisp set uh, the link of that video is already given in description box so these two properties are true for crisp set but these properties are not hold for the uh, fuzzy sets so in case of fuzzy sets a bar intersection a bar complement is not equal to null and a bar union 
a bar complement is not equal to universe hello folks welcome to code crux this is mahesh gurani and in this video i am going to talk about various operations on fuzzy set this is part 2 uh, in part 1 i have discussed about basic operations like uh, union intersection and complement i recommend you to watch the video operations on fuzzy set part 1 before you watch this video the link of that video is given in the description box in this video i am going to talk about various sum operations like algebraic sum disjunctive sum disjoint sum bounded sum and so on i'll also talk few types of difference operation such as algebraic sum and bounded sum and at the end i'll talk about various product operations like scalar product vector product and the cartesian product the algebraic sum of two fuzzy sets a bar and b bar is defined as a bar algebraic sum b bar is equal to a tuple x comma mu a bar algebraic sum b bar this symbol represents algebraic sum operation to compute the membership value of element x in algebraic sum we have to subtract the multiplied membership value of element in both the set from addition of membership value in the both the sets that is mu a bar algebraic sum b bar of x is equal to mu a bar of x plus mu bar of x minus mu a bar of x into mu b bar of x consider the sets a bar and b bar these both notations are identical we have already talked about this in previous videos either i can represent this first notation where i am writing membership value in numerator and uh, the element itself in denominator or i can represent it in the form of tuple to compute the algebraic sum first we'll compute the addition of membership values in both the sets that is mu a bar of x plus mu b bar of x will return the element wise membership summation that is membership of x1 in this set would be the membership value of x in a bar plus membership value of x in b bar and so on here it will be 1 plus 0 0.4 is equal to 1.4 and so on the multiplication of membership is a straight away point wise multiplication which is uh, 0.4 for x1 0.1 for x2 and so on so this 0 0.4 is nothing but 1 multiplied by 0 0.4 the membership value of x2 is 0 0.5 into 0 0.2 that is 0 0.1 and so on and the algebraic sum is computed by taking the difference of this that is a bar algebraic sum b bar would be 1.4 minus 0 0.4 that is 1 0 0.7 minus 0 0.1 that is 0 0.6 and so on as you can see that when we simply add two uh, membership values it can go above 1 but when we find the final uh, membership value in algebraic sum it will be always bounded between 0 and 1 disjunctive sum is identical for crisp set and fuzzy set it is defined as a bar disjunctive sum b bar which is equal to a bar intersection b bar complement union a bar complement intersection b bar so a bar union b bar in set notation we can represent as x comma mu a bar disjunction b bar where mu a bar disjunction b bar of x represents membership of x in disjunctive sum set by definition we know that complemented value is computed by 1 minus the membership value so mu a bar intersection b bar complement will be minimum of mu a bar of x comma 1 minus mu b bar of x because intersection always returns the minimum value in similar way a bar complement intersection b bar would be minimum value from 1 minus mu a bar of x comma mu bar of b let us name these statements as p and q for the simplicity so disjunctive sum is given as union of these two statements or in other words we can say that membership value of any element x in disjunctive sum is given by max of mean of mu a bar of x comma 1 minus mu b bar of x comma 1 minus mu a bar of x comma mu b bar of x consider given two sets a bar and b bar the disjunctive sum is given by a bar intersection b bar complement union a bar complement intersection b bar so first we will compute a bar complement and b bar complement so we will simply subtract the membership value of element from 1 
in both the sets then to compute the a bar intersection b bar complement we have to consider minimum membership value of element from a bar and b bar complement and in similar way a bar complement intersection b bar is computed by taking minimum membership value from the sets a bar complement and b bar and finally we have to take union of that that means we have to select the maximum membership value from the statement p and statement q so uh, this will be x1 0.5 which is maximum of 0.2 and 0.5 x2 has membership value 0.7 which is again max of 0.7 and 0.3 and so on this joint sum is given as a bar delta b bar is equal to x comma mu a bar delta b bar mu a bar delta b bar we can compute by taking the absolute difference of membership values of element in both the sets so this is quite straight forward concept consider sets a bar and b bar to compute the membership value of any element for disjoint sum we will simply consider the absolute difference of the element in from the both the sets that is x1 will take membership value 0.3 because x1 has membership value 0.2 in set a bar and it has membership value 0.5 in set b bar so 0.2 minus 0.5 that is minus 0.3 and the absolute value of that will be 0.3 and same is applied for all the elements a bar bounded sum b bar is equal to x comma mu a bar bounded sum b bar of x where this symbol represents bounded sum operation between two fuzzy sets and membership value for bounded set is computed as mean of 1 comma mu a bar of x plus mu b bar of x we know that when we add membership value of element from two sets it could be greater than 1 but we also know that membership value of any element in fuzzy set cannot be greater than 1 so bounded sum is putting a bound it is simply selecting minimum value from one or the addition of these two membership values let us try to understand it with the example first we'll compute mu a bar of x plus mu b bar of x that is we are taking the element wise summation of membership values so 1 plus 0.4 is equal to 1.4 0.5 plus 0.2 is 0.7 and so on as you can see that element x1 has membership 1.4 which is greater than 1 which is practically not possible in case of fuzzy set bounded sum will apply the minimum function which selects membership value either 1 or the addition of these membership values so when we apply this bound this 1.4 will become 1 so the bounded membership value of rest of the elements will be 1.7 1 and 0.5 the algebraic difference of two fuzzy sets is defined as a bar minus b bar which is same as a bar intersection b bar complement and this membership value of algebraic difference is computed as mean of mu a bar of x comma mu b bar complement x let us try to understand with the example consider the given sets so first we need to calculate b bar complement this is computed by taking the complement of membership values that is by subtracting them from 1 and algebraic difference is computed by taking the intersection of a bar and b bar complement and we know that intersection operation returns minimum value that is mean of mu a bar of x comma mu b bar complement x so membership value of element x1 in a bar is 0.2 and in b bar complement is 0.5 so in uh, intersection operation of that will return membership value 0.2 and so on bounded difference is given by a bar bounded difference b bar is equal to x comma mu a bar bounded difference b bar of x and the membership value of element for bounded difference is computed as max of 0 comma mu a bar of x minus mu b bar of x again we know that when we take the difference of two membership values it can be negative also but in practice fuzzy sets can ha never have negative membership value so Uh, this bounded difference apply the bound on that such that it will always select maximum of zero comma this difference so if difference is negative it will return zero value and if it is positive it will return the same value so final set will never contain any negative membership values consider sets a bar and b bar as shown 
So let us first compute the difference of these two that is mu a bar of x minus mu b bar of x. So that is given by 0 0.2 minus 0 0.5 that is minus 0 0.3, 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3 that is 0 0.4 and so on. We can see that x1 and x4 are taking negative membership value. But when we apply the bound, so bound will select max of 0 comma some membership value. So wherever membership value is negative, the function will return value 0, otherwise it will return the same membership value. So final, uh, the bounded difference would look like x1 comma 0, x2 comma 0.4, x3 comma 0 and x4 comma 0. Now we will talk few uh, product operations. The first one is scalar product. Scalar product is quite simple. Uh, this is denoted as mu alpha dot a bar of x, which is same as alpha into mu a bar of x. That means we have to multiply the membership value of each element by some constant alpha. And this alpha is a scalar and that's why it is known as a scalar product. Consider sets a bar and b bar as shown. First we'll consider alpha is equal to 0 0.5. So scalar product of alpha with set a bar would be mu. 0 0.5 a bar of x which is same as 0 0.5 we have to multiply with membership value of all the elements in set a bar. So that will be 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 for x1. So that will be 0 0.25 and the membership value of x2 will be 0 0.5 into 0 0.3 that is 0 0.50. Let us consider alpha is equal to 0 0.8 for set b bar. So membership value of x1 in this b bar would be 0 0.8 into 0 0.1 that is 0 0.008 and membership value of x2 would be 0 0.8 into 0 0.2 that is 0 0.16. Algebraic product is also known as a vector product and it is always given as a tuple like a bar dot b bar is equal to x comma mu a bar dot b bar of x. The membership value for algebraic product is computed as by taking the straight away multiplication of membership value of element in both these sets. That is mu a bar dot b bar of x is simply mu a bar of x into mu b bar of x. Let us consider sets a bar and b bar as shown. So to compute the final membership value for the vector product or the algebraic product, we will take pairwise multiplication of the membership values. That is the membership value of x1 in a bar dot b bar will be 0 0.5 into 0 0.1 that is 0 0.05 and membership value of x2 in a bar dot b bar will be 0 0.3 into 0 0.2 that is 0 0.06. Cartesian product is perhaps the most useful and most intuitive operation in fuzzy set. Cartesian product between two sets a bar and b bar is defined as a tuple where the first element in tuple is itself a tuple which contains element x comma y and the second value represents membership value of that tuple in the Cartesian product. That is mu a bar comma b bar of x comma y and which is computed as minimum value of mu a bar of x comma mu b bar of y. Intersection operation also returns minimum value from two uh, arguments. Cartesian product is also returning minimum value from two elements. So the difference is that intersection is defined over the same universe of discourse for both the sets. That means set a bar and b bar are derived from same universe capital X whereas in case of Cartesian product a bar is derived from universe X and b bar is derived from universe Y. Consider we have n uh, fuzzy sets called a1 bar, a2 bar and up to an bar which are derived from universe x1, comma x2, comma x3 and so on respectively. And the Cartesian product is defined as a1 bar by a2 bar by a3 bar and so on. And the final membership value for this Cartesian product is computed as mu a1 bar by a2 bar by a3 bar and so on. By taking the minimum membership value of particular element from all these sets. That is mean of mu a1 bar of x1 comma mu a2 bar of x2 and so on. Let us try to understand how we can compute the Cartesian product. Uh, Cartesian product in fact returns a matrix instead of a set where the rows represents elements from set A bar and column represents elements from set B bar. 
So we have to find out a pairwise membership value. That is membership value of x1 comma y1, x1 comma y2, x1 comma y3. Then membership value of x2 comma y1, x2 comma y2, x2 comma y3, and so on. And we know that this uh, Cartesian product returns minimum value of the membership from both the sides. That is to compute uh, membership value of tuple x1 comma y1. We have to select mean of mu a bar of x1 comma mu b bar of y1. That is the minimum membership value of x1 in a bar and y1 in b bar. X1 has membership value 0.2, y1 has membership value 0.8, and minimum of that will be 0.2. Similarly, for tuple x1 comma y2, we have to compute mean of mu a bar of x1 comma mu b bar of y2. That is 0.2. To compute the membership value of tuple x1 comma y3, we have to select minimum membership value for x1 in a bar and y3 in b bar which is 0.2. Similarly, we can compute membership value for tuple x2 comma y1, x2 comma y2, x2 comma y3 and so on. Finally, when we put it into the form of matrix, it looks like this. A bar, the Cartesian product with B bar is equal to where uh, each row indicates uh, elements from capital X and each column indicates element from the uh, universe capital Y and their membership values are uh, represented into the matrix. Hello folks, welcome to CodeCraps. This is Mahesh Yurani and in this video, I'm going to talk about some distance and similarity measures for fuzzy sets. In this video, I'll be talking about some dissimilarity measures like Hammond distance, Euclidean distance, and the more generalized version that is Minskowski distance. I'll also talk about various properties of distance measure. And in the later part of this video, I'll be talking about few similarity measures like cosine amplitude similarity measure and maximum similarity measure. Let us start with uh, some distance measures. Distance measures are typically used to find the distance or the difference between two vectors or two sets. If vectors are identical, then the distance between them will be zero. And if they have a big difference, then the magnitude of this difference will grow up. The Hamming distance between fuzzy sets A bar and B bar is given as summation of the absolute difference of membership value of the elements. That is, H A bar comma B bar is equal to sum over i is equal to 1 to n mode mu A bar of xi minus mu B bar of xi. That means we have to take the absolute difference of membership values of all the elements and then we have to sum up. That will give us the Hamming distance. The Hamming distance for a given set is computed by taking the pairwise um, absolute difference of membership values. That is for x1, it will be 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4, that is 0. For x2, it is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.3, that is 0 0.5. For x3, it is 1 minus 0, that is 0. And for x4, it is 0 minus 0, that is 0. So total Hamming distance for these two sets would be 1.5. The relative Hamming distance is simply the average of Hamming distance. Set contains four elements, so relative uh, Hamming distance would be 1.5 by 4, that is 0 0.375. Euclidean distance is probably the most widely used uh, distance measure across different disciplines, including geometry, pattern recognition, machine learning, and uh, everywhere. The Euclidean distance between fuzzy sets A bar and B bar is computed as square root of i is equal to 1 to n mu a bar of xi minus mu b bar of xi whole square. So we have to take the summation of squared error and then we have to take the square root of that. That will give us the Euclidean distance. For given set a bar and b bar, the Euclidean distance is given by 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4 that is 0 whole square, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.3 that is 0 0.5 square. 1 minus 0 that is 1 square and 0 minus 0 that is 0 square. So the Euclidean distance between given two fuzzy sets would be 1.12. Minkowski distance is more generalized version of the distance. Minkowski distance is computed as dw a bar comma b bar is equal to w root of i is equal to 1 to n mode mu a bar of xi minus mu b bar of xi raised to w. By setting different w's, we will get different kind of uh, distances. 
For example, if we put W is equal to 1 in this equation, then this will be simply Hamming distance between A bar and B bar. If we keep W is equal to 2, the equation will reduce to the Euclidean distance. By setting appropriate values of W, we can find out different orders of uh, distance between given pair of vectors. Distance between any two vector is always greater than or equal to 0 because in practice also distance can never be negative. So, D of A bar comma B bar is greater than or equal to 0. Distance measures are always commutative that is D of A bar comma B bar is same as D of B bar comma A bar. D of A bar comma C bar is always going to be less than D of A bar comma B bar plus D of B bar comma C bar. That is consider A, B and C as three cities. So, distance between city A to C will be always less than or equal to distance between city A to B and that of from city B to C. And this is very obvious that difference between two identical vectors is definitely zero. Let us talk few similarity methods now. Similarity measures are typically used to find out similarity or the strength of similarity between given vectors. And typically these measures are used in pattern recognition and machine learning where uh, the comparison or the similarity of two vectors is quite important. There exist many methods for finding the similarity but in this uh, course we will be talking about two most important methods for finding the similarities between fuzzy sets. Let capital X be the set of uh, vectors x1, x2 up to xn where each element xi in capital X is a vector of dimension m. So, we can represent xi as xi1, xi2, xi3 up to xim. So, ultimately capital X is a thick matrix of size n by m where it contains n columns and each column is having, it represents one vector and the dimension of that vector is m. The similarity score between two vectors xi and xj is given by rij is equal to mu r bar of xi comma xj. This is very generalized formula. Using cosine similarity measure, we can compute the similarity between vector xi and xj as given in formula. It is represented as rij which is equal to mode k is equal to 1 to m xik dot xkj divided by square root of summation over k is equal to 1 to m xik square into summation over k is equal to 1 to m x j k square. Numerator simply finds element wise multiplication and in denominator we are simply taking a squared sum of elements and then we are multiplying it and we are taking the square root. Max mean similarity method computes the similarity between vector x i and x j as uh, summation over k is equal to 1 to m we have to calculate minimum value from corresponding elements from both the vectors divided by the summation over maximum value for the corresponding elements in both the sets. Consider the example where x1 to x5 represents 5 vectors. Uh, there are 3 sets no damage, medium damage and serious damage. So, this could be the observation data of some uh, situation like flood or earthquake where the value in cell 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.1 may represent the damage in region x1. So, x1 region has a no damage uh, membership value 0.3, medium damage membership value is 0.6 and serious damage membership value is 0.1. So, probably xi could represent the region no damage, medium damage and serious damage are the categories and values in cell represents uh, the strength of those damages. We have to find out which regions are similar. So, this could be useful for creating the clusters that which regions are having the high damage or which regions are having almost similar damage. As we know, distance between two identical vector is always 0 and similarity between two identical vector is always 1. As difference increases, dissimilarity measure will increase and similarity measure will go down. They are uh, opposite to each other. So, R11 is equal to R22 up to R55 is equal to 1 because similarity between same vector would be 1. Let us proceed. We will, uh, let us try to find out the similarity score between vectors x1 and x2. So, in this case i is equal to 1, j is equal to 2. There are 5 vectors. So, n is equal to 5 and size of each vector is 3 
and hence m is equal to 3. Uh, from the previous slide, we know the equation for the uh, cosine amplitude measure that is rij is equal to mode k is equal to 1 to m xik into hjk divided by square root of squared sum of xik and squared sum of xjk. Put the values of variable in this equation and we will end up with this formula by putting appropriate values that is in numerator we are simply taking element wise multiplication. So that is 0.3 into 0.2 then 0.6 into 0.4 plus 0.1 into 0.4. In denominator, we are taking the squared uh, summation of uh, membership value in each uh, vector. So that is under root 0 0.3 square plus 0 0.6 square plus 0 0.1 square into 0 0.2 square plus 0 0.4 square plus 0 0.4 square. Uh, ultimately, that results into 0 0.836. Similarly, we can compute the similarity between any two vectors x1, x3, x1, x4, and so on. When we compute, the similarity score for all these vectors, uh, we can represent it using in matrix and that matrix would be something like this. This matrix will tell us that which vectors are more similar and which are dissimilar. Looking at this matrix, we can say that vector 5 and vector 1 are almost similar because it has highest similarity score that is 0 0.982. If you look into the table, uh, we can see that the no damage value is 0 0.3 for x1 and 0 0.4 for x5. The difference is of just 0 0.1. Similarly, the score for medium damage is 0 0.6 in both the case and score for serious damage for x1 is 0 0.1 for x5 is 0 0.0. So that is also just a difference of just 0 0.1. From the matrix, we can also observe that the vector 4 and vector 3 is having the minimum uh, similarity score that is 0 0.441 and if we look at the values in a uh, given table, the no damage score for x3 is 0 0.1, for x4 it is 0 0.7. So difference is of 0 0.6. For medium damage, the difference is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2 that is 0 0.4 and the difference for serious damage is 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 that is 0 0.2. Uh, so this is very intuitive from given table also as well as it is easy to understand from the matrix itself that which vectors are similar and which vectors are most dissimilar. The same data we will be using for max mean similarity method. Uh, again, the uh, max mean similarity between identical vector will be always 1. So, R11 is equal to R22 up to R55 will be always 1. Let us find out the similarity score between vector 1 and 2 using max mean method. So, the formula for Rij summation over k is equal to 1 to m. Uh, the minimum value of corresponding element divided by the maximum value of the corresponding element. By putting appropriate value of all the variables, R12 would be like this. Uh, that is uh, minimum of 0 0.3 comma 0 0.2 plus minimum of 0 0.6 comma 0 0.4 plus minimum of 0 0.1 comma 0 0.4 divided by maximum value of the same pairs. And that will return 0 0.538. In similar way, we can compute the maximum similarity score for remaining all the vectors that is x1, x3, x1, x4, x1, x5 and so on. When we put it into the matrix form, the final matrix would look like this. We can see that the magnitude of all this value is different from that of cosine similarity method, but the relative importance is not changing. What I mean to say is that if we consider the uh, score between vector 5 and vector 1, it is highest in this case also as well as it was highest in cosine similarity measure also. Similarly, the minimum score uh, using max mean similarity measure is between vector 4 and 3 and it was minimum for the similar vectors in cosine similarity method also. So different similarity method might give different values for the similarity but the relative importance of similarity will not change. The vectors which are having the highest similarity will be always ranked high values and the vectors with the lowest similarity will be always ranked the minimum value. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Kuyani and in this video, I am going to talk about crisp relations. I recommend that before you watch this video, please go and refer the video on introduction to crisp sets. The link of that video is given in description box.
In this video, I am going to cover what is CRISP relation is, uh, what are the different representations of the CRISP relations. We will talk about some special relations and that will be followed by different type of operations that we can perform on CRISP relations. We will also talk about the cardinality of CRISP relations and at the end, the very important topic, uh, composition of CRISP relations. The Cartesian product of any two set is defined as a tuple pair A, B where the first element small a is derived from the crisp set capital A and the second element small b is derived from crisp set capital B. As it is collection of ordered pairs, A Cartesian product B is not same as B Cartesian product A. The cardinality of this Cartesian product is same as multiplication of cardinality of individual sets that is mode A by B is same as mode A by mode B. Crisp relations are a subset of this uh, bigger Cartesian product set or we can say that Cartesian product will act as a universe for relations. Relations are derived from this Cartesian product based on certain conditions. So those tuples in Cartesian product which satisfy certain conditions, they will be part of relations, the rest of will not be. Ultimately, we can say that relation defines some kind of mapping between two sets. It says us that how element A is connected with element B. Each tuple in this relation is having certain membership value which is known as strength of relation. And the strength of relation for crisp set is represented by the characteristics function chi. We can say that uh, if this characteristic value is 1, then that is complete relation. It means the element A is completely related with element B in that tuple and if this value is 0, it means there is no relation between the variables into that tuple. Formally, we can define chi r of A comma B as 1 if the tuple A comma B is part of relation and that characteristics value is 0 if the tuple is not part of the relation. Consider two crisp sets, C is equal to 1, 2, 3 and D is equal to 4, 5, 6. Uh, we have to find out Cartesian product of this and we have to also find out the relation and the condition for that relation is D is equal to C plus 2. Let us first compute the Cartesian product between C and D. So every element of C will be related with every other element in D. That means C by D would be 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6 and 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6. So this is Cartesian product of C and D. The condition for relation is given that D should be C plus 2. So in every tuple, the first element represents small c and second element represents small d. Let us check how many tuples are satisfying this condition. So for first three tuple, 1, 4, 1, 5 and 1, 6, none of the tuple satisfy the condition D is equal to C plus 2 and hence no tuple will be included in the relation R. For next three tuples, 2, 4, 2, 5 and 2, 6, as we can see that for the first tuple, D is 4, C is 2. So it satisfies the condition D is equal to C plus 2. So this tuple will be included in relation R. Rest of the tuples are not satisfying the conditions. For last three tuples, 3, 4, 3, 5 and 3, 6 in the Cartesian product, the tuple 2 that is 3, 5 satisfy the condition. So it will be included in relation R. So finally, the relation for given uh, sets and given condition R would be 2, 4 and 3, 5 as we can see that it is subset of Cartesian product. Let us discuss uh, different representations for the uh, crisp relation. As we already know that the membership value of tuple in the relation is defined by function chi R of A, comma B that is 1 if tuple is present in R and is 0 if tuple is not part of the, that relation R. The one way of re representing relation is use of uh, sagittal representation or using the pictorial representation. If we consider the same sets and same relation, we know that R is 2, 4 and 3, 5. To represent it using uh, sagittal representation, we have to write down all the elements of A on one side, all the elements of B on other side. The tuple which are in R, for that we have to connect elements in this x a and b so 2 4 is part of r so element 2 from set a 
is connected with element 4 in set B. Similarly, 3 phi is present in R, so element 3 from set A would be connected with element 5 in set B. Another very convenient and powerful representation is matrix representation. In this matrix, the rows indicates variables from set A or elements from set A and column represents elements from set B. As 2 comma 4 and 3 comma 5 is in R, row 2 column 4 we have to set value 1 and row 3 column 5 we have to set value 1. Rest of all elements we have to set membership value 0. Null relation is a special type of relation in which none of the element from one universe is connected with other universe. It means there is no mapping between any element between two given sets. Uh, it is defined as O is equal to all zero because we know that there is no mapping between any element and hence the membership value of that tuple would be definitely zero. In complete relation, every element of one set is connected with every other element in another set. That means all the tuples will have membership value 1. The universal relation on set A is defined as UA is equal to A by A. That means all the tuples of A by A will be in relation and it is denoted as UA is equal to A by A is equal to A square. For the set A is equal to 0, 1, 2, the universal relation would be A by A that is Cartesian product of A with A itself and it would contain the elements 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2 and 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. The identity relation on set A is denoted as IA which is collection of tuple A comma A. It means all the elements in set A are connected with themselves. If A is 0, 1, 2 then identity relation IA would be 0, 0, 1, 1 and 2, 2. Operations on crisp relations are identical to those of on crisp sets. So if you don't know how to perform this crisp set operations, then I recommend you to watch the video Introduction to Crisp Sets. Link is given in the description box. Let R and S are two relations defined over universe X and Y, where element X belongs to set A and Y belongs to set B. The union of these two relations is defined as R union S and the membership value of every tuple X comma Y in this union is denoted as chi R union S of X comma Y and we know that the union operation always return the maximum value of two arguments. So that would be max of membership value of X Y in relation R and membership value of X Y in relation S. Consider the relation R and S given like this. The union of that would be this. The membership value of this element is maximum of membership value of corresponding element in R and that is in S. As we can see that the highest value is 1. Intersection always returns the minimum value. Intersection of these two relation is denoted as R intersection S and the membership value is denoted as chi of R intersection S x comma y which is nothing but it's a minimum membership value of tuple x comma y in relation r and in relation s. If you consider the given example, the membership value of this tuple in intersection set relation is 0 because the corresponding membership value in r is 1 and in s is 0 and mean of that is 0. In identical way, we can compute it for rest of all the elements. Complement of relation is denoted as r complement and the characteristic value of element is defined as chi r complement of x comma y which is nothing but simply 1 minus the membership value of x y in given relation. So if r is given like this and then its complement is defined in this way where membership value of all tuple in r complement is simply 1 minus the membership value of corresponding elements in r. We can say that relation r is contained in relation as if the membership value of every tuple x comma y in R is less than or equal to the membership value of same tuple in relation S. For given relation R and S, as we can see that the membership value of this tuple is 1 and the membership value of corresponding tuple in S is 0. So 1 is not less than or equal to 0 for this case. So we can say that R is not contained in S. If we talk about relation R and T, 
we can see that membership value of every tuple in R is less than or equal to uh, corresponding tuples in T and hence relation R is contained in relation T. Cardinality of crisp set is defined by number of elements in that set. Assume that A and B are two crisp sets having cardinality N and M. The Cartesian product of these two sets would be A by B and the cardinality of that set would be N into M. Let us try to prove it. Consider the set A as 1, 2 and B is 3, 4 and 5. So it's very obvious that cardinality of A is N is equal to 2 and cardinality of B that is M is equal to 3. Here N into M is equal to 6. Let us find out the Cartesian product of these two sets that would be 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 3, 2, 4 and 2, 5. The number of elements in this Cartesian product is 6. So the cardinality of Cartesian product would be 6 which is nothing but n by m. So it proves that cardinality of Cartesian product is same as multiplication of cardinality of individual sets. Composition is very important operation from the perspective of crisp set as well as fuzzy set and it is very much useful in modeling many natural phenomena. Consider that we have one relation which describes their association between plant and the disease and we have another uh, matrix, another relation matrix which describes the association between the disease and the symptoms. Using the composition of these two relations, we can find that what is the relation or association between the disease and the symptoms directly. So uh, many times composition will help us to find out the interaction between the different variables and uh, the composition between relation R and S is defined by R composition S is equal to X comma Z. So it is collection of all the pairs X comma Z where the tuple X comma Y is derived from capital R and uh, the tuple Y comma Z is derived from relation capital S. Uh, and this is true for all the y belongs to capital Y. Uh, we will decompose it and we will understand what this means. In Maxmin composition, first we have to find out intersection of the membership value of tuple xy in R and tuple yz in uh, S for all the y's and then we have to find the uh, disjunction of that. In other words, uh, if we replace the disjunction and conjunction with max and min, uh, it could be uh, more convenient to understand. So we simply have to find max of mean of membership value of x, y in R and y, z in S for all the y belongs to capital Y. In the max product composition, this conjunction or the intersection operation is replaced by the product operation. Rest of the procedure is identical. For crisp relations, both the methods will return identical results. But for fuzzy uh, relations, it will give different results. Let us try to understand it with the help of example. Relation R is defined as x1, y1, x1, y3 and x2, x, y4. And relation S is defined as y1, z2 and y3, z2. Uh, in a graphical way, we can represent the same relation like this. From relation R, we know that which are the elements in x are connected with y. And uh, from S, we know that what are the elements in Y are connected with Z. So if we connect them, uh, the graphical representation would look like this. The better way is to represent the relations in matrix form. So R would be like this and S would be like this, where in R, uh, rows represents X and column represents Y. And in case of uh, S, rows represents Y and column represents Z. When we take the composition of R and S, uh, we are supposed to get something like this uh, where we need to find out what is the relation of x with z. So rows of resultant relation will indicate the variables from x and columns will indicate the variables from z. Let us try to understand it with the example. To compute the membership value of x1, z1, we have to find max of mean of chi r x1, y1, chi s, y1, z1. Uh, that is we have to check out mem membership value of x1, y1 in R, y1, z1 in S. Then we have to take mean of x1, y2 in R, y2, z1 in S, mean of x1, y3 in R, y3, z1 in uh, S and mean of x1, y4 in R and y4, z1 in S. So if we, replay, if we put all these values, 
then we will get uh, membership value for tuple x1 comma z1 as 0. In similar way, we can compute uh, the strength of membership value of all the tuples, something like this, and the final association matrix would be something like this. This matrix T indicates uh, what is the relation between variable x with variable z. Consider another example x is equal to 135, y is 135. We have to find the relation which satisfies the condition y is equal to x plus 2 and s is relation which uh, should satisfy the condition uh, x less than y. Cartesian product of uh, x and y would be 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5 and so on. Uh, to compute r, we have to select only those uh, uh, tuples who satisfy the condition y is equal to x plus 2. So only L, uh, tuple y comma 3 and 3 comma 5 satisfy this condition. And in S, the tuple should satisfy the condition x less than y. So 1, 3, 1, 5 and 3, 5 from the Cartesian product satisfy this condition. So only these tuples will be included in R and S. In matrix form, we can write down R and S as shown. Now we will compute the maximum composition for this, uh, which is nothing but simply max of mean of characteristics value of x comma y in r and y comma z in s for all the y. So xt of 1 comma 1 is given by max of mean of the characteristics value of x1 y1 in r, y1 z1 in s, then x1 y2 in r, y2 z1 in s and x1 y3 in r and y3 z1 in s. So that is 0. Uh, if we go on like this, we can compute the membership value of all the possible tuples in composition and finally the T would look like this 135, 135 and only one element is having membership value 1, rest are 0. Hello folks, welcome to CodeCrux. This is Mahesh Guyani and in this video I am going to talk about fuzzy relations. Before you watch this video, I recommend that you clear your concepts on fuzzy sets. I have already made a video on introduction to fuzzy sets. Link is given in the description box. Fuzzy relations follow almost similar operations like a crisp relation. I have already made a video on crisp relations. So I also recommend you to watch that video first. Link of that video is also given in the description box. These are the points I am going to discuss in this video. Uh, I'll recap the concept of Cartesian product, uh, then we'll introduce the notion of fuzzy relation. I'll be talking about various operations like union, intersection, complement, etc. for the fuzzy relations. We'll also discuss different types of projection operation on the relation. And finally, we will look at very important operation that is the composition of the fuzzy relations. Let me recap the concepts of Cartesian product. Consider that we have a two fuzzy sets A bar and B bar which are derived from the universe capital X and capital Y respectively. The relation over fuzzy sets A bar and B bar is denoted as R bar is equal to A bar by B bar, where this A bar by B bar is always a subset of X by Y. That means we can say that relation is always subset of full Cartesian space. It means R bar is always contained within X Cartesian product Y. The membership value of tuple x comma y in relation r bar is calculated by computing the mean membership value of x in r bar and y in s bar. Again, I would like to highlight that in case of intersection also we were finding the minimum value of two arguments. Here also we are finding the minimum value of two arguments. The difference is that for intersection of the set, we were deriving the sets from the same universe, that means fuzzy set A bar and B bar, were derived from the universe X. Whereas in case of a Cartesian product or in case of relation, X is derived from the universe capital X and Y is derived from universe capital Y. Both the sets are derived from different universe in case of Cartesian product. Let A bar represents a fuzzy set having the elements a1 0.2, a2 0.7 and a3 0.4 and the set b bar is b1 0.5 and b2 0.6. To compute the membership value of tuple a1 comma b1 in the relation, 
we have to find out what is the minimum membership value of a1 in a bar and b1 in b bar so a1 has membership value 0.2 and b1 has membership value 0.5 so the tuple a1 comma b1 will take value 0.2 in this relation in a similar way we can compute the membership value for rest of the elements in this matrix fuzzy relation is quite important because it defines the interaction between different variables let us take one universe capital x is equal to 1 to 3 and we are defining some relation r bar as approximately equal if the difference between numbers is smaller we should assign higher value because they are approximately equal and as the difference between number grows up the membership value will reduce so when we take the cartesian product of this x that would be 1 1 1 2 1 3 2 1 2 2 2 3 and 3 1 3 2 3 3 so in relation r bar the tuple 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3 are having identical elements they are approximately close i mean they are perfect close and hence we can assign membership value 1 to these tuples if the difference between element is 1 then we can assign a reduced membership to that in this case we have assigned 0 0.8 it is depends on the programmer we can assign it 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 as per our need but it is definitely less than the previous one because now the difference between element is 1 and if difference between the element is 2 the membership value will even go down that is now we are assigning value 0 0.3 using the functional form we can write down r bar of x comma y as the membership value is 1 if both the elements are identical it is 0 0.7 if the absolute difference of element is 1 and it is 0 0.3 if absolute difference between the elements is 2 in matrix form we can write down r bar as shown here where all diagonals are having membership value 1 because for diagonal entries both the elements are same 1 1 2 2 3 3 and we can write down the membership value for rest of the elements as shown in the slide union of the relation r bar and s bar is given as r bar union s bar which is collection of tuples a comma b having certain membership value mu r bar union s bar of a comma b where the membership value of tuple a comma b in this union relation is given as maximum membership value of same tuple in relation r bar and s bar as we know that union always selects the maximum membership value consider the relation r bar as x is considerably larger than y and the membership value is as shown in matrix r bar another relation s bar described as x is very close to y is having membership values as shown in matrix s bar if we take the union of this relation r bar and s bar then the membership value of the element x1 comma y1 in the union of this relation is given as maximum membership value of x1 comma y1 in r bar which is 0 0.8 and the membership value of same tuple x1 comma y1 in s bar which is 0 0.4 and the maximum value of 0 0.8 and 0 0.4 is 0 0.8 in identical way we can compute the membership value for rest of all the tuples in this union uh, relation and the final union matrix of this relations would be as shown here intersection of relations r bar and s bar is denoted as r bar intersection s bar which is collection of tuples a comma b having membership value mu r bar intersection s bar of a comma b the membership function mu r bar intersection s bar of a comma b is computed by taking the minimum membership value of same tuple in relation r bar and s bar for given relations r bar and s bar if we would like to compute the membership value of first tuple that is x1 comma y1 then that would be minimum membership value of x1 comma y1 in r bar which is 0 0.8 and uh, the membership value of same tuple x1 comma y1 in s bar is 0 0.4 so the minimum value of 0 0.8 and 0 0.4 is 0 0.4 in identical way we can compute the membership value for rest of the tuples and the final intersection matrix would look like this complement of the relation is defined as r bar complement which is tuple a comma b having the complemented membership value which is given by 
one minus the original membership value. For given relation R bar, to compute the membership value of tuple x1, y1, we have to subtract the membership value of x1, y1 of R from 1. So that would be 1 minus 0 0.8, that is 0 0.2. In similar fashion, we can compute the membership value for rest of all the tuples and the final relation matrix for the complement operation would look like this. The projection of relation R bar on x is given as pi x of x is equal to supremum value of membership value of R bar for all the y's. It says projection of any variable small xi is given as uh, we have to take the maximum membership value of that row. To compute the projection of x1 on capital X, we have to take the maximum membership value in x direction. To compute the projection of x2 on x, we have to take maximum membership value from this row. And to compute the projection of x3 on x, we have to consider maximum membership value of this row. And the projection of r bar on y axis is given as pi y of y is equal to supremum value of r bar of x comma y. But this time we have to consider it is column wise. It says to compute the projection of y1 on x axis, we have to take maximum membership value of first row that is 0 0.9 to compute pi y of y2, we have to select the maximum membership value of second column that is 1.0 and so on. Fuzzy composition is quite important operation. Uh, it follows almost identical rules of crisp composition. So again, I recommend you that if you have not watched the video on crisp composition, then please uh, watch the video on crisp relations. The link is given in the description box. Suppose R bar and S bar are two fuzzy sets which are defined over X by Y and Y by Z. And let T bar is another relation which is defined over universe X and Z. So we can compute T by taking the composition of R bar and S bar. Just like a crisp set, we can find the maximum composition of fuzzy set as follow. T bar is equal to R bar composition of S bar, where this notation represents membership value of tuple X comma Z in uh, relation T bar. It is given by, first we have to calculate intersection of membership value of tuple X comma Y in R bar and y comma z in s bar. This we have to do for all the y's and then we have to sum up that. If we replace the, this disjunction and conjunction operation by max and min, then that will be more intuitive. So it can be written as max of mean of mu r bar x y comma mu s bar y z for all the y's belongs to capital Y. To compute the max product composition, we just have to replace this conjunction or the intersection operation with the product operation. Let set x is given as x1, x2, y as y1, y2 and z as z1, z2, z3 and the relation matrix are defined as follow. We have to find out resulting uh, relation t bar using maximum composition and max product composition. As relation r bar is defined on x, y and s bar is defined on y and z, so T bar would be from X to Z and hence the final uh, relation matrix would look like this. We are supposed to find out uh, membership value for X1, Z1, X1, Z2, X1, Z3 and so on. To compute the membership value of X1, Z1 in T bar, first we have to find out minimum membership value of X1, Y1, Y1, Z1 and X1, Y2, Y2, Z1. And then we have to find out the maximum value of that. That will be the membership value of x1, z1 in T bar. Let us try to solve it. So as we know that max mean composition is given by max of mean of membership value of x, y in R bar and y, z in S bar for all the y's. The membership value of x1, z1 in T bar would be max of mean of mu R bar of x1, y1 and mu S bar of y1, z1. And the another argument would be mean of mu r bar of x1 comma y2 and mu s bar of y2 comma z1. If we put those value, we will get 
membership value of x1, z1 as 0.7. In similar way, we can compute the membership value for the rest of the tuples in the relation matrix. And finally, we would get T bar as shown here. So T bar represents strength of association of variables x and z. For computing the composition with the help of max product formula, we just have to replace that mean operation with the multiplication operation. So instead of taking minimum membership value, we have to simply multiply those membership values and then we have to take the max of that. So we can see that uh, the membership value of x1, z1 in T bar would be 0 0.56. In similar way, we can compute the membership value for rest of all the tuples in T bar. And with this uh, method, the final T bar would look like this. Consider the sets P and D as uh, the variety of paddy plants and the plant disease respectively. And in addition, we have another set S, S1, S2, S3, S4, which represents common symptoms of the disease. Assume that we have a relation matrix on P by D that indicates what is the relation between the paddy plants and the plant disease. Whereas we have another matrix T bar defined on D by S. So this relation will tell us that what is the association or what is the strength of relation between the plant disease and the symptoms. Either using max min composition or max product composition, we can find out what will be the strength of relation between plants and the symptoms. And the final answer or final relation matrix for that would look like this. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Gwani and in this video, I am going to talk about various properties of relations. If you don't know what relation is, then I have already made videos on crisp relations and fuzzy relations. I recommend you to watch that video first. The link of those videos is given in the description box. In this video, I will be covering various properties of relations like reflexitivity, anti-reflexitivity, symmetricity, anti-symmetricity, transitivity. I will be also discussing various types of relations like equivalence relation, partial order relation, tolerance relation, etc. And at the end, I will be discussing how to convert tolerance relation into equivalence relation. A relation R bar is said to be reflexive if every element in the relation is related with itself. That is, if membership value of tuple x, x in R bar is 1 for all the element small x in the universe capital X. Consider the universe capital X is equal to 1, 2, 3 and the relation defined on the Cartesian product x by x is as shown here. For any tuple x, x in this relation is having membership value 1 and hence this relation is reflexive relation or we can say that this relation is having the property of reflexivity. The relation R bar is said to be anti-reflexive relation if x, x is not part of the relation R bar that is the membership value of tuple x, x in R bar is 0 for all the elements x belongs to universe capital X. In this relation R bar as we can see that the membership value of every tuple x, x is 0. So this relation is anti-reflexive relation. For anti-reflexive relation, the diagonal value in R bar will be always 0, whereas it will be 1 for reflexive relation. Relation is said to be symmetric if element x is connected with y and y is connected with x also. And this should be true for all x, y in the relation R bar. In other words, the membership value of tuple x, y in R bar should be same as membership value of tuple y, x in R bar. As shown in this relation, the membership value of tuple 2, 1 is 0 0.8 and that is same for 1, 2 also. The membership value of tuple 3, 1 is 0 0.1 and it is same for 1, 3 also. And it is true for all the tuples. And hence, this relation is symmetric relation. Relation R bar is said to be anti-symmetric relation if the membership value of any tuple x, y in R bar is greater than 0, then the membership value of tuple y, x should be 0 
for all x comma y in universe in the given relation r bar as we can see that the membership value of tuple 2 comma 1 is 0 0.1 so the membership value of tuple 1 comma 2 should be 0 and it is 0 and this should be true for all the tuples and that we can verify from the relation matrix itself and hence this relation is anti symmetric relation the properties we have discussed so far are common for crisp relation and fuzzy relation but transitivity property is a bit different for crisp as well as fuzzy relation for crisp relation r if element x is related to y and y is related to z then x must be related to z in other words we can say that if tuple x comma y belongs to relation r and tuple y comma z belongs to relation r then tuple x comma z must be present in r for fuzzy relations consider that lambda 1 represents membership value of tuple xi comma xj lambda 2 represents membership value of tuple xj comma xk and lambda represents membership value of tuple xi comma xk if lambda is greater than lambda 1 comma lambda 2 for all the possible values of lambda then we can say that given relation is transitive relation it is clear that less than or equal to is reflexive anti symmetric and transitive whereas less than is anti reflexive anti symmetric and transitive for any given relation matrix r bar it is very hard to manually check whether it is transitive or not because we need to evaluate many pairs for different values of lambda that is very very difficult as well as prone to error there is mathematical way to easily find out whether relation is transitive or not for that we need to compute r2 bar which is nothing but composition of relation with itself and uh, in min max sense uh, mu r bar 2 of x comma z would be max of mu r bar of x comma y and mu r bar of y comma z for all the possible y in capital x we say that relation r bar is transitive if r2 bar is contained within r bar that is for every tuple x comma y membership value of that tuple in r2 bar is less than or equal to membership value of same tuple in r bar given the relation matrix r bar we have to check whether it is transitive or not so to check the transitivity property first we'll compute the composition of relation with itself that is r2 bar as we can see that the membership value of tuple 1 comma 1 in r2 bar is less than or equal to the corresponding tuple in r bar this is also true for the second element also however it is not hold for this tuple because the membership value of this tuple in r2 bar is 0 0.5 and it's 0 0.4 in r bar we can see that for all the x comma y pair membership value of that pair in r2 bar is not less than or equal to mu r bar of x comma y and hence this is not a transitive relation a relation is said to be similarity or the equivalence relation if it possesses the properties of reflexivity symmetricity and transitivity as we can see from this relation matrix its all diagonal elements are having membership value 1 so it is reflexive the transpose of relation matrix is the same as relation matrix itself and hence this relation is symmetric also and r2 bar of this relation is contained within r bar so we can say this this is transitive also and so the given relation matrix is representing similarity or the equivalence relation if r bar is similarity uh, relation then the complement of that will represent anti similar relation the membership value of tuple x comma y in mu r bar complement will be same as 1 minus the membership value of same tuple in r bar or in other words we can say that the relation is anti similar if it is anti reflexive symmetric and transitive in max min form the mu r bar complement of x comma z is always greater than or equal to minimum of max of mu r bar complement of x comma y and mu r bar complement of y comma z given this relation matrix we have to check whether it is uh, anti similar or not so we will find out the complement of this relation which looks like this as we can see that all the diagonal elements are having membership value 0 so this is anti reflexive relation 
transpose of this matrix is same as the matrix itself and hence it is symmetric relation and the r2 bar of this relation is contained within relation itself so this is transitive also and hence we can say that given relation matrix is having the property of anti similarity or it represents partial order relation weak similarity or the tolerance relation if given relation is reflexive and symmetric but not transitive then we can say that it is a weak similar or the tolerance relation as we can see that uh, for given relation matrix r bar all the diagonal elements are having membership value 1 and hence it is reflexive the transpose of matrix r bar is same as r bar and hence it is symmetric but the r2 bar of this relation is not contained in r bar and hence it is not transitive so this is a big similar or the tolerance relation r bar is said to be the order relation if it is transitive r bar is said to be pre order relation if it is reflexive and transitive and r bar is said to be half order relation if it is reflexive as well as weak anti symmetric relation the relation matrix for pre order and half order relations are mentioned here we can always convert the tolerance relation into equivalence relation by taking the composition of relation with itself so until it is converted into equivalence relation we should continue with this process at some stage it will become equivalence relation consider the example we have to check whether it is equivalent or not equivalence relation is having three properties reflexivity transitivity and symmetricity as all the diagonal elements have membership value 1 it is reflexive the r is same as r transpose and hence it is symmetric relation and as we can see that for the tuple x1 comma x2 the membership value is 1 tuple x2 comma x5 has membership value 1 but tuple x1 comma x5 is having membership value 0 so this is not transitive relation so this relation is having property of reflexivity and symmetricity but not transitivity so this is a tolerance relation it is not equivalence in the other words convert following relation into equivalence if it is not already so this is a fuzzy relation as we can see that membership values vary between 0 to 1 so first we need to check whether it is equivalence or not and if it is not we have to check whether it is tolerance or not if it is tolerance we can convert it into equivalence for all mu r bar of x comma x membership value is 1 so this is reflexive relation transpose of matrix is same as matrix itself so it is symmetric relation or we can see that mu r bar of x i comma x j is same as mu r bar of x j comma x i for all the pairs so this is symmetric relation to check whether it is a transitive relation or not let us consider lambda 1 is equal to the tuple x1 comma x2 whose membership value is 0 0.8 lambda 2 represents membership value of tuple x2 comma x5 whose membership value is 0 0.5 so lambda would represent membership value of tuple x1 comma x5 which is 0 0.2 as we can observe that lambda is not greater than or equal to minimum membership value of lambda 1 and lambda 2 and hence this is not a transitive relation but as it is having properties of symmetricity flexitivity it is considered as a tolerance relation we can convert this tolerance relation into equivalence relation by taking composition of relation with itself so we can compute r bar dash as r bar composition r bar and this relation matrix represents composition relation let us uh, make some checks whether it is equivalence relation or not so it is already satisfying the properties of reflexivity and symmetricity let us try to check whether it is uh, transitive or not so consider lambda 1 as a membership value of tuple x1 comma x2 lambda 2 as membership value x2 comma x4 so lambda will represent membership value of tuple x1 comma x4 so here also lambda is not greater than or equal to minimum of lambda 1 comma lambda 2 and hence this is not equivalence relation yet so we need to find out uh, composition again this is the composition matrix and if we'll make a check for pair x1 comma x3 x3 comma x2 and x1 comma x2 it is satisfying the condition that lambda is greater than or equal to minimum membership value of lambda 1 and lambda 2 however it is true for this tuple only 
it may not be true for all other so we need to make a check for all the tuples but it is tested that it is true for all the tuples so this is finally a equivalence relation the easier way to check whether it is uh, transitive or not what we can do is we can find out r2 bar for this relation and we can see that whether it is contained in r double dash or not if it is so then it is transitive relation that will be definitely true for this particular matrix we have already tested it you can try it by yourself hello folks welcome to code cracks this is mahesh guhani and in this video i am going to talk about classical and fuzzy logic this concept is divided into two videos this is the first part in this video i am going to talk about various connectives tautology and contradiction and in second video i'll be talking about concepts like logical proof and inferences what is logic we can define logic as a way to quantitatively develop a reasoning process that can be replicated and manipulated with mathematical proofs it means whenever we are making certain claim that claim should be provable by certain mathematical steps and logic is known as an ability of the human to reasonably think about something with the help of proper proofs and inferences so whenever we are making certain calls human mind will always try to prove it either the thought process or by certain mathematical steps proposition is individual statement or a collection of statement whose truth value is always binary value that is either it will be true or it will be false for example man is a mortal this statement is always true so the truth value of this statement will be always one if i say that you will get good grade in exam so depending upon the results of exam that proposition will be assigned either will you true or false the truth value to the proposition is assigned as t of p so t of p indicates truth value of proposition p all the elements small u in the universe capital u that are true for the given proposition they will form the truth set for the proposition for example if i consider a proposition like set of students who are having a percentage greater than 80 so i can treat entire class as a universe individual student as an small u that is the element of capital u and those students who secure percentage greater than 80 for that given predicate is true and hence those students will form truth set for the proposition and those students or the those elements for which given proposition is false they will form the falsity set for the given proposition for universe x and the null set phi we can assign the truth value as t of universe is always 1 and truth of phi is always 0 because uh, universe is always true for any uh, element and uh, null set is empty so it will be false for anything so the respective truth value will be 1 and 0 let us discuss few connectives connectives are used to combine different propositions and to make compound proposition in this video i'll be talking about various propositions like disjunction conjunction negation implication and equivalence let us discuss it one by one so disjunction connective is used to represent the logical or operation between the truth value of two propositions p disjunction q is denoted as x belongs to a or x belongs to b where p and q are defined over set a and b and the truth value of compound statement is given as t of p disjunction q is equivalent to max of the truth value of p or truth value of q disjunction corresponds to union operation and as it is a union we already know that union operation will always return the maximum value whether it's a membership value or whether it's a truth value so in case of proposition it will take the highest truth value of given to individual propositions truth value of this disjunction proposition can easily shown with the help of truth table like we have a two propositions p and q and its truth value could be either f or t or simultaneously we can represent it as a 0 or 1 so if both the propositions will take uh, truth value 0 then only the truth value of disjunction proposition or the compound proposition will be zero 
if any one proposition is having truth value 1 then the truth value of t p disjunction q will be always 1 so it is same as logical or operation conjunction proposition will take truth value 1 if both the individual propositions will have truth value 1 so this indicates logical and operation and uh, the truth value of this uh, connective is defined as t of p conjunction q is equal to minimum truth value of p and q so it is something like an intersection operation and it will always take minimum truth value of both the proposition and using truth table we can show the truth value of this compound proposition as like this where only this row is having truth value 1 for individual propositions and hence uh, the final compound proposition has truth value 1 for this and for rest of all other combinations of truth value for p and q it will take truth value 0. Negation connective will simply complement the truth value of given proposition that is if truth value of p is equal to 1 then truth value of the complement of the proportion will be 0 and vice versa. Uh, table shows the truth value of complement proposition. So if truth value of p is 0 then uh, truth value of p complement will be 1 and if truth value of p is 1 then truth value of complement proposition will be 0. Implication is quite important from the perspective of the controller design because fuzzy controllers are designed with the if then rules and this p implication q corresponds to the same rule or they represents if then q kind of um, structure so this p implies q is uh, read out as p entails q and it represents that if p is true then q can never be false that is this is what the interpretation of p entails q and it is also written as if p then q where the p is called premise or the hypothesis and q is called the conclusion the truth value of p entails q is computed as like this if we have a proposition like if you score 90 percent or above in subject you will get grade a uh, so it is actually a combination of two proposition uh, you score 90 percent or above and you will get grade a so we can consider the first proposition as p and second as q so if p is true that is if you will score 90 percent or above then you will get good grade will never be false because if you are scoring above 90 percent definitely you are going to get good grade and hence that can never be false so this is how implication will help us to represent if then kind of structures p implies q or p entails q can also written as x belongs to a bar or x belongs to p or we can say it is simply written as p bar union q we can say that p entails q is equal to 1 if the membership value of p is always less than or equal to membership value of q and it is zero otherwise as it can be seen in the table that for this particular row the truth value of p is 1 truth value of q is 0 so here the t of p is not less than or equal to t of q and hence for that particular statement the truth value of p entails q is 0 and for rest of all combination the t of p less than or equal to t of q condition is satisfied and hence the truth value of p entails q is 1. The equivalence connective is generally used when we have a dual implication that is p entails q is true as well as q entails p is also true and in that case we can say that p is equivalent to q the truth value of p equivalence of q is represented as 1 if both the propositions are having an identical truth value and it is 0 if both the propositions have a different uh, truth value the table shows the truth value for p equivalence of q as we can see that for this and this row the truth value of propositions p and q are identical so the truth value of equivalence proposition is 1 and for rest of other it is 0. So this is the summary of all the connectives we have discussed so far and their truth value is summarized in this table. Tautology. So in classical logic it is useful to consider compound proposition which are always true irrespective of what is the truth value of individual propositions and such propositions are known as a tautology. 
so tautology considers the propositions which are always true under any circumstances for example man is mortal so if we consider any man then he is mortal and so that statement we can consider as a tautology sun rises in east so given any day the statement will be definitely true so that is also tautology tautology are also useful in deductive reasoning for proving the theorem and making deductive inferences there are very popular uh, tautologies called modus ponens and modus tollens modus ponens is represented as p conjunction p entails q will entail q and modus tollens rule says q bar conjunction p entails q entails p bar so we will prove that this both statements uh, are tautology so there are two ways to prove the truthness of this uh, modus ponens either we can use indirect method like we can construct a table put the truth value of individual compound statements and then we combine them and finally we will compute the truthness of entire statement or we can start with the initial statement and we can apply step by step laws of mathematics and we can conclude that this is actually tautology so first we'll try to prove it with the help of the indirect method that is using the table we have two propositions p and q in the given compound propositions so we will put those two propositions in the table and we'll formulate different combinations of the truth value as we have two propositions there will be four truth values a uh, true 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 false false true and false false now we will start with the innermost compound uh, statement that is p entails q and we know that the truth value of p entails q will be false only if truth value of p is less than or equal to truth value of q or in other words if p is true q can never be false so the truth value of p entails q will be d f t f conjunction of this with p it will be true only if uh, both these columns have truth value t otherwise it will be zero in as this part formulates hypothesis and this is called conclusion so hypothesis entails conclusion will be false only if hypothesis is true and conclusion is false so if we check out for it uh, that will never happen Uh, where the hypothesis is true and conclusion is false for this particular value the hypothesis is having value true and com- uh, and the conclusion is also having value true so for all this combination the output will be t and we can say that the modus ponens rule is tautology it is true under all the circumstances let us try to prove it with the help of mathematical steps so we will apply certain laws of mathematics and we will prove that it is actually a true so uh, p uh, conjunction p entails q implies q so as we know that p entails q can be written as p bar union q so let us replace it now we will apply the rule of distributivity or the law of distributivity so we can write it as a p conjunction p bar union p conjunction q which implies q uh using the law of excluded middle we can say that p conjunction p bar will be always phi or we know that intersection of set with its complement is always going to phi so that is phi union p conjunction q entails q we will apply the law of identity which says the union of any set with phi will be always the set itself so we will be left with p conjunction q implies q so this is again a basic implication so this would be p conjunction q complement union q let us apply the de morgan's law which says a intersection b whole complement is same as a complement union b complement so this statement could be written as p bar union q bar union q so disjunction corresponds to union operation and conjunction corresponds to intersection operation so i might be interchangeably using word union and intersection instead of disjunction and conjunction so p bar union q bar union q bar let us apply the law of association so we can write it as a p bar union q bar union q so we know that q bar union q will be one from the law of excluded middle because the union of set with its complement will form the universe 
so uh, the statement will reduce to p bar union x and union of any set with universe will be always universe and as we know that truth value of universe is always going to be 1 and hence we have proved that for any value of p and q the final conclusion will be definitely 1 so this statement is tautology let us try to prove that modest tolerance is also a tautology so first we will prove it through the table uh, we have two propositions p and q so there will be four combinations of truth values will require p bar and q bar to compute the truthness of given statement now we'll start with the innermost uh, compound statement p entails q we know that p entails q will be only false if p is true and q is false now take the conjunction of this with q bar so if both statements are true then only the compound statement will be true otherwise it will be false so in this statement as this part form the hypothesis and this forms the conclusion so truth value of the statement is only false if hypothesis is true and conclusion is false if we check out the truth value in the table that will never happen and hence this truthness of the statement will be t for any combination of p and q and hence it is proved that modest tolerance is also a tautology let us try to prove it with the help of mathematical steps so this is the original statement we know that p entails q can be written as p bar disjunction q uh, let us apply the law of distributivity so we can write it as a q bar intersection p q bar intersection p bar union q bar intersection q uh, from the law of excluded middle we already know that q bar intersection q will be definitely phi so the statement will reduce to q bar conjunction p bar union phi that gives p bar from the law of identity we know that union of any set with phi will be set itself so the statement will reduce to q bar intersection p bar implies p bar x entails y can be written as x bar union y so this statement we can write it as q bar intersection p bar full complement union p complement apply the de morgan's law so the statement will reduce q union p union p bar using law of association we can rewrite this statement as q union p union p bar and p union p bar is definitely universe and the union of any set with universe will always be universe and truth value of universe is always one so in this way also we have proved that modest tolerance is a tautology in similar way we can show the truthness of different statements and we can check whether they are tautology or not so the given statement is also tautology as we can see from the truth values mentioned in the table contradiction proposition is considered as a contradiction if it is always false under any circumstances that means contradiction is exactly opposite of the tautology the statement under tautology is always true under any circumstances whereas the uh, statements under contradiction is always false for given any kind of uh, inputs so few of the very popular contradiction statements are like a intersection a complement that is definitely phi and truth value of phi is zero and hence this statement is false a intersection phi is also always phi so again the uh, truthness of this statement will be always false for any combination of uh, input values or any combination of truth values of a and phi consider the example p equivalence q intersection p bar intersection q uh, let us try to prove it uh, that this given statement is a contradiction so there are two propositions given in the statement p and q so we'll mention that and we'll write down the uh, truth value also uh, we will be needing p bar so we'll compute the complement of p bar that is simply complemented truth value of p the truth value of p equivalence q is 1 whenever p and q will take identical truthness otherwise it will be 0 so as we can see that first and last row are having identical truth value that is true true and false false so for those rows the truthness of p equivalence q will be true and for rest of other it will be false let us compute p bar intersection q so as it is an intersection it will be only true if both the statements will take a correct value or the true value and we have to take intersection of these two statements and again as we can see from the table uh, there is no row in which both the uh, statements are having truth value true and hence the final truth value is given as 
f f f f and hence it is proved that given statement is contradiction the exclusive or will output a true value only if one proposition is true if both are true then its output will be zero so for first and last row in the table the truth value of input propositions p and q are identical and hence its output is uh, false and for second and third row one is true and one is false so the output of or the truth value of exclusive or would be one exclusive nor is complement of exclusive or if we take intersection of x or and x nor then that will be contradiction that's very obvious whenever we take intersection of set with its complement it is going to be null and the truth value of that is zero and hence that statement will be always contradiction in similar way we can also prove that and and its intersection with nand is also contradiction hello folks welcome to code crux this is mahesh gurani and in this video i am going to talk about classical and fuzzy logic this is the second video of this uh, topic in first video i have already talked about connectives tautology and contradiction and in this video i am going to talk about implication and the logical proofs before you watch this video i recommend you to watch the first part uh, link of that video is given in description box let us start with logical proofs so this is the recapitulation of the first video that logic is defined as a way to quantitatively develop a reasoning process that can be replicated and mathematically manipulated that means given the claim we should be able to prove it through mathematical steps or by the some thought process and logic is an ability of the human to reasonably think about something and make a decision and to infer something from the given claim a proof is an argument from a hypothesis to conclusion so as we discussed in previous video to prove that given statement that is uh, either uh, modus ponens or modus tollens is a tautology we have started with the given statement we have applied a step by step simplification and at the end we have proved that this is actually a tautology so uh, this procedure is called proof procedure each step of argument follows the laws of logic when we are giving some logical proofs if you remember Uh, at every step we are applying certain laws like law of uh, identity law of distributivity we have also applied law of excluded middle fine so at every step we can apply this kind of mathematical laws and we can proceed to prove the given claim to prove the given proposition we should follow these steps we have to analyze a given compound statement or given compound proposition which is given in the form of linguistic statement that means in real world the problems are formulated with the english language or with the linguistic terms so first we need to understand it properly that which part is hypothesis which part is the conclusion or what is depending on what then we need to decompose that bigger compound statement into individual or the single propositions and we have to express those statements algebraically with all the logical connectives in a proper place we have already talked about different type of connectives so we have to check out uh, using which connectives we can combine which uh, propositions and finally we have to verify the truth value of entire uh, bigger proposition using either truth table or by some uh, deductive uh, reasoning procedure let us try to understand it with the example uh, we are given three statements in the hypothesis like scientists are mathematicians logical thinkers do not believe in magic and mathematicians are logical thinkers and the conclusion is that scientists do not believe in magic so we have to prove whether this claim is true or not given the hypothesis so what we need to do is we have to understand it that what it wants to says so we have here term scientists are mathematicians so person can be scientist person can be mathematician also next logical thinkers do not believe in logic so we have again it's a compound statement that person could be logical thinker and the person may or may not believe in logic so again it is a combination of two different propositions and mathematicians are logical thinkers so person can be mathematician he can be logical thinker also 
So first we have to find out such small individual composition and then we have to formulate the association or the relations between them with the help of connectives. Let us call a person is a scientist as a proposition P. Let us label a person is a mathematician as a Q, a person is a logical thinker as a R and a person believes in magic as capital S. So we have found out individual propositions from this uh, compound propositions. Now we will apply certain connectives and we will try to formulate uh, individual hypothesis statement. The first one is scientists are mathematicians. So if person is scientist, then he is a mathematician. So this is if then uh, association and if then kind of rules we can always represent with the help of implication operator. So scientists are mathematicians can be represented using the uh, implication like P entails Q or P implies Q. That is if person is scientist then he is mathematician. The second hypothesis says logical thinkers do not believe in logic. So we have proposition S as a person believes in magic. So we have to take complement of that because this statement says that person do not believe in magic. So the uh, representation for logical thinkers do not believe in logic would be uh, R implies S bar. The third hypothesis mathematicians are logical thinkers. We can represent it in quite straight away method. Uh, Q implies R. So Q states that person is mathematician and R states that he is logical thinker. Conclusion says that scientists do not believe in magic. So we have a proposition P which says a person is scientist and we have a proposition S which says a person believes in magic. So scientists do not believe in magic can be represented as P implies S bar. So this is the mathematical representation of individual proposition. To create an entire statement we have to again combine them with the help of appropriate propositions. So we have to combine all these propositions with the help of appropriate connectives. So we can write down the entire claim that is hypothesis entails conclusion as like this P implies Q conjunction R implies S bar conjunction Q implies R and that hypothesis itself implies the conclusion called P implies S bar. We can't use disjunction here because uh, disjunction will say that if any one of the compound uh, hypothesis is true then conclusion is true. That is not true in fact because all the given statements in hypothesis must be true in order to prove that uh, conclusion is also true. So whenever we are given such kind of statements and whenever we are combining them remember that we should always put intersection or the conjunction operation between the individual hypothesis statement. And to check that the given claim is true, we need to prove the truthness of this. So if it is true under all the circumstances, we can say that given claim is true, otherwise it is false. So let us try to prove it uh, that given statement is false in tautology or not. Uh, either we can prove it using deductive reasoning process or we can prove it using the tabular method. We have four different propositions P, Q, R and S. So uh, we will create a table of 16 rows because there will be 16 different combinations. Uh, if there are n propositions in statement then there will be 2 raised to n different combinations of truth value in the table. Let us try to compute a one by one composition and finally we will compute the truthness of entire statement. So we will be needing s bar here. So the complement of s bar is given as like this. Let us compute p entails q. As we know that this statement will be only false if P is true and Q is not true. So for this particular case, uh, we can observe that P is true and Q is not true. So for those entries, this P entails Q will take false value and for rest of all the entries, it will take value true. Let us compute R entails S bar. In similar way, we can compute the truthness of this statement also. Uh, Q entails R would look like this. P entails S bar. So whenever P is true and S bar is false, the final um, compound statement will take value false. For rest of the cases, it will take the true value. So here, 
This part forms the hypothesis. We can represent it as a x. This part forms the conclusion. So the truthness of x is given as like this. So we have to take the intersection of this, this, and this column. So if all three values are true, then final value is true. Otherwise, it is false. And to find out the truth value of hypothesis entails conclusion. We have to see that whenever hypothesis is true, conclusion should not be false. If it is false, then final truth value will be false. Otherwise, it is true. But as we can observe, wherever this hypothesis is true, the conclusion is also true. And hence, its truth value is t. As we can see that the truth value of entire compound statement is always true. And hence, this is a tautology, or we can say that this statement is true under any value of p and q, and hence it is proved. Let us consider another example. We have a hypothesis statement. It says if you score 95% or above, your success is represented by good grade. The another statement says you score 95% and above, and the conclusion is that your score is represented by good grade. The first statement is actually a compound statement and the individual propositions in that are you score 95% and above that is one statement and your success is represented by good grade is another statement. So let us uh, assign uh, the appropriate uh, notations to this and apply the connectives. So statement P says you score 95% and above and Q says your success is represented by a good grade. So, if there is a compound statement, we need to apply connectives on that. So, in first statement, uh, it is kind of if then rules that if you score 95 percent, then your success is represented by good grade. So, this statement we can write like P entails Q. The second statement in hypothesis that it your score 95 percent and above that is a quite straightforward statement and it is represented by P. And in conclusion, again, we have a single statement that is your success is represented by a good grade, which we can represent as a Q. Now, we have to put it into the form hypothesis entails conclusion. And whatever statements are given into the hypothesis, we have to take conjunction of that. That means P entails Q, conjunction P will entail Q. We have to prove the truthness of this statement. We have two propositions, so there will be four combinations in the table. Uh, let us compute P entails Q. We know that whenever P is true, Q should not be false. If it is false, truth value is false. For rest of other cases, it is true. Let us find the conjunction of this statement with P, which is nothing but T F T F. So this is our hypothesis and our conclusion is Q. So whenever hypothesis is true, Q should not be false and there is no such cases in this particular combination and hence the statement is always true. So we can say that whatever claim we have made is always true uh, and we have proved it with the help of this table. Proof by contradiction. A statement is true only if its alternate statement is false. So many times it is easy to prove the alternate statement as a false to prove the truthness of given statement. Because sometimes to prove it in a straightforward way may be difficult, but to prove it through the contradiction will be quite easy. Consider the example of finite automata, which represents a set of strings which are having a, a B B as a substring. So that automata might generate millions of strings which are having A B B as a substring. So based on those million strings, we cannot say that finite automata is correct. If I can find out a single string which is not having ABB as a substring, then I can make a sure claim that this finite automata is false. Consider P entails Q, conjunction P entails Q. We want to prove that this statement is correct. So we will first find out alternate statement of this and we will prove that that alternate statement is false. So as we know, P entails Q we can write as P bar union Q. If we take the alternate statement of this, that means we have to take the complement of this entire statement and by applying De Morgan's law, we will conclude that it would be P bar disjunction Q conjunction P conjunction Q bar. Let us try to prove the truthness of this statement with the help of table. Uh, observe all the columns. 
we can see that the last column that is our given statement is having all the value false so alternate statement is taking all the value false and hence original statement will take all the values true and hence we have proved uh, through the contradiction that given statement is true because its alternate statement is false implication implication is quite important concepts from the perspective of fuzzy logic controller design because the controllers are designed with the help of if then kind of rules and they are very effectively represented with the help of implication so if we are given the rule if a then b where a and b are derived from universe capital x and y respectively so the rule if a then b can be represented in form of relation matrix as r is equal to a cartesian product b union a bar cartesian product y here i am considering crisp set so a and a bar will represent set and its complement here don't consider a bar is a fuzzy set as of now we have already talked how to compute the membership value of any tuple in cartesian product if you don't know then i recommend you to watch the video on uh, crisp relations the link is given in the description box the membership value of any tuple x comma y in this relation matrix r is given as chi r of x comma y which is equivalent to as it is a union of these two terms we have to take max of two arguments a by b and a bar by y where membership value of a by b that is the cartesian product is given as mean of chi a of x comma chi b of y because a and b are derived from the universe x and y respectively and the membership value of a bar by y is given as mean of chi of a bar that is 1 minus chi a of x and 1 because y represents universe and the membership value of all the element in y will be definitely 1 and if we have compound statement like if a then b else c and in that case the relation matrix for uh, this entire statement is given as r is equal to a by b union a bar by c membership value of every element x comma y in the relation matrix r is computed as chi r of x comma y is equal to as it is a union of this two quantity union will be replaced by max this cartesian product is replaced by mean and we have to take mean of chi a of x comma chi b of y and the second quantity is again a cartesian product a bar by c which is given as 1 minus chi a of x comma chi c of y let us consider two universe capital x as 1 2 3 and y as 1 2 3 4 5 and uh, two crisp sets we have derived like a is equal to 1 comma 3 and b is equal to 2 4 5 let us find out what would be the relation matrix for the statement if a then b as we know from the previous slide the relation matrix for, for this implication statement is given as r is equal to a by b union a bar by y so first we'll write down all the related or all the required sets here so a can be represented as 1 by 1 because membership value of element 1 is 1 in the set a then 0 by 2 because element 2 is not present in set a and 1 by 3 because 3 is present in set a so its membership value will be 1 in similar way we can write down b a bar and y uh, y will have membership value for all the elements as 1 because all elements are part of universe let us compute a by b first so to compute this value in cartesian product we have to consider minimum membership value of uh, 1 in a and 1 in b so that is 0 to compute the, this membership value in a by b we have to take minimum membership value of 1 in a and 2 in b in general to compute the membership value of any tuple x comma y in a by b we have to find minimum membership value of x in y a and y in b in identical way we can compute the uh, relation matrix for a bar by y and we need to take union of these two uh, matrix and we know that union always returns the maximum membership value of two arguments so r would look like this so this will be the final rule metric for the statement like if a then b
The deductive inference is also known as approximate reasoning. According to the Zadeh, the ultimate goal of fuzzy logic is to form the theoretical foundation for reasoning about imprecise propositions. Uh, such reasonings has been referred as approximate reasoning. What it says that if we are given a rule if A then B which is represented as like R is equal to A by B union A bar by B bar. So we already have some known facts from that we have formulated rule if A then B. So if we are given some unknown A dash can we compute B dash from that or if we are given B dash can we compute A dash for that. So it is something like a bit of learning that for known fact we have formulated rules now some unknown value is coming can we conclude or can we, can we derive the conclusion for that particular value or can we find the corresponding value for that. So yes we can do it definitely with the help of generalized modus ponens or generalized modus tollens rule. Consider that A and B represents the temperature and the pressure. So for given data we are finding what is the relation of temperature with the pressure. Now some unknown value of temperature is given that is A dash. Can we compute the corresponding value of pressure with the help of this relation matrix R which is already known. So we can do it definitely with the help of generalized modest tolerance and modest tolerance rules. In that case this conclusion B dash is given as a composition of A dash with relation matrix R. So R is already known quantity to us which is derived from the facts which are already known and uh, A dash is some unknown parameter and for the and uh, for that we have to find out corresponding B dash parameter. So that can be computed with the help of composition and that is nothing but A dash composition A by B union A bar by Y. We will talk more about such kind of rules in fuzzy inference systems uh, in which we will be talking about different types of uh, inference systems like Mamdani fuzzy inference system. Takagi Sujeno inference system, Sukamoto inference systems and so on. Hello folks, welcome to Code Cracks. This is Mahesh Guyani and in this video I will be talking about few defuzzification methods. Uh, the points I am going to cover in this video would be what is fuzzification, what is defuzzification, why we need defuzzification and that will be followed by discussion of some of the uh, defuzzification methods. This concept is divided into two parts. In this particular video, I will be covering methods like lambda cut method, maxima methods and weighted average method. Whereas in second video of this concept, I will be covering uh, the important concepts like different centroid methods. This is the uh, structure of entire fuzzy inference system. As we see that the crisp input comes from this fuzzy fire. This fuzzy fire will convert the crisp input into fuzzy input by applying some membership functions. We have already studied different membership functions. If you don't know then I recommend you that please watch the video on fuzzy membership functions. The link is given in description box. Fuzzy inference system can only deal with fuzzy value. So it is important to convert this crisp input into the fuzzy input. Now fuzzy inference system will use knowledge base and apply certain rules and convert this fuzzy input into some fuzzy output. The controller cannot understand this fuzzy output so we need some mechanism which converts this fuzzy output into some crisp output. So the defuzzification is the process of converting the fuzzy output into the crisp output. For example we might have a rule like if temperature is high then rotate fast. If temperature is high then turbine should rotate the throttle fast. But turbine cannot determine that how fast it should be whether it should be 300 rpm, 700 rpm or 1200 rpm. So this fuzzy output R fast needs to be converted into crisp value so that R fast will map to some number maybe 500 or 450 or 750 so that turbine can work accordingly. Assume that we have two rules in our fuzzy system says if x is a bar then y is c bar and another rule says that if x is b bar then y is d bar. So x corresponds to input y corresponds to output. So here c bar d bar b bar b bar are the fuzzy sets. Graphically we can represent it like this. 
uh, we have a two input sets a bar and b bar and two output sets c bar and d bar these rules are constructed from the known data or from the fact so we already know the mapping that if value of x is a bar then output is c bar and if value of x is b bar then output is d bar so this is formulated from known data so can we find out what would be the output if x is or input is some unknown value x dash two mappings we have from that we have to utilize that knowledge and we have to find out the crisp value for any other number can we do that so as we can see that this x dash belongs to set a bar and b bar with certain membership values so if we compute the output corresponding to a bar which belongs to set c bar then it would cover this much area of set c bar similarly the x dash has some lower uh, membership value in set b bar and the output of uh, this set corresponds to set d bar and it is covering this much area because it is having that much membership into the set b bar we have to take aggregate of these two output sets we have to compute the area and we have to apply certain diversification method so that we can find out what will be the final corresponding crisp value to this union we are going to study uh, these methods of diversification lambda cut method maxima method and weighted weighted average method will be covered in this part and centroid methods i'll cover into the next video let's start our discussion with lambda cut method i recommend you to watch the fuzzy terminology video uh, before you proceed here because the concepts of lambda cut or concepts of alpha cut i have already explained in that video this is quite simple method it is used to convert fuzzy set or fuzzy relation into crisp set or crisp relation it is also known as alpha cut set method it simply applies some threshold uh, to the fuzzy set and convert it into the crisp set the crisp set a lambda is derived from fuzzy set a bar by applying threshold lambda such that it would be collection of all the elements x from a bar whose membership value is always greater than or equal to lambda so we simply have to put the threshold on fuzzy set a bar and those elements who satisfy the threshold will be the part of the crisp set a lambda consider the set a bar is like this where denominator represents elements and the numerator represents the membership value of those elements in set a bar if we take lambda is equal to 1 then the crisp set a lambda is equal to a1 would contain only one element that is x1 because x1 has membership greater than or equal to 1 in the given fuzzy set in identical way if we apply lambda is equal to 0.5 then crisp set corresponding to that would be a 0.5 which includes elements x1 and x2 from a bar because only those two elements are having membership value greater than or equal to 0.5 in same way we can apply any value of lambda and we can derive crisp set from the given fuzzy set we can also convert fuzzy relation into crisp relation by applying the same principle crisp relation r lambda is given as collection of tuples x comma y such that the membership value of tuple x comma y in fuzzy set r bar should be greater than or equal to lambda so consider this fuzzy relation given to us if we compute r 0.8 so that crisp relation will include only those elements whose membership value is greater than or equal to 0.8 in r bar as only these three elements are satisfying that condition they will be full member of r 0.8 rest will not be the part of that and in similar way we can change the lambda and we can compute different crisp relation from the given fuzzy relation let us talk few properties of uh, lambda cut sets if we compute the lambda cut of a uh, union of two fuzzy set it is equivalent to first you apply the lambda cut on individual sets and then you perform the union operation of that it is identical for the intersection operation also however if you first take the complement of set and then you find the lambda cut of that is not same as first you find the lambda cut and then you apply the complement on that it is only true for lambda is equal to 0.5 for rest of other values of lambda this won't be true in general 
let a lambda 1 and a lambda 2 represents crisp sets derived using lambda 1 and lambda 2 so if lambda 1 is greater than or equal to lambda 2 then a lambda 1 set will be always subset of a lambda 2 let us talk about different maxima methods so the first one is a height method which is also known as max membership principle throughout the discussion of a fuzzy inference system and defuzzification methods we will be using notation x star to represent the crisp value corresponding to the aggregate of the fuzzy output functions height method will compute the crisp value from the given aggregate of the fuzzy output it will find out such a point x star whose membership value will be always greater than or equal to membership value of all other points into the given fuzzy set so our fuzzy set c bar is union of three fuzzy sets c1 bar c2 bar and c3 bar which are a triangular functions and the point x star as you can see that it is having the highest membership value among all the points in the domain capital x so if we consider any x on this x axis will have membership value definitely less than or equal to this x star it is quite simple to find the crisp value using the height method however this is not that much efficient method and it is only applicable when height in the fuzzy set is unique consider this example where we have a three peaks or it is a union of three uh, triangular fuzzy membership output functions uh, one at x is equal to one x is equal to three and x is equal to 5.5 all are having a different membership value but as per the definition of height method it will return 5.5 as the crisp output of this fuzzy output set first of maxima method will determine the smallest value in the domain having the maximum membership value as you can see in this diagram this span is having the highest membership value the first of maxima method will return the minimum x whose membership value is maximum and hence this point will be returned as a crisp value mathematically we can define fom that is first of maxima x star is equal to minimum x such that the membership value of x is equivalent to the height of the set or the maximum membership of the set last of maxima will determine the largest value of the domain having the highest membership value as you can see in this diagram this particular region is having the highest membership value and this x is having the highest value among them so this point will be written as a crisp value mathematically we can say that lom that is last of maximize x star is such a highest point x whose membership value is the height of the set in this fuzzy output function we have a two peaks with identical membership value one at one and one at x is equal to six so first of maxima will return value one as the crisp output and last of maxima will return six as the crisp output you can see that these both methods are returning quite different number as a crisp value middle of maxima method finds the middle of maximum elements who are having the highest membership value let m represents all the points in the fuzzy outputs having maximum membership value so this span represents m crisp value for this is computed by taking the average of all this point that is x star is summation of all the points in this m divided by the size of m where m is collection of such a point whose membership value is height of the set or we can say that m is a set of points having the highest membership value however this method is applicable only if the function is symmetric otherwise it is not applicable consider this is the aggregation of three fuzzy outputs and this span represents points having the maximum membership value in the given set middle of maxima we can compute by simply taking the average of first of maxima and last of maxima that is a plus b by 2 it results into 3.5 or we can sum up all the elements in this span that is 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and we can divide it by total number of elements in that span that is divided by 4 that is also equivalent to 3.5 so in both way we can compute the middle of maxima consider the fuzzy set young which is defined as uh, 
x is equal to 15, its membership value is 0 0.5, then 20, 0 0.8, 25, 0 0.8 and so on. We have to find out the crisp value corresponding to this fuzzy set using first of maxima, last of maxima and middle of maxima. If we observe carefully in this set, then this and this elements are having the highest membership value in given set. So if we compute the first of maxima, then it will return 20 as crisp output because it is having the highest membership value and it is having the minimum x into this span. And uh, the last of maxima will return value 25 because 25 is having the highest membership value and it is the largest element into the span. And middle of maxima we can compute by taking the average of first of maxima and last of maxima that is 20 plus 25 divided by 2 that is 22.5. The weighted average method it is also known as Sugeno defazification method because, because the Sugeno method employs the weighted average method to compute the crisp output. It computes uh, the crisp value by taking the weighted average of each function in the output by its membership value. We need to compute the center of the output functions and we have to multiply them uh, with the membership value of that particular uh, shape or the function. X star is defined by summation of membership value of the center element of the set CI with the element itself and that will be divided by the membership value of center element of all the sets. Uh, this procedure will result approximately close to center of highest area method but the thing is that this weighted average method is quite simple. It is computationally less intensive compared to COA method. However, it has a restriction that it can be only applied if fuzzy output functions are symmetric. Let us have uh, this function as an aggregated output function which is union of two trapezoidal functions. The center of this trapezoidal functions are 3 and 7 respectively and then their membership values are 0.7 and 1 respectively. We can compute the crisp value using weighted average method by taking the multiplication of center value with its uh, membership value divided by the summation of its membership value. So that would be 0 0.7 into 3 plus 1.0 into 7 divided by 0 0.7 plus 1.0 which will yield into 5.941. This is the summary of all the methods we have discussed so far. That height method will return a point which is having the highest membership value compared to all the other points. First of maxima we will return such a minimum point which membership value is equal to height of the uh, set. Last of maxima we will return the maximum point whose membership value is height of the set. Middle of maxima will be the average of first of maxima and last of maxima and weighted average method simply weight the center of the function with its membership value and it will take the average of that. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Gilani and in this video I am going to talk about defuzzification methods. This is actually second video of this concept. So I recommend you to watch the first video that is defuzzification methods part 1. These are the points I am going to cover in this video. Except the last topic, remaining all the topics I have already covered in video 1. So we will be directly jumping to the centroid methods that is COG, COS and COA method. Let us start with center of gravity method. According to Sudeno, this method is most prevalent and physically appealing method among all the defuzzification method. The basic principle of center of gravity method is to find out such a point of the union of output fuzzy sets such that when you draw a vertical line, it will divide that union into two equal masses. If the membership value is defined over a continuous domain, then the crisp value is computed as x star is equal to integration mu c bar of x into x dx upon integration mu c bar of x into dx where the integration mu c bar of x dx represents the area covered by the region c bar or the area covered by the set c bar. 
and if membership value is defined over discrete universe then the integration operation is replaced by the summation that means we can compute the discrete value with the formula x star is equal to summation over 1 to n mu c bar of xi into xi divided by summation of mu c bar of xi however this method is quite accurate it is computationally very intensive because we need to find out areas and centroids and all if we are given the union of different fuzzy output functions as shown here then we can divide this entire big region into smaller sub segments uh, shapes like triangular trapezoidal or rectangle we can compute the area of individual segment and we can apply this formula to compute the crisp value using center of gravity method however this equation is identical to the previous one because ai is nothing but its integration mu c bar of x into dx which represents area spanned by the polygon ai let us try to understand it with the example consider these are the two fuzzy output sets are given union of that will yield this uh, aggregated fuzzy output function we need to find out area of this function so let us see how we can do that so to compute the area of aggregated fuzzy output we need to find out equation of all these lines a b b c c d d and e f which is forming this entire region from the equation of line we can write y minus y1 upon x minus x1 which is same as y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 where x1 y1 and x2 y2 are the two end points of the line and x comma y is any random point on the line so if we know x we can compute y and vice versa for line ab x1 comma y1 would be 0 comma 0 and x2 comma y2 would be 1 comma 0 0.5 put those value in this given equation and we will get the equation for the line in form of y that is y is equal to 0 0.5 x as you can see in the diagram the line ab varies from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1 equation of line bc is given as y is equal to 0 0.5 because it is a horizontal line and it is constant for any value of x so equation of that would be y is equal to 0 0.5 and this line ranges from uh, x is equal to 1 to approximately x is equal to 3.5 the accurate value of x I have not computed for the simplicity, but I'll show you how to calculate the exit x. Line CD, uh, in similar way, we can compute the equation of line CD. x1, y1 would be uh, 3.5, 0 0.5 and x2, y2 would be uh, 4, 0 0.8. When we put those value, we will get y is equal to 3 by 5x minus 8 by 5 and that line varies from 3.5 to 4. The equation of line DE would be y is equal to 0 0.8 because that line DE is a horizontal line having a constant slope. So it will be independent of x values. So y will be 0 0.8 and that line ranges between x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 6. The equation of line EF we can compute in a similar way. For line E, x1, y1 would be 6 and 0 0.8 and x2 y2 would be 8 comma 0 so by putting these appropriate values we will get the equation of line ef as y is equal to minus 0 0.4 x plus 3.2 and it ranges from x is equal to 6 to x is equal to 8 this table summarizes all the equations of the lines uh, line ab has equation y is equal to 0 0.5 x and it ranges from 0 to 1 and so on now we will take the integration over all these line equation to find the area of this entire curve. So according to the formula x star is computed as integration mu c bar of x into x dx divided by integration mu c bar of x into dx where integration mu c bar of x into dx represents the area and we already have the equation of the line to compute the area. So if we put all these value into this equation so this would be line ab ranges from 0 to 1 so integration will take range from 0 to 1 and the equation of line is 0 0.5 x so this would be 0 0.5 x into x dx and so on we can put it for all the line equations and ultimately 
the crisp value corresponding to this fuzzy output set would be 4.151. Let us talk about center of sums method. The equation of center of sums method looks quite identical to that of the previous method. But the difference is that here we have to calculate area of individual polygon rather than the aggregated polygon. So in case of center of sums method, the area of certain region will be computed more than once, maybe twice or thrice, which was computed only once in case of center of gravity method. As shown in diagram, C1 bar, C2 bar and C3 bar represents three fuzzy output functions. A1, A2 and A3 are the areas of those functions and X1, X2 and X3 are the geometric center of those areas. We can compute the crisp value using center of sums method as summation over 1 to n ai into xi divided by summation over ai. So if trapezoid is given like this, if it is a symmetric trapezoid uh, having the base b1 and b2 as shown here and height h, then we can compute the area by the equation 1 half b1 plus b2 into h. Consider that we are given some uh, fuzzy output sets as shown here or we need to find out center and the area for each fuzzy output function and then we have to apply that equation center of this uh, set would be 1 plus 5 divided by 2 that is 3 and area we can compute using this equation so here base b1 is equal to 4 minus 2 that is 2 and base b2 is 5 minus 1 that is 4 so area would be 1 half 2 plus 4 into height which is 0 0.2. So area covered by this polygon or area covered by this set is 0 0.6 unit. The second fuzzy output function is given like this and the center of this would be 3 plus 7 by 2 that is 5. Base B1 would be 6 minus 4 that is 2 and base B2 would be 7 minus 3 that is 4 and height of this fuzzy set is 1. We can compute the area A2 as 1 half B1 plus B2 into H that is nothing but 1 half 2 plus 4 into 1. So the area covered by this set would be 3. And in identical way we can compute the center for this third fuzzy output function and we can also compute the area for this function that is 1.2. So this table summarizes the area and the center for all these three polygons. To compute the crisp value corresponding to this uh, fuzzy sets would be summation of area multiplied by its center value divided by the summation of area. So if we expand this equation and put the appropriate value, we will end up with crisp value 4.5. Consider another example. We are given three different fuzzy output functions. We already know how to compute the area of each of these. Area of first function would be 1.2 and center of that is 2.5. And similar way we can compute area A2, center C2 and area E3 and center C3. Put appropriate value into equation of crisp value x star and solve the equation. And we will get crisp value is equal to 5.0 for given fuzzy outputs. Again I am repeating. The difference between COG and COS is that in case of COS, we are computing area of individual fuzzy sets and that's why there might be a chance that area of certain regions will be counted twice or thrice or more than that. Whereas in case of center of gravity method, first we are taking the union of all these uh, fuzzy output functions and we are computing area of that aggregated output function and hence area will be computed only once and uh, note that the center of gravity method will return uh, the crisp value 4.9 which is approximately close to COS method. The third one center of area method or it is also known as the center of largest area method. If fuzzy sets is having multiple subregions then we have to wait the subregion having the highest area with its centroid value. That means from this we need to calculate the area spanned by uh, C1 bar, C2 bar, C3 by into the aggregated function and the region having the highest area will be weighted by its uh, center of gravity. We can compute 
the crisp value using this method as x star is equal to integration of mu c bar m of x into x dash dx upon integration mu c bar m x dx where c bar of m represents the polygon having the highest area and integration mu c bar m into x dx represents area spanned by that region and x dash represents the center of gravity or the center of that particular region. Assume that we have these three fuzzy output functions. When we take the aggregation of all this, it looks like this. As we are taking the union to find the aggregation, it will only select the value having the highest membership. Uh, just like previous, like previous methods, we will again compute the equations of the lines and we will compute the area A1, A2 and A3 and we will see that which area is having the maximum value. So A1 is comprised of line AB and BC. So equation of line we can compute by using the formula y minus y1 upon x minus x1 is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So as we know that for line AB x1 y1 is 0 comma 0 and x2 y2 is 1.5 comma 0 0.5. When we put the appropriate values we will get the equation y is equal to 0 0.33 x. Here x ranges from 0 to 1.5. Equation of line BC can be computed as in a similar way. Here for BC x1 y1 is 1.5 comma 0 0.5 and x2 y2 would be 3 comma 0. So if we put the values we will get equation y is equal to 0 0.33 x plus 1. Here uh, we have computed the equation of line from 1.5 to 3. But as we can see in this aggregated function, this line is not going up to 3, it is up to certain x only. So to compute that x, we need to process it further. Line BC is intersecting line CD. So first we will compute the equation of line CD. So equation of line CD is y is equal to 0 0.67x minus 0 0.67. These both lines are intersecting at this particular point. So we can say that for that particular point x comma y for both line will be identical. So we can compare the right side part of this equation because on both the side they have a similar y. When we solve this equation we will get the intersection point c is equal to 1.7. So we can say that line bc ranges from 1.5 to 1.7. This is how we can compute the exact x whenever two lines are intersecting. And this concept we can apply onto the first example I was talking about in COG method. The region A1 is comprises of line AB and BC. So the area of that region could be computed by the integration over these two lines and that area A1 would be 0 0.466. To compute the area of this region A2, we need to find out equations for line CD and D. The equation of line CD we have already computed that was 0 0.67x minus 0 0.67 and it ranges from 1.7 to 2.5. Let us compute the equation for line DE now. For line DE x1 y1 is 2.5 comma 1 and x2 y2 is 4 comma 0. When we put the appropriate values we will get this equation but again this line is for x is equal to 2.5 to x is equal to 4. As you can see in this aggregated output function that line is not going up to 4. So we need to find out x for this particular point and to compute that we need to find the line equation for EF. Equation of line EF would be y is equal to 0.2x minus 0.6. As line DE and EF are intersecting at this particular point their x comma y point would be identical for that point. We can compare right part of these two equations and that will yield us E is equal to 3.8. So the line DE will range from 2.5 to 3.8. Area A2 is given by the integration over line CD and line DE. Uh, when we take the integration, we will get area A2 is equal to 1.32. And in similar way, we can compute the equation of line EF, equation of line FG, we can take the integration and finally we got area A3 is equal to 0 0.136. The summary of all these area is uh, described in this table. 
area a1 is 0 0.466 a2 is 1.32 and a3 is 0 0.136 a2 is the maximum area so we have to utilize that area for computing the uh, crisp value that area is made up of line cd and de and we know that those lines varies from 1.7 to 2.5 and 2.5 to 3.8 we already know the equations of both the lines so when we put it into the equation of uh, x star we will get crisp value as 2.61 so this is how we can compute the crisp value using center of largest area method this is the summary of all the methods we have discussed so far in part 1 and part 2 hello folks welcome to code crux this is mahesh grani and in this video i am going to talk about example on defazification methods i have already made two videos on various defazification techniques that is defazification methods part 1 and defazification methods part 2 so i recommend you that before you go through this video please watch both the videos links are given in the description box to compute the crisp value corresponding to fuzzy output functions we need to take aggregation of all the fuzzy output functions and then we have to apply certain defuzzification methods on that aggregated function so assume that we are given three fuzzy output functions c1 c2 and c3 and their corresponding membership uh, graph is shown here first we need to take union of these three functions as we know union always represents maximum membership value of the overlapping regions so the final aggregated output fuzzy functions would look like this in centroid methods we need to find out area of this polygon so we have to take integration over line ab bc ce and so on for all the lines so we will get the area of this entire uh, fuzzy function to compute the equation of line ab we have to consider uh, this line where x1 y1 represents 0 0 and x2 y2 corresponds to 1.5 comma 1 here x1 y1 and x2 y2 corresponds to two endpoints of the line for line as we can see from the diagram x1 y1 would be 0 comma 0 and x2 y2 would be 1.5 comma 1 x comma y is any random point on the line so if we put appropriate values of endpoints and we solve the equation we will get y is equal to 0.67x and as we can see from this diagram the line ab grows between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1.5 in similar way we can compute the equation for all the lines and those equations are summarized in the table if you have any difficulty in understanding how to find the equation of the line or how to find out the x value whenever lines are intersecting i recommend you to watch the video on defuzzification methods part 2 in which i have explained in depth that how to compute the intersection point and to find a particular x value for those lines in center of gravity method we need to find out such a centroid so that when we draw a vertical line it divides the aggregated fuzzy output into two equal masses and this centroid can be computed as x star is equal to integration mu c bar of x into x dx divided by mu c bar of x into dx where integration mu c bar of x dx represents area of the polygon we need to take integration over all the lines which made up this fuzzy output function and when we put appropriate values in this equation we will get crisp value corresponding to this fuzzy set as 2.5 in center of sums method we have to find area of individual fuzzy output function that means we do not have to take the overlapping or we do not have to take aggregation of this uh, polygons we'll find out area of individual uh, fuzzy output functions and then we'll weight it by its center and then we'll uh, find out the crisp value so all these functions are in form of triangle the equation of area for the triangle is one half base into height so for first triangle the base width is 3 minus 0 that is 3 so its area would be one half 3 into its height which is 1 so area would be 1.5 similarly for second triangle the base width will be 3 minus 1 that is 2 height of this triangle is 1 and hence its area would be 
one half into two into one that is one and in identical way we can compute the area of triangle three or we can say membership function three which is going to be two the center of each fuzzy membership function we can easily compute from the diagram itself as we can see that center of c1 is 1.5 c2 is 2 and c3 is 3 uh, if we put all this value in the equation of center of sums method which is summation over i is equal to 1 to n a i into x i upon summation of all the areas uh, if we simplify it and solve it we will get uh, the crisp value corresponding to center of sums method as 2.3 which is almost near to center of gravity method in center of largest area method we have to consider the aggregated uh, fuzzy output function and we have to find out the area covered by individual fuzzy output functions as you can see that a1 corresponds to area covered by line ab and bc a2 corresponds to area covered by the line cd and de and area a3 corresponds to the area covered by line uh, ef and fg so a1 a2 and a3 corresponds to areas of original polygon in this fuzzy aggregate output function so let us compute a1 a2 and a3 so area a1 we can compute by taking integration over line ab and bc only we already have computed equation of all the lines so if we take the integration we will find the area so a1 would be 1.02 a2 is 0 0.46 and a3 is 1.56 the center of largest area method always select a polygon or sub uh, region having the maximum area and it will find the center of that if we put all the appropriate value in this equation and we'll solve it we will get the crisp value as 3.3 corresponding to center of largest area method in weighted area method we have to weight the membership value of each fuzzy output function by its center from diagram it is clear that the membership value of all these three function or highest membership value of all this function is 1 the center of first uh, fuzzy output function is 1.5 for second it is 2 and for third it is 3 if we put corresponding values into the equation of weighted area method then x star or the crisp value corresponding to this we will get as a 2.25 the first of maxima method will return such a minimum x whose membership value is same as the height of the aggregated fuzzy output so height of this aggregated fuzzy output is 1 and the first minimum x whose membership value is same as height is 1.5 and hence the crisp value corresponding to first of maxima method would be 1.5 the last of maxima method will return such a highest x whose membership value is same as height of the aggregated fuzzy output function and as we can see that for x is equal to 3 height is 1 and this is maximum x which is having the membership value same as the height and hence the last of maxima method will return crisp value 3 corresponding to this output function middle of maxima is not possible to compute because there is no continuous span for the height and height method is not applicable because height is not unique in this case we have a three different points with the same height this is another example we are given two fuzzy outputs uh, c1 bar and c2 bar and union of these two sets would look like this to compute crisp value using all different methods we need to find out area covered by this polygon we need to find out equation of all the lines which are making this uh, fuzzy output function uh, for your reference answers are given here you can try by yourself and you can verify it whether you have got this concept or not hello folks welcome to code crux this is mahesh gurani and in this video i am going to talk about fuzzy inference system these are the topics i'll talk about in this video what is fuzzy controller what are the different forms of fuzzy logic controller multiple conjunctive antecedents multiple disjunctive antecedents and the expert systems the concepts of fuzzy theory can be applied in various disciplines including decision making expert system controller design and many more out of all these concepts the fuzzy reasoning which is also known as fuzzy logic controller is the most important application and it is very widely used in industry many appliances are 
operated uh, with the help of fuzzy logic controller. Fuzzy logic controller is useful when the exact mathematical formulation of problem is not possible. In real life, there are many such appliances are in different domain where it is very hard to write exact model or to specify uh, rules. In such cases, a fuzzy logic controller would be quite useful. The fuzzy inference system is ultimately mapping of input to some output with the help of fuzzy inference system. Fuzzy inference systems have been successfully used in many different domains like data science, data classification, uh, controlling data, various equipment handling, decision making, expert systems and many more. As the application of fuzzy logic controller spans a very big spectrum that it is covers various different disciplines and due to its this nature it is also known as different names in different domains including uh, fuzzy rule based system, fuzzy expert systems, fuzzy model, fuzzy associative memory, fuzzy logic controller or the simply fuzzy system. Whatever we have studied so far in bits and pieces that will be stitched together and we will see that how we can apply all those fuzzy logic concepts and we can solve a particular problem. This is uh, the block diagram of fuzzy inference system. The input to any system will be crisp value and that crisp value will be given to the fuzzy fire. This fuzzy fire will convert that crisp value into fuzzy value using certain membership functions like trapezoidal or maybe triangle function and so on. This fuzzy value is passed to the inference system. With the help of knowledge base, inference system will infer the decision based onto the given fuzzy input and it will produce fuzzy output. This fuzzy output again needs to be mapped into the crisp value. So we have defuzzifier there. We have already studied various defuzzification methods. Uh, those methods will convert this uh, fuzzy output into crisp output. That crisp output will be passed to the appliances or the controller and that action will be taken accordingly. New inputs from the process or the setup will be again fed back to the fuzzy controller and again some new rules are applied and new output is computed. So it is quite useful in this dynamic uh, situation. So our main focus would be now how this fuzzy inference model or the fuzzy inference engine is working and we'll discuss different uh, uh, approaches for uh, fuzzy inference process. Uh, Mamdani method is the most widely used method for the fuzzy inference which was proposed by Mamdani and Asilian in 1975. The another very popular model is known as Sujeno model or Takagi Sujeno Kang model or simply as a TS model which was proposed by Sujeno uh, et al in 1985. The difference between these two models is in its functional consequent part. We will explore that how exactly Mamdani approach differs from the Sujeno approach. In another way, we can also classify the approaches for the fuzzy inference as a linguistic fuzzy approaches. Mamdani's uh, method falls in this category. The rules in Mamdani approach uh, are written like if I1 is A and I2 is B, then output is C. Here, a, B and C are the fuzzy sets, I1 and I2 are the crisp input and uh, O is output. Output produced by this rule will be in fuzzy form and it needs to be converted into crisp by applying certain defuzzification method. This method is quite uh, intuitive or it is uh, having the very high interpretability but it suffers from the low accuracy. The other class of fuzzy logic controller is precise fuzzy modeling controller and Takagi and Sujeno approach falls under this category. The rules written in this Takagi and Sujeno methods looks like if I1 is A and I2 is B, then O is some function of inputs I1, I2. This functional form can take any value, it may be a simple uh, linear equation or might be equation with some higher degree. Most probably it takes the linear form like A1, I1 plus B1, I2 plus C1 where a1, b1 and c1 are some constants. We need to find out those constants such that uh, we can establish the association or the correlation between different inputs and the actual output. This method is having a high accuracy but it suffers from the low interpretability because it is hard to understand that how to 
map or how to create the function f of i1 comma i2 such that it gives the exit output so whenever there are more input variables mapping function would become very difficult because we have to now map or we have to create a function in form of that many inputs which corresponds to the output fuzzy inference engine uses the fuzzy rule based uh, for deriving the facts or for deriving the output and the rules in this system would be in the form of if then kind of form so if premise then conclusion that will be the type of rule where the premise is also known as an antecedent and the conclusion is known as a consequent so in canonical form this rule base would look like a collection of all the possible rules in the system in canonical form it will have all possible rules according to the given inputs the antecedent part could take multiple values and we can combine those antecedents with the help of intersection that is uh, the rule may look like if x is a1 and a2 and a3 and up to al then output y is bs we can simplify this rule just by combining all these antecedents part a1 a2 a3 into as so all are connected by uh, conjunctive uh, connective so we can uh, simply put the intersection between them to simplify them and as we know that intersection operation always returns the minimum value so to compute the membership value of x in this uh, combined intersection uh, set as we can compute the membership value of x in this aggregated set mu as by taking the minimum membership value of x in every other uh, sets that is mean of mu x of a1 mu x of a2 and so on and uh, in simplified form we can write this rule as if x is as then y is bs in similar way we can connect the antecedent part with the help of disjunction disjunction is represented by or operation so when we represent this disjunction part with the help of as then we need to take union of all this antecedent part that is a1 union a2 union up to al in membership value of element in this combined union set as we can compute by taking the maximum membership value of element in all the sets ai and in simplified form again we can write it something like if x in as then y in bs the expert system is a specialized type of uh, fuzzy inference method the block diagram of the system is shown here it consists of many components one is knowledge base which is known as a long term memory the knowledge base contains a collection of if then rules so depending upon all the possible inputs the knowledge base will create a very large uh, rule base and it contains if then kind of rules and the rules might have either only one antecedent part or it might have a multiple antecedent part may be connected through union or intersection or combination of both so uh, this is quite a big collection of rules and they will stay there permanently into the system so whatever inputs is coming from the user to parse that these rules will be applied and hence uh, this is known as a long term memory because it will stay permanently into the system the another component is database which is also known as a short term memory or it will be stored for certain limit of time only whatever inputs are coming from the user that will be considered as a database so database will vary from user to user every user have their own inputs so the database will be active only for the session a particular user is logged in when new user will come this database will vanish and new database will be created for that user and that's why it is known as a short term memory this is nothing but collection of facts and parameters from the user inference engine is the heart or you can say it's a brain of the system which will convert the user input into some specific output so it may be data driven that is known as a forward chaining and we can use modus ponens uh, in this approach or it may be a goal driven uh, also known as a backward chaining and we can solve it using modus ponens in a data driven approach uh, the system will ask various questions to the user user will uh, consider the uh, medical diagnosis system so user will enter the symptoms those symptoms will be parsed if then rules will be applied on that and finally the system will take the decision 
that user is suffering for disease D1 or D2 or D3 and so on. In case of goal driven system, system will ask the symptoms for particular disease like for malaria will ask the question are you suffering for a fever are you feeling cold are you feeling bitter taste of food and so on if those rules are satisfying certain threshold then system will declare that you are suffering from malaria and you should take this kind of precautions and this type of medicine it goes in backward direction and hence it is known as a goal driven system or the backward chaining system it also contains a meta knowledge base meta knowledge base is a concise or we can say it's a summarized information uh, it helps for the quick search into the knowledge base there would be explanatory interface also uh, because user might be new to the system and he may not be uh, knowing uh, what type of input he should give or what he should write at what place so uh, this uh, explanatory interface will guide the user that where to provide what type of data, whether the data should be in numeric form, what should be the range of uh, data or where to enter what type of data. So that explanatory system will help to interact with the expert system to the user. The knowledge acquisition module is also quite important in design of expert system because expert system requires extensive knowledge from the experts. Knowledge acquisition module will acquire knowledge in different modes. Possibly to design a medical diagnosis system, we can pass on the list of questions to the doctors and we can collect their responses and we can feed the facts into the system or we can have personal interviews of all the doctors, discussions with them and that knowledge can be fed into the system or we might collect the information from the books or literatures or the videos and so on. There are many methods for knowledge acquisition but somehow all these useful or vital informations should be collected and if then else rules should be derived from that and we should need to design fuzzy inference systems. So this is how overall expert system works. Hello folks, welcome to Code Cracks. This is Mahesh Gugani and in this video, I will be talking about Mamdani fuzzy inference approach. Points which I am going to cover in this video would be the introduction to Mamdani inference approach, the max mean inference method, max product inference method, uh, fuzzy reasoning process and we will discuss uh, one example of Mamdani approach. Inference means to reach to certain conclusion or the decision based on some proofs or the logic. In 1975, Professor Abraham Mamdani from the London University has designed the very first fuzzy controller system for the steam engine and boiler combination. He applied certain set of fuzzy rules which were supplied by the expert human operators. As we know that the accuracy of this system highly depends on the rule base and rule base should be developed systematically and it should be designed by the person who is having the domain knowledge and hence the human operator's input is quite important in design of fuzzy logic controller. Let us discuss what max mean uh, fuzzy inference method is or how it works. Consider that we have a rule like if x1 is a11 and x2 is a21 then output y1 is b1. Assume that we are given some random membership functions for each of them and we have a rule to uh, stating that if x1 is a12 and x2 is a22 then y2 is b2 and uh, let us assume that the fuzzy membership functions for them are as shown here. We need to calculate the output corresponding to the inputs x1 is equal to 2.5 and x2 is equal to 3. So we have to find out what would be the membership value of yi in each of the fuzzy output functions and then we need to take the aggregation of output functions b1 and b2 and we will apply some defuzzification methods on them. If we consider the rule 1, the two propositions in antecedents are connected using AND and if we check the membership value of x1 in rule a11 is 0 0.8 and membership value of x2 is equal to 3 in set a21 is 0 0.4. As propositions are connected with AND operator, we should take the minimum membership value of both the input set for the output y in the output fuzzy set. And the propositions in second rule in the antecedent part are connected using the OR operator. 
So the membership value of Y2 in the final fuzzy set P2 should be derived by taking the maximum membership value of input parameters uh, which is 0 0.7. The shaded region shown in B1 and B2 uh, will form the final aggregated uh, output function and on this function we need to apply some defuzzification methods maybe a maxima method or maybe centroid method or any other method to compute the final crisp output corresponding to x1 and x2 in both the input fuzzy sets. In max product inference method, the membership value of yi in set bi is determined by taking the multiplication of membership values of input parameters that is membership value of x1 in a11 into membership value of x2 in a21 will be the membership value of y1 in b1. Then we have to reshape or rescale the original uh, fuzzy shape up to that particular point. In case of max mean inference method, we were clipping the fuzzy output functions, but in case of max product uh, inference method, we have to simply rescale the function up to that particular membership value. So that we need to apply for all the functions and we have to take the integration or the union of all these fuzzy output functions whatever area is covered by this will be used to compute the final crisp value for given rules. Let us consider a specific example of robot navigation. Uh, this is the robot which is moving on particular path and uh, all these objects are randomly moving in different direction. So we have to decide what should be the direction of robot uh, for the further movement depending upon to the surrounding objects. So if object is very close and moving towards the direction of robot, then obviously robot needs to change its direction. And if objects are moving away from the robot, then robot should continue his own path. Consider that the distance of robot from the object uh, is capital D and the angle of object with respect to robot is theta. So depending upon the combination of distance and this angle, we should determine the deviation of robot form from its path, we will call it as a delta. So the angle and this deviation would be in degree and uh, distance will represent in meter. For the example, consider that capital D varies from 0 0.1 to 2.2 .2 meter and theta will consider as minus 90 degree to plus 90 degree. The first step is we will uh, form the uh, database from this. The distance varies from 0 0.1 to 2.2 .2 meter. We will create four fuzzy sets out of this very near, near, far and very far. And the membership functions are shown here. As we can see that for distance 0 0.1, the membership value in very near set is 1 and in rest of the other fuzzy sets are 0. As distance increases, obviously object will not be very far to the uh, robot. So the membership value of that distance x in very near set will decrease and it will increase in the near set. For x is equal to 0 0.8 meter, the membership value in very near set will become 0 and that will be maximum in near set. If we move in either direction from 0 0.8 meter, it will not be considered near. Either it is going to be uh, very near or it is going to be far. So the membership value in near set will decrease and it will increase either in very near or in far depending upon in which direction the distance is decreasing or increasing. Same observations we can made for all other uh, combinations and angle range is from minus 90 to 90 degree that we are dividing into five fuzzy sets that is left, ahead left, ahead, ahead right and right. So depending upon uh, four combinations of distance and five combinations of angle will have total 20 fuzzy rules. Cells of this table are filled up with the help of uh, experts of this domain. Uh, we can interpret this rule as if distance is very near and angle is left, then robot should continue moving in ahead direction. Similarly, we can interpret all these rules in the same way. And the last rule we can inter interpret like distance is very far and angle is right, then also robot should continue moving in ahead direction. Out of these 20 rules, only few rules will fire at a time. So we need to calculate which rules will fire and what will be the strength of each of the fired rules. 
consider that we are given distance t is equal to 1.04 and theta is equal to 30 degrees. So, these are the our two parameters. Based on this d and theta, we need to calculate delta that is the deviation of robot from its path. The d is equal to 1.04 belongs to set nr and set fr and theta is equal to 30 degree belongs to fuzzy set a and ar. We need to find out membership value of this crisp parameters in uh, respective fuzzy sets. So let us uh, try to find out it for uh, d is equal to 1.04 meter in near set. Part of the near set is highlighted and it is uh, enlarged here. As you can see that uh, the base varies from 0.8 to 1.5. The height of this fuzzy set is 1 and uh, the distance 1.04 is having certain membership value y uh, for this in this particular NR set. Using similar triangle rule, uh, we can find out the membership value or the parameter y here, height of the smaller triangle divided by the height of larger triangle that is y by 1 is equal to width of smaller triangle upon width of larger triangle. So that will be y by 1.0 that is the height and 1.5 minus 1.04 that is the width of smaller triangle and 1.5 minus 0.8 that is the width of larger triangle. When we solve it, we will get the height y is equal to uh, 0.6541 as it represents membership value of 1.04 in NR set. We will label it as a mu NR that represents membership of d is equal to 1.04 in NR set. In identical way, we can compute the membership value of d is equal to 1.04 in FR set and uh, that is going to be 0.3429. Similarly, we can compute the membership value of angle in set E and AR which is 0.3333 and 0.6667 respectively as uh, the D belongs to set NR and FR and angle belongs to set E and AR only four combinations are possible and only those four rules will be fired that are shown or highlighted into this table and those rules uh, are if distance is nr and angle is a then deviation is rt second rule is if distance is nr and angle is ar then deviation is a in similar way we can write down all four rules now we need to find out what will be the strength of all these four rules depending upon that we will find out the area covered by each rule and will compute the crisp output value these are the data we already have computed from the previous slide so first rule was if distance in nr and angle in a then we have to find out the corresponding delta which was rt we know that membership value of nr is 0.6571 and membership value of a is 0.3333 as uh, we are considering end operator between both the propositions we should consider minimum value for the output so here minimum value is 0.3333 Hence, the output y will have membership value 0.3333 in RT set from rule 1. Second rule says if distance d is equal to nr and angle is equal to ar, then output is equal to a. So, again, we will consider the membership value of y in fuzzy output. So, that will be derived from the minimum value of nr and ar, which is 0.6571. This corresponds to fuzzy's output set A from the rule 2. So, the membership value of Y in fuzzy output set A will be 0.6571 which is uh, highlighted in the diagram. In identical way, we can compute the membership value of Y for third rule which belongs to set ER, the strength of rule 4 which is 0.3429 and that corresponds to set A from rule number 4. This is the area covered by individual rule or we can say this is the strength of individual rule. To compute the final crisp output, we need to take the aggregation of all these four shaded region. It looks like this. Some of the regions are overlapping. To compute the crisp value using centroid methods, we have to compute the area of that entire aggregated fuzzy output. We know the equation to compute the area and the center of certain standard shapes. For triangle, the area is given by 1 half AB and center for such shape is 2 third A. For rectangle, the area is given by AB 
and center is computed by a1 plus a2 by b and for trapezoid the area is one half a plus b into h and center would be b1 plus b2 by 2. So by applying such a simple concept uh, we can directly compute the area without computing the line equations. So let us first talk the center of sums method. As we have already discussed, center of sums method finds the area of individual uh, fuzzy output functions and hence uh, the area of overlapping regions will be considered twice or more. So region 1 that is the blue shaded region which covers span from 45 degree to 90 degree is having area 12.5 and centroid is 71. Uh, for the area A2 uh, which was produced by rule 2 which is uh, covered by or which is shaded in orange color is having range from minus 45 to 45. It is having area 39.7089 and centroid is 0 as it varies is ranges from minus 45 to 45. In similar way we can compute the area for rest of the two sets. The center of sums method compute the centroid using this equation. If we put appropriate parameters into this and we compute it then x star would be 19.5809. In center of gravity method the area of entire polygon is computed only once even the area of overlapping region will be considered only once. So instead of computing the area of individual polygon this method will divide the entire region into small uh, different shapes maybe representing triangle, rectangle or the trapezoidal and then it will apply the standard formulas on it and then uh, compute the area. The another way is that we can compute the equation of line as we have discussed in defuzzification methods part 2. We compute the equation of individual lines uh, which makes this entire polygon and then integrate over all these lines that will also give us the identical area. But the easier way is that we are dividing this aggregated output into different small uh, pieces or small regions and we will compute the area for uh, all individual regions and then we will add up them. So as we can see that this triangle is varies from minus 45 degree to minus 15.4305 degree. It is having a height 0 0.6571. So by applying the area equation that is one half B into H, we can compute area as 9.17157 and its centroid is minus 25.2860. So from this slide we have shown earlier, we can easily compute area of all such standard shapes and we can easily compute the center also. So uh, the area and center for rest of the shapes are shown here and if you put all these values in the equation of center of gravity method we will get the crisp value corresponding to this fuzzy output set as 19.4450 which is quite close to center of sums method. In middle of maxima method we have to consider middle value of the span in the entire fuzzy aggregate output function which is having the highest membership value. As we can observe that this span is having the highest membership value that is 0 0.6571 and the center of this is 0. So middle of maxima method will return 0 as the output. Uh, as we can see that the difference between uh, centroid methods and the, the and the middle of maxima method is quite uh, big. Uh, so maxima methods are simple but they are not realistic. They are not giving the appropriate output many times. So centroid methods are always preferred over the maxima methods. Hello folks, welcome to Code Crux. This is Mahesh Guyani and in this video I am going to talk about Takagi and Sudeno method. These are the points I am going to cover in this video. Uh, we will talk about Sudeno fuzzy inference method that will be followed by a few examples. And last we will compare Mamdani and Sudeno fuzzy inference systems. As we discussed in previous video, Mamdani approach takes the rules of the form if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2 then y is b where a1, a2 and b are the fuzzy sets, x1, x2 are the crisp input whereas the rules in Sudeno system is a different consequent part, uh, it is a combination of input. So rules in Sudeno uh, system looks like if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2 then y is f of x1 comma x2 that is the output is directly crisp value 
which is some functional form of uh, x1 and x2. The overall crisp value corresponding to aggregated fuzzy output is calculated using weighted average defuzzification method. And this model is also known as a TSK model as it was invented by Takagi, Sudeno and Kant in 1985. This is another very popular fuzzy inference approach after a Mandani approach. The ith rule in the system represented as if x1 is a1i and x2 is a2i and so on and xn is a and i then output yi corresponding to this rule can be computed by some polynomial function of inputs maybe like a0i plus a1i x1 plus a2i x2 up to ani xn where a0, a1 and so on are the constant. This method computes the output using weighted average method. So we need to find out weight for every rule and weight for ith rule is computed by taking the membership value of corresponding inputs into respective uh, fuzzy set. Wi is given as mu a1i of x1 into mu a2i of x2 into and we have to multiply the rest of the all the input parameters uh, uh, as shown here. And finally, we can combine the, those outputs and the weights as shown in this formula using weighted average method. So crisp value x star is computed as a summation over i is equal to 1 to k w i y i divided by summation of the weight, where k represents total number of rules in the system. As we discussed, the rule in this system looks like if x is a bar and y is b bar then z is some function of input parameters x comma y so this y could be something like this it can be any polynomial of the input parameters x comma y in most of the cases system uses linear combination of input parameters because it is easy to compute as degree of this polynomial increases system gets more and more complex as well as it would be more computationally intensive also let us try to understand it with the example. We are given uh, two fuzzy inputs i1 and i2 and they are represented by three fuzzy sets L, M and H and i2 is represented by three fuzzy sets NR, FR and VR. The range for the crisp value for every fuzzy set is also uh, shown in the diagram. We have to find out the corresponding crisp value for i1 is equal to 6 and i2 is equal to 2.2. From the diagram, we can see that i1 is equal to 6.0 is present in two fuzzy class with some different membership value. It is present in set M as well as in L, whereas i2 is equal to 2.2 is present in fuzzy set FR and VR. So we need to calculate the membership value of given inputs in their corresponding fuzzy sets. Uh, we have already discussed uh, the computation of membership value for particular input in respective fuzzy set in Mamdani approach. Let me discuss it once again here. We will compute here the membership value of input i is equal to 6.0 for fuzzy class L. So the red part shown here is enlarged here. You can see that base of this varies from 5 to 10. We need to find out height y or we can say the uh, membership value of 6.0 in this particular fuzzy set. Using similar triangle rule, we can say that height of smaller triangle divided by height of larger triangle that is y by 1.0 is equal to width of smaller triangle that is 10 minus 6 divided by width of larger triangle that is 10 by 5. If we solve this equation, this will give us the height of the smaller triangle that is y is equal to 0 0.8. As this y represents membership value of i1 is equal to 6.0 in L class or in L set, we will call this y as mu L or which represents membership value of input i1 is equal to 6.0 in fuzzy set L. In identical way, we can compute the membership value for rest of all the combinations and we will get mu m is equal to 0 0.2, mu fr is equal to 0 0.8 and mu vf is equal to 0 0.2. Based on this combination, we will get four different rules. Uh, I1 is L and I2 is FR. I1 is L and I2 is equal to VF. I1 is M and I2 is equal to FR. And I1 is M and I2 is VF. 
So corresponding to these four rules, we have to compute weight of each rule. We already have discussed how to compute the weight. Rule 1 says I1 is L and I2 is FR. So we have to take multiplication of mu L and mu FR to compute the weight of first rule. To compute the weight of second rule, we need to calculate membership value of I1 in L and I2 in VF. To compute the weight of rule 3, we should multiply the membership value of I1 in M and uh, I2 in FR that is mu M into mu FR and in similar way we can compute the weight of fourth rule. The consequent part of uh, rules in Sudeno system is always some linear combination of input parameters. So assume that these equations are given to compute the in out output parameters y i uh, by putting appropriate values of i1 and i2 in all these four equations we will get different y i's. So uh, this is the summary of uh, w i and y i we have computed from the previous two slides. To compute the crisp value corresponding to Sudeno system we have to apply weighted average defazification method. Uh, the equation is already known to us. We will put the appropriate value in this equation and finally uh, this method will give us the crisp value x star is equal to 12.04. Let us talk one more example. We are given two fuzzy outputs and uh, it contains fuzzy sets small and large and we are given four uh, rules x1 is small, x2 is small then the functional consequent part of this would be y1 is equal to minus x1 plus x2 plus 1. So for each of the four combination we are given such functional combination. We have to compute the crisp output corresponding to input x1 is equal to 1.5 and x2 is equal to 2.5. We are already given the membership value of x1 and x2 in their respective fuzzy set x1 is having membership value 0.3 in small and 0.8 in large whereas x2 has membership value 0.4 in small set and 0.7 in the large set. We are already given the functional uh, part of the consequent so we just have to simply put values of x1 and x2 in these equations and we can easily compute yi as shown here. There are two different ways to compute the weight of i-th rule. Either we can take multiplication of membership value of variables in the rule. Another approach is that we can take minimum membership value of those two variables. In first example, we have followed the first approach that is we took the multiplication of membership value of the variables in the given rule. Here we will find out the minimum value of the membership value and that we will consider as a weight of the rule. The weight of rule 1 would be w1 is equal to minimum of mu x1 comma mu x2 which represents the membership value of x1 in set small. Similarly, mu x2 represents membership value of x2 in set small. So that would be minimum of 0 0.3 comma 0 0.4 that is 0 0.3. In identical way, we can compute the weight of the rest of the rules. Uh, this is what weight and output uh, we computed corresponding to uh, every rule uh, by putting this value in the equation of weighted area defazification method we will get crisp output as 3.26. This is how Sujeno fuzzy inference system is working. Mamdani approach is one of the most popularly known method and it is widely accepted for capturing the expert knowledge. Mamdani approach uh, is having a high interpretability because its rules are quite simple so it is easy to understand or interpret for human. However, uh, due to computation of area this method is quite time consuming whereas Sujeno method is computationally quite easy does not require to compute area of fuzzy output function. This method works well for the optimization problem. And most of the real world problems um, are optimization problem and hence this method is quite acceptable or it has been proved good in design of dynamic nonlinear systems. This method is quite accurate, it's precise but it suffers from low interpretability. Hello folks, welcome to Codecrafts. This is Mahesh Kuyani. 
and in this video i am going to talk about sukamoto fuzzy inference model the topics i am going to cover would be the introduction to sukamoto model uh, we'll see graphical representation for this model uh, well that will be followed by two examples and at last we'll discuss the pros and cons of this model as we have discussed in previous two videos the mamdani approach is having rules of the form if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2 then y is b whereas the sujeno method has rules like if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2 then output y is some combination of input parameters x1 and x2 the sukamoto model has rule of the form same as mamdani approach that is if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2 then y is b the only difference is that the output fuzzy function b is monotonic membership function that means it is either increasing decreasing or constant as we grow on the monotonic functions are also known as shoulder function because their successive values are always either increasing or decreasing or it remains constant the shoulder functions or the monotonic functions are shown in this diagram the overall uh, output is computed using weighted average method just like sujeno inference method which is computed as x star is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to n wi into yi divided by summation over wi this is the graphical representation of sukamoto model consider two rules if x1 is a11 and x2 is a21 then y is b1 and the other rule is if x1 is a12 or x2 is a22 then y is b2 in the antecedent part of the first rule two propositions are connected using and so to compute the w1 we have to take minimum membership value of input parameters x1 and x2 in their respective fuzzy sets and that minimum membership value will correspond to w1 and the value on x axis corresponding to this w will represent y in second rule the propositions in antecedents are connected using or operator or using or connective so we shall consider the maximum membership value of x1 and x2 as a w2 in given monotonic output function so in this case weight of the rule would be w2 which is maximum membership value of x1 and x2 and the corresponding y would be projection of the intersection point of w2 with this curve on the x axis consider the example uh, these are the functions we are given we have two rules specified like if x1 is a1 and x2 is b1 then y1 is c1 and the second rule says if x1 is a2 or x2 is b2 then y2 is c2 we have to find out crisp output corresponding to input parameters x1 is equal to 2 and x2 is equal to 5 so we have to compute the membership value of x1 and x2 in their respective fuzzy sets that is a1 and b1 as you can see from the diagram the membership value of x2 is equal to 5 in fuzzy set b1 is larger than that of x1 so we shall consider the membership value of x1 to compute the w1 because this one is the minimum so this would represent w1 and its projection on x axis will represent y1 in similar way uh, we can compute w2 and y2 in the second rule propositions in antecedents are connected using or so here we shall consider the largest membership value to compute the w2 and its projection on x axis will give us y2 we have values of wi's and yi so using weighted average defuzzification method we can easily find the crisp value in this case the crisp output would be x star is equal to 3.71 consider another example uh, here we are given two rules uh, as shown here z1 is equal to x plus 3y minus 6 and z2 can be computed as 2x plus y minus 7 and we have to find out crisp out corresponding to x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4 let us find out the membership value of x is equal to 3 in a1 and y is equal to 4 in b1 and corresponding uh, w1 and y1 we need to compute so uh, membership value of x1 in a1 is 0.3 and x2 in b1 is 0.6 and as we saw on previous slide the antecedent part is having two propositions which are connected by and 
So we shall consider the minimum membership value out of mu x and mu y, which is 0 0.3. So this much area of fuzzy output C1 set would be covered and the corresponding W1 in given monotonic function uh, would be something like this. So W1 is equal to 0 0.3 and corresponding Y1 would be 3.5. In similar way, we can proceed for the second rule. In second rule, the propositions in antecedents are connected with R. So we shall consider the maximum membership value uh, as an output. X has membership value 0 0.7 in A2 and Y has membership value 0 0.8 in B2. So we shall consider maximum membership value which is 0 0.82. So this much region in fuzzy output set C2 would be covered and corresponding W2 and Y2 would be 0 0.8 and 3 respectively. Now we can compute crisp value corresponding to this using different approaches. This is the aggregated fuzzy output of fuzzy sets C1 and C2. We can apply different methods on this to solve it. Let us first solve it using Mamdani approach. In Mamdani approach, the weighted average method will compute the center of each fuzzy output set and it will multiply it with its corresponding membership value. So as we can see that for the first fuzzy set C1, the center Z1 is 5 and its corresponding membership value is 0 0.3 and for second polygon C2, the center is 2.5 and its corresponding membership value is 0 0.8. So by putting appropriate all these value in the equation, we get crisp value corresponding to Mamdani approach using weighted average method as 3.18. We are also given the functional part of this consequent rule as Z1 is equal to x plus 3y minus 6 and Z2 is 2x plus y minus 7. We already have input parameters x and y. If we put those value into this equation, we will get Z1 is equal to 9 and Z2 is equal to 3. Uh, we already have calculated the weight of each rule on previous slide. So we know that what is W1 and W2 are. If we put appropriate values in the equation, uh, finally we will get crisp value corresponding to Sijono method as 4.64. And for Sukamoto model, the W1 and W2 and Y1 and Y2 are derived from that monotonic function. W1 was 0 0.3, W2 was 0 0.8, Y1 was 3.5 and Y2 was 3. So if we put all these value into the equation of weighted average defalsification method, then corresponding to Sukamoto model, we will get the crisp value X star is equal to 3.14. The Sukamoto model is uh, quite simple or it does not require extensive computation because it avoids the computation of the area of the polygon. It directly computes the crisp output from the weight WIs and YIs. However, uh, there must be a monotonic function as an output and hence the application of this method is limited. It can be applied in very specific domain only. Hello folks, welcome to CodeCrux. This is Mahesh Guyani. And in this video, I am going to talk about design of fuzzy logic controller. The points I am going to cover in this video would be a fuzzy control system, types of various fuzzy control systems, the steps to implement fuzzy logic controller, and we will see one example at the end. The application of fuzzy logic control extends from individual process control to controlling a very complex processes like biomedical instrumentation or various type of security systems. A control system is an arrangement of physical components such that it will alter the behavior of some other physical system such that that other physical system will exhibit the desired characteristics. Basically, there are two types of fuzzy control systems, open loop fuzzy control system and closed loop fuzzy control system. In open loop fuzzy control system, the input control action is independent of the physical system's output. That is, the output produced by the system will not affect the input parameters of the system. That means there is absence of a feedback system. The example of open loop control system is washing machine. Once you set the input parameters like temperature of the water, duration of the program, RPM of the machine, and once you instruct the controller to wash the clothes. So independent of whatever was the quality of the washed cloth, it will not alter the input parameter next time. So this is considered as an open loop control system. So it will simply read the inputs 
uh, it will be given to the controller and controller will take the action and it will simply produce the output. Designing such a system is a bit simpler uh, because there is nothing like a feedback mechanism and it does not require to tune the input parameters next time. In closed loop control system, the new output of the physical system depends on the previous output of the system. It means depending upon what was the output previous time, the new parameters will be tuned, some new rules will be fired and the controller will take some new actions. So, air conditioner is an example of closed loop control system. Depending upon external parameters like whether door is open or not, what is the volume of this room, how many people are present at a time, what is the temperature inside, what is the temperature outside, etc. It will try to optimize its internal parameter. So, this all factors might be changing. Number of person may increase or decrease over the time. Sometimes door might be open or may be closed for some time. So, depending upon that, uh, the internal parameters of the fuzzy systems will be adjusted and some new output will be generated every time. So, the temperature might be increased or decreased by the air conditioner controller. So, this is a kind of closed loop control system. So, closed loop control system is having a feedback mechanism. So, whatever output is generated is given back to the system and it will tune the parameters. Advantages of fuzzy logic control system is that uh, they are quite cheaper as well as they are robust because they can easily handle the imprecision into the data. They are customizable. You can design your own fuzzy membership functions. You can determine the range of your own fuzzy subsets and according to that it's a fine tunable. Fuzzy logic works just like a human thinking process and it is reliable and efficient. So even there is some variability into input parameters it can sustain. The disadvantage is that it requires a lot of knowledge because the success of the system depends on the design of knowledge base and for the designing of knowledge base we required a lot of inputs from the experts of that particular domain and we also needed to update the rules into the system regularly. Applications of the fuzzy control system spans over a very big spectrum. It includes traffic control systems, aircraft, flight control systems, steam engine system, Elevator control system is also designed with fuzzy logic controller. Various home appliances like air conditioner, washing machine, microwave oven, they all are using fuzzy logic controller. Robot navigation can also be implemented very effectively with the help of fuzzy control system. And the list of applications of fuzzy logic controller is quite big. These are the, some of the main applications of FLC. Now we will see the step by step procedure for designing any fuzzy logic controller. And uh, in a later half, we will discuss it with the example. So the first step is that we need to identify variables for the given system. So we need to find out what are the input parameters and what are the output parameters for any given system. In step two, we should find out a proper fuzzy subsets. So uh, the universe of information spawned by each variable is divided in small sets and each set is given some linguistic variable name. For example, the entire range of temperature might be divided into low temperature, medium temperature and high temperature. Next, we need to obtain the membership function for all these subsets. So whatever subsets we have created like low, medium, high, etc. We have to mathematically formulate them so that given any value of temperature, we can find out appropriate fuzzy value for that or we can find out the membership value of that input into given fuzzy subset. Next step is to design a fuzzy rule base. Here the role of domain expert is quite important because the success of entire fuzzy inference system is heavily depending on the design of this rule base. So it is nothing but it's a combination of input parameters and depending upon to the values of input parameters, what action should be taken that is determined by the fuzzy rule base. Next step is to normalize and scale the parameters. This is optional step. But if the, our parameters are having very big difference in their magnitude, that is some parameter is in range of 10 and some parameter is in range of thousands, then we might need to apply a normalization or scaling to that such that the range of parameters will fall within 0 to 1 or maybe between minus 1 to plus 1 depending upon what normalization technique we are using. After that, whatever inputs are given or the crisp value for the inputs are given, we have to apply fuzzification on that and we have to convert it into the uh, fuzzy value. 
so that fuzzy inference system can interpret that value. The next step is to identify the output. So with the help of fuzzy rule base, the fuzzy inference system will read the fuzzy input, will apply some process and it will generate some fuzzy output. And the last step is the defuzzification process. So whatever fuzzy output is generated, we need to convert it into crisp value so that controller can take appropriate actions. We already have studied a few defuzzification methods in previous videos. Uh, the link is given in the description box. You can refer them uh, to clear your concepts for defuzzification. Let us try to understand all these steps with the help of an example. Assume that we have to design a fuzzy logic controller for the steam turbine. We are given the inputs like a temperature and pressure. Based on the values of temperature and pressure, we have to control the throttle setting of the steam turbine. So that is the expected output. It is also given that we have to divide the range of input parameters into three different fuzzy subsets and the range of output parameter into five different fuzzy subsets. So the first step is the identification of the variables. So from definition or the description of the problem, it is quite clear that input parameters are temperature and pressure and the output variable is throttle setting of the steam turbine. Step 2 is the fuzzy subset configuration. It means the range of entire temperature or the pressure or the throttle setting. We have to divide it into number of parts or the number of fuzzy subsets. As instructed into the description of the problem, range of input parameters will be divided into three parts and the range of output parameter will be divided into five parts. So assume that temperature takes cool, nominal and warm fuzzy subset. Pressure is represented by low, OK and strong fuzzy subsets, whereas the output variable throttle setting is having five different fuzzy subsets. Let us call it as a N2, which represents large negative, N1 that is small negative, Z indicates zero, P1 corresponds to small positive and P2 corresponds to large positive. So this is what a fuzzy subset construction for entire universe of the variables. In next step, we have to derive a membership functions for each of these fuzzy subset. So assume that we are given the range of temperature from 0 to 40. We are dividing this range into three subsets, cool, nominal and warm. Assume that the range of cool varies from 0 to 20 degree, nominal spans from 0 to 40 and warm set spans from 20 to 40 degree. So given any temperature value xt, we should be able to identify the membership value of that temperature in corresponding fuzzy set. Using the formula y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 is equal to y minus y1 upon x minus x1, we will be able to identify the corresponding y value for any given xt or the input parameter x. As can be seen from the diagram, the membership value in cool class decreases as temperature increases and that's quite obvious. At temperature xt is equal to 20, the membership value will become zero in cool class. So we can define the membership function for cool class like this. For this cool class, x1, y1 is 0, 1 and x2, y2 is 20, 0. By putting appropriate values in the given equation, we will get mu cool is equal to 20 minus xt upon 20. In this equation, this x represents input from the xt axis and y corresponds to membership value corresponding to that x in cool class. So we are simply changing the variable names y to mu cool and x to xt and that conventions will be following throughout the discussion. Nominal class or nominal subset is not monotonically increasing or decreasing. It is increasing for the temperature range from 0 to 20 and from 20 to 40 it is decreasing. So we have to find out a fuzzy membership functions for both the halves. From 0 to 20 range, x1, y1 would be 0, 0 and x2, y2 would be 20, 1. So if you put all these values, then we will get mu is equal to xt by 20. For the another half, uh, that is for xt is equal to 20 to 40, the x1, y1 corresponds to 20, 1 and x2, y2 corresponds to 40, 0. When you put all these values, we will get membership value as 40 minus xt divided by 20. If we combine both these membership values, we can club that into single functions and that is represented as membership value in nominal class is given by xt upon 20 
if temperature range is between 0 to 20 and it is 40 minus xt by 20 if temperature range is between 20 to 40. So using this single equation we can compute the membership value of any temperature in nominal class. And for the warm class as we move from 20 degree to 40 degree membership is increasing. The x1 y1 for this warm class would be 20 comma 0 and x2 y2 would be 40 comma 1. So when we put all these value in the equation and when we solve this we will get a mu warm is equal to xt minus 20 divided by 20. In identical way we can compute the fuzzy membership functions for the pressure. So xp represents the pressure axis low ok and strong corresponds to three fuzzy subsets we have created for this pressure range and assume that pressure ranges from 0 to 100 degree. So uh, mu low, uh, mu ok and mu strong we can compute in the identical manner just we computed for the temperature. And in similar way we can compute the membership values for the output uh, parameter uh, that is uh, mu n2, mu n1, mu z, mu p1 and mu p2. The equation for all these membership functions are described here. Next step is to design a rule base. We have a three possibilities for input temperature and three possibilities for input pressure. So we will have the total nine rules uh, that will take combinations of uh, temperature and pressure. To fill this value we required help of the domain expert. So according to his experience and the observations we should put values here from the output parameters that varies from n2, n1, z, p1 to p2. So if these values are not uh, kept properly then there are chances that your system might not be accurate and that's why the role of domain expert is quite important in designing fuzzy rule base. Assume that the current temperature is 30 percentage and the pressure is 40 percentage of its entire range and we have to compute the corresponding throttle settings. So range of temperature varies from 0 to 40. So 30 percent of the temperature would be 12. Now we have to find out where this 12 belongs to and what is the membership value of 12. So xt is equal to 12 belongs to fuzzy set pool as well as nominal with some different membership values. We already have derived membership functions for all these three. So if we simply put the value xt is equal to 12 in equation of mu cool, we will get the membership value of temperature 12 degree in cool fuzzy set which is 2 by 5. And if we put xt is equal to 12 in equation of mu nominal, we will get the membership value mu nominal as a 3 by 5. The range of pressure is from 0 to 100 and uh, we have to consider the 40% of the current pressure. So 40% of this would be 40 uh, units. So for xp is equal to 40, we will have to find out where this value belongs to. So xp is equal to 40 belongs to uh, fuzzy set low as well as ok. Again we already know the equations for mu low and mu ok. If we put xp is equal to 40 in both the equations we will get appropriate membership value of xp is equal to 40 for both the fuzzy sets. That we will get mu low is equal to 1 by 5 and mu ok as 4 by 5. As we know from the previous slide the temperature belongs to set cool and nominal and pressure belongs to set low and ok. There are two variables for temperature and two variables for pressure. So if we take the combination of both, we will get total four different rules. Like rule 1 says that temperature is cool, pressure is low. Rule 2 says that temperature is cool, pressure is ok and so on we can write down all the rules. And the rule base for that or the actions taken for that would look like this. If temperature is cool and pressure is low, then action taken will be P2 that means large positive rotation of the throttle and similar way we can construct all the following rules. So these are the four rules uh, we can construct from the given fuzzy rule base. The rule one says that if temperature is cool and pressure is low then action taken by the controller would be throttle setting is equal to P2. Second rule says if temperature is cool and pressure is ok then throttle setting should be zero and in similar way we can uh, derive all four rules. Now we have to find out the strength of individual rule and then we will use that for computing the output. So rule 1 says that temperature is cool. So temperature has membership value 2 by 5 in the cool set. Second half says that pressure is low. So pressure has membership value 1 by 5 
in the low uh, fuzzy set both the part of this antecedent are connected using and connectives so to compute the final membership value we have to take the minimum membership value so out of this 2 by 5 and 1 by 5 1 by 5 is the minimum and the control action is throttle setting is p2 so p2 will take membership value 1 by 5 which is depicted in this diagram rule 2 says temperature is cool and pressure is okay so temperature has membership value 2 by 5 in cool set and pressure has membership value 4 by 5 in the okay set so if we take intersection of this two it will return the minimum membership value that is 2 by 5 and the action taken is to be performed z so membership value of z is determined by the minimum membership value of temperature is cool and pressure is okay which is 2 by 5 so the area covered by the fuzzy output set z would be as shown here which is highlighted in green similarly the rule 3 says if temperature is nominal and pressure is low so temperature has membership value 3 by 5 in nominal set and uh, pressure has membership value 1 by 5 in a uh, low set so minimum membership value of this two would be 1 by 5 and the control action to be taken is in p2 set so it is already computed and it is identical to uh, the rule 1 itself so there won't be any update into the area and rule 4 says that temperature is nominal and pressure is okay so uh, membership value of temperature in nominal is 3 by 5 and membership value of pressure in okay set is 4 by 5 so minimum out of this is 4 by 5 and the corresponding fuzzy output set is z so uh, z will be updated as shown here so all four rules are fired corresponding areas spanned by all these four rules are also computed and they are also shown graphically we have to use the aggregated uh, area for computing the output this is what aggregated fuzzy output function we can apply various defuzzification methods on this and we can compute the final crisp value corresponding to 30% of temperature and 40% of pressure uh, we are using here weighted average method so for that we need to find out center of both the fuzzy functions so center of uh, first polygon is 0 and center of second polygon is 67.93 and corresponding membership values are 3 by 5 and 1 by 5 if we put all these value in the given equation and we solve it we will get the crisp value 16.98 degree so the throttle setting should be done by 16.984 degree so this is how uh, we can design any control system so steps are quite straight forward as discussed earlier so we simply have to follow those steps apply the concepts we have learned so far step by step and we will be able to derive crisp output corresponding to given any crisp input that's it for today folks see you in next video if you think this video was useful to you then please like comment and share Don't forget to subscribe the channel Code Cracks. Press the bell icon for the notification of latest videos. Stay connected, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.